Mm-hmm. I bet. Just a minute. It lives, I see. Do you want to speak with Lolita? I'm sorry, but Gabriel is allowed. Oh, I mean, he's out. Yeah, if he ever comes back, I'll tell him. You know, you could do better. I know I don't know you, but you could do better. Sure. Good morning. The phone's been ringing off the hook all morning. Let me know when you want your messages. Yeah. Gee, you're lively. Did you have another nightmare last night? Sort of. Mm-hmm. I told you it's that voodoo book you're researching. That stuff can seriously screw up your karma. I'm sure that's it. Maybe I should write a horror novel on passive resistance instead. <sighs> so don't sleep. It's your body. Anyway, your handheld tape recorder came today. Really? Great. I can't wait to see what human rights you violate with this one. I can't wait to violate them. For example, if you would just let me... And I located some local voodoo references for you. Dixieland Drugstore and the Historical Museum of Voodoo. Both are right here in French Quarter. How would I ever manage without you? You? Give me a break. The devil himself couldn't change you. Well, if the devil had great legs, perhaps. Like yours. And a riveting personality, I'm sure. Well, if you need any more research done, just ask. It's not as though we're swamped with customers. The magnifying glass is a handy item for reading old manuscripts or the fine print on Gabriel's lease. Mind if I borrow the magnifying glass? No, Sherlock. Just bring it back when we get the next estate shipment. No problem. There's a pair of tweezers on the counter. Grace uses them for book repair work. I'm going to take the tweezers for a bit. Good. You're beginning to look a little scruffy. Just trying to make you feel at home. Times Picohune, dated June 18, 1993. The front page has an article about the voodoo murders. The article says that the victims are all identified as members of the underworld. The general public of New Orleans is in no danger. Police claim the so-called voodoo trappings found at the crime scenes are fake, a scare tactic, and that the murders are not associated with any genuine practitioners. Gabriel also scans the Aquarius horoscope for the day. Potential storms ahead. Proceed with caution and do not get involved with anything new at this time. Mm -hmm. Right. Gabriel opens the cash register to examine the take. Or, in the case of St. George Books, the mistake. It's a gift certificate left over from yet another dismal failure of a promotion. I trust you can live without this old gift certificate. Knock yourself out.
Gabriel pulls down a book on snakes. Snakes are legless reptiles. Some snakes kill their prey with poison, some by constriction. A snake smells by tasting the air with its forked tongue. The smells are passed back to a sense organ in the mouth. Constrictor snakes, however, sense their prey by vibration. Hmm. Did you know that medieval legends about dragons and giant worms are actually based on snakes? You know, dragons, devils, sea monsters, well, they've always been associated with snakes. Grace, get alive. Gabriel selects a volume of German poetry that he always found strangely compelling. Drei Drachen. Drei Drachen kriechen in meinen Schlaf. Die Ziele wollen sie lebendig zum Fraß. Feurigen Atems, gespeltener Zunge, genießen sie jedes Mal. That's nice. Kind of creepy though. Who's the author? Heinz Ritter. I'm not sure what it says, but I get the feeling the guy was one sick puppy. Gabriel leaves through a German-English dictionary. Let's see, mid-tag means midday noon. Spiel means game. Interesting. Himmel means heaven. Uh-huh. Dry means three. Possessin means possessed. That's handy to know. Drachen means dragons. I wonder if Mosley would know he was being insulted if I called him Drachenbread. Let's see, mid-tag means midday noon. Mardi Gras mementos left by some female or other. Several dozen books, including a few of Gabriel's novels, occupy the shelves above his desk. Gabriel's desk has been gathering dust since his last novel. The desk phone is cheap, but functional. There's nothing interesting in there. The wastebasket overflows with crumpled pages of mediocre glory. Gabriel, shut the refrigerator, please. I could smell it from here. Women. Jeans and t-shirts. A poster on the wall advertises Mardi Gras, the biggest party of the year in New Orleans. There's a flashlight on the dresser. This building's wiring leaves a lot to be desired. I might need a flashlight. The medicine cabinet contains a few old prescriptions, personal hygiene stuff, and lots of hair products, including some hair gel. I'll take this hair gel. You never know when you'll need a touch-up.
Don't mind if I do. Do what? Oh, nothing. Three snakes in a skull. Gabriel's father painted it. What a wacky, offbeat kind of guy Daddy was. If wishes were ponies. Move that wall of ice. Good luck. Got a minute, Grace? What's up? What can you tell me about voodoo? I didn't know much of anything about it. Until you started researching it for your book. Now I know that it's active in the city. There's that shop and museum. It can clearly be dangerous in the wrong hands. You should be careful investigating it. Do you know anything else about voodoo? I've told you all I know. Sorry, I can't be more help. What do you know about the voodoo murders? Just what I read in the paper, same as you. What do you know about the voodoo murders? You won't get far questioning me about it, Sherlock. What can you tell me about New Orleans? Well, I've only been here two months, but I love it. It's so much more alive than any place I've been. It feels like anything is possible here. What else can you tell me about New Orleans? You're the native. Don't ask me. Tell me about yourself, Grace. Yeah, right, Knight. I mean it. What do you want to know? How come we haven't gone out yet? I'm still waiting around for that lobotomy. As soon as I get it, I'll let you know. How do you like working at St. George's Books? Well, it's not exactly a huge intellectual challenge. Although the math in your record books could confuse Einstein. Still, I love old books, and it's a nice way to pay the bills while I explore the city for a summer. If you ever pay me, that is. What do you do after work? Well, I either go to my oil painting class or my Tai Chi. You know that. You know, you can go overboard with this improving yourself stuff. You don't want to alienate us mere mortals. I suppose I should just allow my mind and body to atrophy. Works for me. How old are you? Old enough to know about men like you. Just tell me anything at all. I just got my master's in history and classics. My folks wanted me to go on right away for my PhD, but 18 years of school was enough. I needed a break. Just tell me anything at all. I came to New Orleans because I'd read so much about it and I thought, you know, spending a few months here would clear my head. Just tell me anything at all. I've always wanted to do something really adventurous, you know? Something real life. I'm sick of libraries and lecture halls. Just tell me anything at all. My folks are traditional Japanese. I don't even remember Japan myself. I was three when we came to the States. Just tell me anything at all. I've been studying Tai Chi for ten years. It's a very spiritual discipline. I'm sure discipline of any sort isn't something that would appeal to you, Gabriel. Just tell me anything at all. My folks want me to get married to a boy back east. Mark Kobayashi. His parents are traditional Japanese, too. I might eventually, but right now... Just tell me anything at all. My folks are traditional Japanese. I don't even remember Japan myself. I was three when we came to the States. Just tell me anything at all. My folks are traditional Japanese. Nothing, I guess. Never mind. Sit yourself. Do you have messages for me? Dana called. 
And uh, Susie left a message about a lawsuit. Toss him. Okie dokie. There's more when you want them. Do you have more messages for me? Your grandmother called. I keep meaning to get over there. What did she say? Did she sound good? She sounded great, and we had a nice little chat about you. Grace! Don't worry. I didn't go into detail about your cardinal sins. Not that anything about you could surprise her. She adores you anyway. She's my girl. But she said to remind you to stop by and go through your father's things. Hmm. Okay. Do you have more messages for me? Here's a strange one. You got a call from someone named Wolfgang Ritter. He said he was calling from Germany. He told me it was urgent. Maybe you should give him a call. Call Germany? Like hell. If it's really important, he'll call back. Well, fine. Let's just hope he's not with the German lottery for pitiful American authors. Do you have more messages for me? Your friend Detective Mosley called. Talking of visiting. Especially with you. What do you want? He left an interesting message. He told me to tell you that his mother's maiden name is Humphrey. Oh, that's H-U-M-P-H-R-E-Y. Fascinating. And that he left some photos for you at the station. At the front desk. It's about time. Gabriel. Those photos wouldn't have anything to do with the voodoo murders, would they? Now, why would you say something like that? Because I know you. You're getting privileged information, aren't you? Did you tell him you'd put him in your new voodoo book? A writer has certain obligation to his readers, you know. Gabriel, you know you'll never put him in your book. Your main character is a female orthodontist. You're gonna be reincarnated as a pit bull if you keep screwing with your karma. As long as it's a male pit bull with a really big... That's enough. Thanks. Anyway, that's all the messages. Thank God. Could you do some research for me? Sure. What? I can't think of anything. Okay. I'll be back later. Have fun. Gabriel, I'm so glad you stopped by. Sorry it's been a while, Grandma. Not at all. Give us a kiss. Now come and sit down. Tell me how you're doing. Can we talk, Gran? Of course, my boy. How can I help? What can you tell me about voodoo? Voodoo? What an odd question, Gabriel. Of course, you always were interested in monster movies and all that other weird stuff. You get that from your father and granddad. I don't know anything about it, dear. Of course, it was very big in New Orleans at one time, but you don't hear about it so much these days. Too much else in the world to worry about, I guess. What do you know about the voodoo murders? Oh, Gabriel, nothing. And I don't want to. I sometimes wonder what this world is coming to. What 
can you tell me about New Orleans? New Orleans is very southern. Of course, though, not as much as it used to be when I was a girl. It's gotten much more influenced by the East Coast and that California stuff. Still, it hasn't changed as much as other places, I reckon. We've always been happy here. What can you tell me about New Orleans? My goodness, boy! You've lived here all your life just like me. I can't tell you much that you don't already know. Tell me about yourself. Me? Oh, surely you have something more interesting to talk about. Oh, come on, Gran. All right, dear. What do you want to hear? What do you do all day? You know how I love to knit and work in my garden. I also take long walks. It's the only way to keep an old body like mine from stiffening up. You're not old. Oh, don't be foolish. I'm older than the hills. Tell me about before you met Granddaddy. Well, you know I was born Rebecca Wright. My daddy owned a lot of land outside of town. We grew peas, corn, cotton, all kinds of things. It was a good childhood, but my father was very strict. He didn't much let me out of his sight. Tell me how you met Granddaddy. I met Harrison at a church revival. There was a traveling preacher back then, a big fella named Reverend Jim. I even remember his slogan, Come to me to find your way. Your granddad was sitting right behind me and my girlfriend Alma, and at one point, old Reverend Jim was flinging his hair around with his fire and brimstone annex, and a piece of it, one of those small add-on dues for man, went flying off. I swear, Harrison and I were the only ones that noticed. We both started laughing to beat the band. Everyone looked at us like we were a couple of loonies. It was then I knew that he was me. How you feeling these days? Fit as a fiddle, and don't you worry your head about it. Just tell me anything at all. I had your father when I was 22. The doctors told me I couldn't have any more after him, so I'm afraid I spoiled him rotten. Just tell me anything at all. I never loved any man but your grandfather. And I never will. Just tell me anything at all. I hate to admit it, but I was a jealous little thing when your granddad and I were younger. I loved him so ferociously. And he did attract the eyes of the ladies, whether he wanted to or not. Just tell me anything at all. I get lonely sometimes. But I have lots of girlfriends in the neighborhood. I'll call one of them if I'm feeling blue. Just tell me anything at all. I wish you'd settle down and give me a great-grandchild. Oh, Gran. Just tell me anything at all. I had your father when I was 22. The doctors told me I couldn't have any more after him, so I'm afraid I spoiled him rotten. Just tell me anything at all. I never loved any man but your grandfather. And I never will. Oh, nothing. Never mind. All right, dear. Tell me about our family. Who would you like to hear about? Your granddad, your father, or your mother? Tell me something about Granddad. Your Granddad immigrated to America when he was 21. He worked his way through school, met and married me, and we had your father, Philip. Tell me something about Granddad. Your Granddad supported me and your father with bookkeeping. 
I tell you what, though, he hated every minute of it. Didn't really like bookkeeping one bit. Maybe that was why he had the worst luck with jobs. The night he'd come home afraid to tell me he'd lost another. <laughs> and I would tell him it didn't matter to me. But he felt ashamed, Gabriel. Tell me something about Granddad. Harrison was only 36 when he died. Your father was eight years old at the time. Your granddad was hit by a streetcar in the business district. Took me nearly a year to believe he was really gone. I'm sorry, Gran. I know you are, dear. Tell me something about granddad. Did you know that your granddad was a poet? He was! He wrote the most beautiful poetry for me when we were courting. I always thought he should have done something with that gift. But he was such a practical man. Didn't believe in chasing after dreams. Tell me something about Granddad. I don't know what else to tell you, dear. Tell me something about... I don't... Tell me about my father. Your father was my only child. How we adored him. Philip suffered from terrible nightmares, just like your granddad did. They were two peas in a pod. Tell me about my mother. Your mother was Margaret Templeton when your father met her. She came from a very wealthy Creole family in New Orleans. She was beautiful and reckless. She was madly in love with your father, of course. But I also think she liked defying her family. Since you're so interested in family history these days, why don't you go by St. Louis Cemetery Number 1 and visit the family tomb? It would be a sweet gesture. Maybe I will. Tell me about my father. When Philip met your mother, it was love at first sight. They were married two weeks later. Never looked at a girl seriously until then. And he looked at plenty. You have your father's way with women, Gabriel. And your granddad's. <laughs> oh. Tell me about my father. I wanted to just lay down and die when he and your mother were killed in that car crash when you were only eight. It was the thought of taking care of you. Get me going, Gabriel. The police say your father swerved off the road after being frightened by something. Perhaps a deer in the road or a wild cat. Tell me about my father. Your granddad wanted Philip to have a normal life. He was obsessed by that thought. He pushed Philip to go to law school. Philip was driven to art. He painted almost in a daze. He would get so inside himself when he worked. Tell me about my father. He always hated it that it was Margaret's money that supported the three of you when his painting couldn't. I kept telling him, try something more cheerful, like a landscape or two. He couldn't do it. His work was just too dark and disturbing for the public, you know. Tell me about my father. I don't know what else to tell you, dear. Tell me about my mother. Your mother's family refused to give her money after the marriage. All she had left was a modest trust fund from a great aunt, who happened to like Philip. The remainder of your mother's trust fund became yours when she died. That's what you used to open your bookshop. Tell me about my mother. The Templetons are all gone now. Every last one of them. They never wanted anything to do with us, of course. What a waste. Tell me about my mother. I don't know what else to tell you, dear. You know, you get prettier every time I see you. Oh, you. <laughs>
Have you baked any of your incredible molasses pies lately? No, dear. But you let me know when you want some, and I'll whip up half a dozen. You've lost weight. Are you caught in a new man? Oh, Gabriel, don't be silly. You know there'll never be anyone but your granddad for me. Your hair looks very pretty today, Gran. Well, oh, I thank you, dear. So does... Oh, uh, you always had such nice, thick hair, Gabriel. You know, I always tell people that my gran is the prettiest grand old belle in the city. Oh dear, you shouldn't talk so. You know, you get prettier every time I see you. Oh, you. <laughs> Have you baked any of your... No, dear. I'm going to go up to the attic, Gran. Be careful of the dust. There's a sketchbook on the chair that Gabriel vaguely remembers as his father's. I think I'll take Daddy's sketchbook with me. Images haunt the pages of Philip Knight's sketchbook, the way they must have haunted his mind. The images touch a deep card in Gabriel. So familiar are they that he finds it hard to believe they aren't from his own subconscious. Images the The $20 gift certificate for St. George's looks pitifully new and on you. Believe it or not, a flashlight does not open. It's a disposable. Gabriel doesn't want to open that jar until he's ready to use the hair gel. It will get all over everything. The trunk contains some old clothes, including a pair of leather shorts. Aren't those called lederhosen? Serious hiking boots. More of Harrison Knight German book. Just what I need. And a bundle of letters. Love letters between Harrison and Rebecca. I don't think there's anything in that trunk that would interest anybody but my grand. The ring of symbols does not appear to have any mechanical function, but it does move. Nothing happens. Why move that part of the clock? The clock won't open that way.
nothing happened. Nothing happens. Granddaddy, you old fox. The letter is addressed to Heinz Ritter, whoever that is. The letter is written in German, but Gabriel determines what he can about it. It was sent from a place called Schloss Ritter in Rittersburg, West Germany. The letter is addressed to mein Sohn Heinz and signed Wilhelm Ritter. One of the reoccurring words strewn throughout the letter is the word Schattenjäger. The only thing that Gabriel can decipher about the letter is a sense of urgency in the handwriting and in the heavy use of quill tip bold strokes and underlining. The old photographs show Gabriel's grandfather with two other men that Gabriel has not identified. The back of the photo has the following written on it. Schloss Ritter, 1925. The gift certificate is written up generically and has the store's name and amount penned in by Gabriel himself. That box of knick-knacks has been up there for at least five years. There's nothing I want in there. I think I'll leave that up here. I think I'll leave that up here. That's it. Take a load off, hon. Can we talk, Gran? Of course, my boy. How can I help? Do you know anyone named Heinz Ritter? Heinz Ritter? Oh, Gabriel, where did you hear that name? I found a letter in Granddaddy's clock. I promised I'd never tell you or your father. I suppose it doesn't matter now. Tell me, Gran. Your granddad's name was Heinz Ritter before he came to America. He changed it to Harrison Knight legally when he arrived. Why did granddad change his name? I don't know. I tried to ask him about his family, his life before America, but he didn't want to talk about it never even told me about his name change. I found that one day when I saw his passport in a drawer. Since he obviously found it painful, I never questioned him about it. But I'm sure it wasn't trouble with the law. Your granddad was the best man I ever knew. 
Didn't Granddad ever say anything about his past or his family? Only that his family was crazy and that he never wanted to see them again. He believed in some family curse, thought that he could spare Philip and Philip's children from what he called old nightmares. Whatever Harrison wanted to spare you, though, it cost him plenty. He never did sleep well, and he would often get a faraway guilty look in his eyes. He was wrestling with something he thought he should be doing, some place he thought he ought to be. I don't know how he could think that he should be anywhere but with me and our child. It's a terrible way to live. Do you know anything else about Heinz Ritter? I've told you all I know about your granddad's past. Have you ever heard of a Schottenjäger? 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 How are you, Gabriel? I haven't heard that word in years. My goodness, you've given me a chill. Your granddad used to say that sometimes in his sleep. Really? Do you know what it means? No, I'm afraid not. I asked him about it once. I don't think he answered me. Odd. Hmm. Thanks, Gran. Have you ever heard of a... I don't know what else... Well, Gran, I better get going. All right, dear. The marks are reddish in color and reminds Gabriel of crosses. They look like they've been here a few days at least. This is the tomb of Marie Laveau, voodoo queen of New Orleans. Odd looking marks adorn the Laveau tomb wall. Could I have a minute of your time? You got something to say, son? Mind if I pick your brain a minute? Go ahead. These folks ain't in no hurry. What can you tell me about voodoo? They say it was part of an old religion from Africa, brought here by slaves. What can you tell me about voodoo? I don't really care to talk about it. I don't do it none myself. What do you know about the voodoo murders? Ain't it just awful, them finding those bodies with voodoo things around them? I don't think there's any real voodoo going on. Somebody trying to cover their tracks is all.
What can you tell me about New Orleans? Seems like everybody want to visit New Orleans at least once in their lives. And they love the cemetery too. I see tourists in here every day of the year. What can you tell me about New Orleans? There's lots of things to see here, but none are as beautiful as the St. Louis Cemetery Number 1. What can you tell me about New Orleans? Hey, if you want to know more, you should ask somebody else. Have you ever heard the word, Schottenjäger? I don't know what you're talking about. Tell me about yourself. My name is Toussaint Gervais. I'm the watchman here at St. Louis Number 1. What exactly do you do here? Oh, I keep the place tidy, cause, but a big part of my job, too, is looking out for the grievers, you know. People come to pay their respects, and they need looking out for them. Sometimes they so grief-bound, they don't know what they doing. Tell me about yourself. That's about all there is to say. Tell me something about St. Louis Cemetery Number 1. You know why the dead are buried in tombs and not in the ground, don't you? The water table's too high. Them coffins would float right out of their graves. <laughs> Them dead would go floating right down into the quarter. <laughs> Cause if their body grow, nobody'd even notice. Tell me something about St. Louis Cemetery Number 1. It's a historical place. People buried in here from the Civil War, and back further, too. Take a look around, you'll see. Tell me something about St. Louis Cemetery Number 1. Just look around, just look around. You'll get the feel of the place. The Wright Family Tomb. Several of Gabriel and Grand's family members are laid to rest here. A wrought iron fence surrounds this tomb. I hope that's to keep people out. Most of the plaster has fallen away over the years to reveal walls of red brick. Most of the the tomb is much. The tomb, the tomb, Gabriel doesn't, the doors are heavy and shut tight. The imposing tomb is elaborately labeled Gede. An angel draped dramatically over a stone plinth marks the entrance to a large tomb. There's a small marble plate near the tomb doors. The plate is locked in position. There's a keyhole on the plate, but Gabriel can't operate that without a key.
a stone angel leans down to gaze at something unseen. The heavy marble doesn't budge. This old tomb has a sword carved into the stone below the name of the deceased. This old A stone angel stands silently before a tomb. Vases seem to be a favorite decoration for the dead. Gabriel has no reason to move Got a second, officer? What can I do you for? What can you tell me about voodoo? Me? Nothing. I'm a Catholic boy. What do you know about the voodoo murders? I'm not allowed to give out information on police cases. What can you tell me about New Orleans? I'll tell you, I'm glad as hell it's not Mardi Gras. If it weren't for that one month a year, being a cop in New Orleans would be a real pleasure. As it is, I'd rather stick behind this desk. What can you tell me about New Orleans? Best food in the world. You can get it right here in New Orleans. Muffalata sandwiches. Mm. Mm. Beignets. Good Cajun coffee. Yep. Man can die happy in this city. What can you tell me about New Orleans? Look, I love this city good as anybody, but I already gave you my opinion. Why don't you check out the Travel Bureau? Have you ever heard of a Schotten Jaeger? Can't say that I have, but it sounds dirty. Tell me about yourself. Who, me? I'm the Death Sergeant Frick. Why? Frick? That's right. You got a problem with that? Not at all. Tell me about yourself. You see that front door? Yeah? Well, I watch people come in. See this book? Yeah? Well, I write people's names in it, see? People that bother me. Want me to put your name in this book? Uh, I think not. That's what I thought. I'm here to see Detective Mosley. He's out of the crime scene. Sorry. Where is the crime scene? Is it related to the voodoo murders? Crime scene information is police confidential. We don't need any more looky-loos than are probably already there. Uh, 
about Detective Mosley. I told you, he's not here. I was supposed to pick up some photos from Detective Mosley at the front desk. Is that right? And who are you? My name is Knight. Gabriel Knight. Yeah. I got something for you, all right. Soon as you're done talking, I'll give it to you. Here's that envelope for you, Gabriel Knight. Thanks. The envelope has Gabriel's name written on it. Miss Bell. Gabriel opens the manila envelope and finds two photographs. One of the photos from Mosley is an official voodoo murders crime scene shot. A graphic close-up of a victim. Him. The murder photo has nothing written on it. The photograph of Mosley was apparently taken upon his graduation from the police academy. He, he had hair then. The photo of Mosley reads, Cop Nerd, to Gabriel's eyes. The back of the I knew you'd miss me, so I came back. The excitement of seeing you is killing me. Got a minute, Grace? What's up? Have you ever heard of a shot in Jaeger? No. Is that a voodoo word? I don't think so. It's German. Hmm. No, but it has a nice ring, doesn't it? Schottenjäger. Do you have messages for me? Nope. None right now. Could you do some research for me? Sure. What? I can't think of anything. Okay. See you later. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. 
Mind if I ask you a few questions? Ask what you want, I'll answer what I want. Can you tell me what you know about voodoo? This is a novelty shop, monsieur. What do you know about the voodoo murders? Cabris sank. What did you say? Nothing, nothing. Those killings have nothing to do with my shop, monsieur. What do you know about the voodoo murders? Monsieur, that has nothing to do with my shop. What can you tell me about New Orleans? I've lived here all my life, me. What can you tell me about New Orleans? I'm a busy man, monsieur. I don't get out of my neighborhood much. What did you mean when you said Cabri sans corps? I didn't say that. You did. I heard you say it. You heard wrong, monsieur. I said no such thing. What did you mean when you said Cab I didn't say you, you heard Have you ever heard of a Schottenjäger? Man, I don't even know what language that is. Tell me about yourself. My name's Willie Walker. I own the place. Tell me about yourself. How did you get into this kind of business? Why should I discuss my business with you, man? Tell me about yourself. How did you get... Why should I... Small bags made of felt and flannel hang from the ceiling. Those are gris gris. They're full of magic. No guarantees though, you know. The sign say, Special Saint Jean Eve, Lanyape, Free bottle of lover come back to me oil, or master gambling oil, with every purchase over fifty dollars. Lanyap. My French is lousy, but everyone in New Orleans knows what that means. A little something extra. The glass jars contain a number of things Gabriel can't identify. And wouldn't want to. The mask appears to be made from a real crocodile head. The shelf hold containers of dried items, flowers, grass, black cat bones. A variety of cloth dolls are arranged above the shelves, each impaled with a single silver pin. In this case are super concentrated fixing oils and packages of pins. Herbal oils for love, luck, power, and success. Root bags, curio boxes, and magic candles. Sold as curios only. We cannot guarantee results. The shelf hold containers of dried items, flowers, grass, black cat bone. Lodestone powder. Five finger grass. Something tells me I'm not in Kansas anymore. Lodestone powder. Herbal The Dixieland drugstore is crammed from top to bottom with strange merchandise, some or all of which seems to be related to the practice of voodoo.
Hi. Look around all you want. Okay, thanks. Could I ask you a few questions? I wouldn't be much help. You should talk to Dr. John, the owner. He'll be back tomorrow. I see. Thank you. A wooden doll with horns is on the back table. Looks like Jack Nicholson. The back wall displays various voodoo items, such as a feathered African mask. Something about the shape of that knife gives Gabriel the creeps. The back wall displays various voodoo items, such as a gaudy shell necklace. The back wall displays various voodoo items, such as a poster advertising a voodoo tour of the city, winters only. The historical voodoo museum is brimming with items authentic and original. Damn, I've always wanted a skeleton with a bowl on its head. A very large, very formidable looking snake is secured in a plexiglass cage. A striking portrait of a turbaned woman is on the back wall. Gabriel wonders who she might be. An official voodoo wish and stump. Rub it and make a wish, a card say. Funny, I say the same thing to women. Even if that were for sale, Gabriel couldn't afford it. They might not like it if I moved the displays. I could. But I don't like to throw my skill around aimlessly. A street drummer has settled outside the museum. Gabriel can't do a thing with the drummer on the street. Gabriel cannot open or close that. This coffin is so small. Interesting. Cute, isn't it? Adorable. Do you know anything about it? Afraid not. The snake is too far away. I'll be gone now, thanks. So long.
Could I ask you a few questions? Not now, buddy. I'm busy. I should have noticed that. Thanks. Yeah, right. Homicide team attend. Good day, officer. Yeah, to you too. Keep moving. Good day, officer. Yeah. Could I ask you a few questions? Not now, buddy. I'm busy. I should have noticed that. Thanks. Yeah, right. Anyone seen Joe? You white-faced geek! You wanna eat my fist? Hey, cut that out. I told you to stop that. All right, mister. You want some of this? Gabriel likes his own cycle much better. The radio won't tell The radio won't Gabriel picks up the headset and listens. Ambulance 91, have you located the crime scene? They've radioed for you three times. Damn! Did you say it was north of the Lake Retreat Country Club? South. Lakeside Drive north of Piedmont Pier, south of the Country Club. Man, I don't know if it's the clouds out here today or what. Good thing this guy's already dead. Everyone's having trouble. Must have been hallucinogens in the coffee this morning. It's just so misty out here or something. I... Hey, I see a squad car. Got it, Molly. Thank God. Have a good one, 91. Interesting. Stupid man! Hey you! Get away from that bike! Sorry. The crime scene team is still at the site. Gabriel parks a bit out of the way and walks over to avoid adding to the general confusion. Hey, mostly. Huh? <sighs> Night, you wiener. I told you not to call me that. Feeling jumpy? Who, me? Don't be stupid. How'd you find me? Oh, I was just driving by. Mm-hmm. Well, for the book, 
But don't tell anyone I let you see this, huh? It's another one. As you can see, same M.O. and no frickin' clues. We're still waiting on an ID for the body. That's disgusting. Isn't this a rather, uh, public area for this kind of thing? Yeah, they're frickin' ghosts, these guys. Lakeshore Drive isn't exactly the 10 Expressway, but it is open to the public. No reports and nothing. Now, who the hell is that? Good day, Miss Getty. What's going on, officer? Detective Mosley, ma'am. We've got a little problem here, but nothing for you to be concerned about, Miss Getty. I see. Thank you, detective. And good day, gentlemen. Whoa, I'm in love. Forget it. That's Molly Getty. She's about as far out of your reach as the moon. Probably on her way to meet some guy with a yacht right now. Near here? The lake's a popular place for country clubs. If she's out here a lot, maybe she saw something or heard something. Man, nobody ever sees or hears nothing. I told you. Besides, you just don't go around bothering people like her. We've about wrapped it up, sir. It's another clean sweep. Yeah, let's get the meat wagon moving, then. Do you want to leave an officer here, sir? Nah. Just leave the tape up for a few days. Yes, sir. If you'll excuse us, sir, we'll take him away. Stick around and take notes for the book, if you want. Watch out for the muck in the water, moccasins, though. I'll be back at the station. Stop by if you want to go over the case some more. Thanks. The lines in the sand are fairly large. Magnification wouldn't make them any clearer. Gabriel is already magnifying the sand. It's extremely big, bloody sand. Gabriel does not particularly want to mess with the bloody sun. There's no one here to... Gabriel... The police have already taken samples of the blood. Mosley will be able to tell Gabriel if there's anything sick. Gabriel does not... It's extreme. There seems to be a pattern to the lines in the sand. But if there is a pattern, it's smeared. There's only one small area that's clearly defined. Hmm. Let me try to get this down. It's very large grass. Gabriel is already magnifying the grass. It's very large. It's very... It's very...
There doesn't seem there does there doesn't seem to be any there does It's very large. It's very It's very large. It's extremely big sun. It's extreme. Gabriel is already the lines. It's extreme. It's very large. It's very large. It's very. It's very. There's nothing worth magnifying in that particular location. There's. There's. No, there's nothing worth. Ma it's extremely big. It's extremely. There are marks in the grass, as though some heavy wire object had been set there. Gabriel carefully uses the tweezers to take the small iridescent scale. I think it's a snake scale, but it beats the hell out of me what kind. Hmm, is that clay? Yuck! Gabriel can't... Got a second, officer? What can I do you for? Do you know anything about snakes? What does this look like? A zoo? Never mind, don't answer that. No, I, I don't know nothing about no snakes. What can you tell me about St. John's Eve? Bunch of crazies out there on St. John's Eve, that's what. We're busy all night. Really? What kind of crises? Ah, uh, your usual howl at the mooners, I guess. They don't look no weirder than them that comes in during Mardi Gras. Never can tell, though. I'm here to see Detective Mosley. He's in his office. Go on back.
Mostly my man. Yeah, yeah, what is it, you wanker? Can I ask you about some stuff? You're the writer. Ask away. What can you tell me about voodoo? There's voodoo that goes on in this city, sure. I looked into it a bit at the beginning of this case. But the voodoo stuff found at the crime scenes is all fake. It doesn't have anything to do with the real stuff. I know, I asked some experts. It's intimidation tactics, that's all. What can you tell me about voodoo? I told you, don't worry about that part of it. It's all fake. What do you know about the voodoo murders? Lots. Can you be more specific? Do you know anything about the killers? At least 20 people attend the killings. We know this from the variety of footprints found at the scene. Footprints? Aren't those as good as fingerprints? Can be. But we'd have to have a suspect in custody first. And the suspect would have to match one of the few distinct prints we have. Most of the footprints are smudged, trodden over, unreadable. These guys are so casual in their expertise, it's maddening. Like they know we'll never find them. How many murders have there been so far? Seven murders have so far been linked to the Voodoo Murders case. Now, the first murder occurred about eight weeks ago. The M.O. was the same in each murder. Lake Ponchar Train was the seventh. What kind of evidence have you found? No fingerprints. A few bare footprints. Found a few fibers, but not many. The weirdest one was leopard fur. Leopard fur? Describe the crime scenes. Now well, there's the corpse itself, minus the heart. Around where the body was killed, we find marks and flour and blood. There are traces of wax from candles, red and black. Ordinary wax candles, so the lab reports. Also blood and feathers of chickens. Also goat's blood. And plenty of the victim's own, of course. What's the coroner say? The victim's heart is always ripped out of the chest and missing. We haven't located a single one of them. Lovely. Any idea what they do with them? Don't even want to know. Also, the coroner says some of the victims had heart attacks before the incision literally scared to death. The knife wounds are consistent with a long, narrow, wavy-edged knife. Probably a ritualistic dagger. Any witnesses? Nope. There's never been a single witness. No one's even heard a disturbance. It's damned weird. Like they just don't want people to see, and so nobody sees nothing know anything about the victims? The victims are all out of towners. We still don't know why. Oh, nothing, never mind. Sure, no problem. What can you tell me about New Orleans? You and me grew up together, you tell me. It's a pretty nice place, even seeing the stuff I see, you know. The quarter's getting a bit too wild, though. Getting hard to control. Not quite what it was when you and me used to hang here, but... Hell, I've never known anything else. What can you tell me about... Ah, uh, I'm too sentimental to say anything else about it. Do you know anything about snakes? The only thing I know about snakes is I don't like them. Do you know anything? The only thing... What 
can you tell me about St. John's Eve? That's coming up, isn't it? We get some occasional weirdness in the quarter, but nothing much. Used to have a lot of strange things happen, though, or so I hear. Do you have any idea what Capri Saint Gaulle means? Hell no. Is that French? My mother spoke it, but I always had a hard enough time just speaking English. True enough. Have you ever heard of a Schutten Jaeger? No. Ha! Is that anything like a Chuck Jaeger? I don't think there's any relation. Tell me about yourself. For the book? Sure, why not? Okay, what do you want to know? How'd you like working on the police force? Are you kidding? You know I love being a cop. In New Orleans, it's the best place in the world to be one. What are your plans for the future? Well, you know, I don't like to count my chickens before they're hatched, but I don't see why I can't be the chief of police of New Orleans someday. I already know the mayor, and my record is one of the best in the department. I'm sure it's just a matter of moments, mostly. Yeah, yeah, you'll see. Got any hobbies? Yeah, making your life miserable. I'm serious. Don't you shoot or chew or something like that? No, I'm a freaking ballet dancer. Jeez. Yeah, I was number one at the Louisiana State Fair Marksman Contest. I play trumpet, too. You know. Put your lips together and blow. How's your home life? Oh, real funny, Knight. Why don't you just bring in some freaking salt? Well, you know Annie left me. My home life is shit. Right. Sorry about that. Just tell me anything at all. Remember how we used to play Monkey in the Middle? <laughs> we used to piss off our senior year teacher. What was her name? Ms. McKelly? You'd act like you were gonna toss her an eraser or something. Then you'd throw it to me over her head. And we used to do it at your grand's, too. Like with the remote when she wanted to watch your soaps. Yep, and it was a great way to pick up women in the library. Oh, oh those were the days. Just tell me anything at all. You know, my doctor told me I've got a little family of ulcers starting. I wish this case would end so I'd get some raspberry jam. Just tell me anything at all. My back hurts. Just tell me anything at all. For the book, I wanted to be an astronaut when I was young. Or a fireman. Fascinating. Just tell me anything at all. I'm 6'2". You are not. Oh, come on. I'm close enough. Just write me up that way. Oh, God. Just tell me anything at all. You know, I kind of like women with dark hair. Yeah, I know. It's a regular thing with you. Now that, Grace. You're on your own with that one, pal. I don't even want to know. Just tell me anything at all. Remember how we used to play monkey in the middle? <laughs> you that? And we? Yep. Just. Just. My. Oh, nothing. It's your dime. What's the status on the voodoo murders case? It's going. Can't seem to make any progress, though. Sluggish damn case. It's weird. What's the status on? You're as filled in as me. How about getting me some coffee? Coffee? You want coffee? Should that surprise you? Nah, you've always been a caffeine addict. It's just that what we got here hardly qualified. So, I'm desperate. It's your stomach. I'll get you some when we're done talking. That long? <laughs> All right, I'll go now.
don't touch anything while I'm gone. Logs of unsolved cases, perhaps? Mostly must have. Mostly just. Here, drink it. Thanks. Can I ask you about some stuff? You're the writer. Man. I got those photographs you left for me. Really? Great. What'd you think? Astonishingly lifelike. Yeah, that's what I thought. Got any more ideas for photos for the book? Nope, I think we... Okay. But you shouldn't underestimate the power of beefcake, friend. Do you know anything about the patterns around the bodies? Yeah, weird, huh? All seven victims had those little marks around. We got all the marks on file, but we haven't figured out what, if anything, they mean. Can I see the other six patterns? Uh, sure. People like that kind of stuff, don't they? Might make the book seem more mysterious. Go talk to Officer Franks. Tell her I said you could see the file. I got those photographs you left for me. So you say. Did you think of any other shots for the book? A cop author photo might be nice. You and me? Together? Why not? Of course, you'll have to try to tone down your masculinity. Well, okay. I'll call the police photographer. Franks, come here a minute, would you? Bring your camera. What did you need, Detective Mosley? We need a picture, please. And make it a good one, huh, sweetheart? Sure, sweetheart. Say, chintzy. Was there anything else, Knight? Hold on a sec while I go check my hair. Make it fast. Gabriel should go to the counter to talk to the desk sergeant. Can I bother you again, officer? <sighs> what is it this time? I'm here to see Detective Mosley. He's in his office. Go on back. Gabriel can't do that from the front lobby. There's nothing of interest in that doesn't seem it looks a bit heavy. There's no reason. Would you just get in here? Hurry up, would you? Okay, ready. Thanks, hon. Let me know when you got it developed. Uh, 
the photos, that is. Yeah, sure. The suit doesn't open. Well, I'll be seeing you. Ciao, baby. Can I ask you a few questions, ma'am? I'm sorry, sir, but I really have to finish these reports. Excuse me, officer. Yes? Can you get a file for me? What file would that be? The voodoo murders file? Detective Mosley said I could see it. Really? Well, if he said so. There it is. You can look at it all you want. But don't leave this area with it, okay? And no photocopies either, I'm afraid. Of course. I understand completely. The police file contains partial patterns. The police file... Don't leave the room with that file, please. I'm done. Yeah, thanks. Can I ask you about some stuff? Here? I got those photographs you left for me. So you said. Did you think of any other shots for the book? Let's take another cop off the shot. What for? I don't think we got your best side. Really? Okay. I'll have Franks come in again. Franks, come back in here with that camera. Now what, sir? That clown wants another picture. You don't mind, do you? Of course not. What else could I possibly have to do? Anything else, Knight? Hold on a sec while I go check my hair. Good God, Knight. Make it fast. Let me see that file again. Just want to check this machine here. There's no point in using the pattern that way.
There is no point in using the pattern that way. Gabriel, there is no Officer Frank would not be amused to see Gabriel carrying that file. Gabriel has a photocopy of the official police file. Con it's the official police file containing the partial patterns from the voodoo murder. The police. There's no. There's no reason to do that. There's no reason to do. Would you just get in here? Hurry up, would you? Okay, ready. Thanks, hon. Let me know when you got it developed. Yeah. Can I ask you about... You're the right... Gabriel would prefer to touch as little of Mosley's stuff as possible. Mosley's desk has more ground. Mosley's police department memos and other didactic blurbs. An intercom. How high tech. Who's that? Franks. What a babe, huh? Mosley's office looks a lot like his room at college. Mosley's bookcase holds old magazine art prints of the mall variety. Mosley's office. Mosley's desk has more groin on it than on he head. I'm looking, I'm looking. Well, I'll be seeing you. Have a good one. Hello, beautiful. It's me. Really? I forgot you were gone. Got a minute, Grace? What's up? Do you know anything about snakes? Doing a family tree, Gabriel? Very funny. I mean real snakes. You know, scaly, cold-blooded. I would have thought you'd find them empathetic. Mm-hmm. I know very little about reptiles of any kind and prefer to keep it that way. I think there's a book on snakes around here somewhere, though. Okay, thanks. What can you tell me about St. John's Eve? St. John's Eve? Mm, never heard of it. It must be a local custom. New Orleans love any excuse to celebrate. Do you know what Cabri Saint Gar means? Hmm. No. Sounds French, though. Do you have messages for me? Nope. None right now. Could you do some research for me? Sure. What? Could you see what you can find out about a woman named Malia Getty? Hmm. The name Getty sounds familiar. 
What's your interest in her? Oh, just, you know, stuff about the voodoo murders. If you could get an address... Mm-hmm. They're murders. Right. I'll see what I can find out. Anything else? I can't think of anything. Okay. Well... <sighs> it's about closing time. So it is. Good night, Gracie. Good night, Gabriel. And uh, try not to dream, okay? Good morning. Don't you look swell today? Actually, swollen. Ugh. So have some. There's a fresh pot on the table. Seriously, you look like hell. Your hair is sticking straight up like a... Oh. It always does that. Never mind. Ha ha. Did you dream about the fire and the hang guy and that lion thing last night? Leopard, not lion. Did you get anything on Malia Getty? Well, I did get her address, but you're a little out of your league here, big fella. The Gettys own three local hospitals, just to name a few of their assets. They run in very high circles. Did you get an address? I got the address. I suppose this has nothing to do with the fact that Malia Getty is incredibly gorgeous. I should have known you wouldn't go for a rich, ugly socialite. And that address is... Hey! Far be it from me to postpone your total humiliation. It's 557 West Ingram. That's a garden district, a state city. That's all I wanted to know, and yes, my dear. Malia Getty is the most dangerous-looking diversion I've ever seen. Ouch! Oi, men. Got a minute, Grace? What's up? Do you have messages for me? Nope. None right now. Could you do some research for me? Sure. What? I can't think of anything. Okay. Times Picayune, dated June 19, 1993. 
A front page article describes the most recent of the voodoo murders. Gabriel scans it but learns nothing new. The article reiterates that the voodoo aspect of the crimes is fake. Gabriel shivers. It looked real enough to him. Elsewhere, there's an article about the history of Jackson Square called La Plaza d'Arma. Under French rule, it was used for executions, firing squads, hanging, even impalement and breaking on the wheel. Yikes! Of course, these days it's mostly a hangout for tourists, street musicians and local artists. Gabriel also scans the Aquarius horoscope for the day. Chances of a dark star rising on this day. Do not trust your instinct. I feel a dark star rising, all right. Seen any good movies? I saw a great documentary last night on pyramid excavations. You mean small, dark places that haven't been touched in centuries? Sounds right up your alley. Well, it did help me gain a better understanding of your mind. Did I ever tell you that you're actually quite attractive? Be still, my heart. Had any customers lately? Uh, no, but I'm sure you have. You know, you really should get out more. But then who'd take care of St. George's? Or me. Exactly. Oh, done anything interesting lately? By your definition? No. I prefer it that way. Keeping busy? Not really. If you need any research done, let me know. Did I ever tell you that you're actually quite attractive? Be still, my heart. I've got some things I need to do. Good luck! Bonjour, Monsieur Walker. Oh, bienvenue, Madame Casanova. Comment ça va? How you be feeling today? Well, I'll tell you, Mr. Walker, I'm certain someone's buried a sleep knot bag somewhere near my steps. I haven't slept a wink in weeks. Oh, don't that beat all. Well, you're gonna need some easy night candles then. Do you think that would help? I do hope you're right. I said three rosaries this morning for our lady's intervention. Rosaries are good, sure enough. But you burn those candles too and you're gonna whip any old no sleep gree gree, I tell you for sure. Very well, Mr. Walker. Put them on my account and send them round to my house. Oh, and there's another thing. I didn't catch her at it, but I know Mrs. Lefebvre put stomachache powder in my tea at the last meeting of the Creole Grand Dames. Oh, I've been in misery. You put nine pinheads up in a little box, add a pinch of graveyard dust, and put it under her front port step. That'll turn the trick back on Mrs. Lefebvre, and she'll be the one with the bellyache. I have the pins and the dust. Right here if you want them. If the Blessed Virgin will grant me her protection, I'll be safe from these practitioners of evil. We, oui, madame. Though it don't hurt to be proactive none either. Now does it? Naturellement, monsieur. Merci beaucoup. Mais non, madame. It is nothing. Au revoir. 
Au revoir, Monsieur Walker. Can I ask you just a few more questions? Whatever, man. Do you know anything about snakes? What kind of snakes? Um, the kind they use in voodoo? Pythons and boas. So I've heard. Really? Do you have one? Are you crazy? What would I want with a python? What's the significance of St. John's Eve? It's the biggest night of the year in voodoo. What goes on exactly? Uh, I couldn't say. What did you mean when you said Cabri sans corps? I didn't say that. You did? I heard you say it. You heard wrong, monsieur. I said no such thing. That customer of yours, the little old lady? Customer? The woman I saw in here, Madame Cazonu, you called her. I don't talk about my customers to men who come in off the street. It's important that I talk to Madame Cazonu. You see, I'm doing some research and... I can't tell you anything about her. It's imp... I can't tell you... Tell me about yourself. How did you get into this kind of business? Why should I discuss my business with you, man? Hi there. Is this your store? This is a Dixieland drugstore and I own it, me. Name's Walker. Willie Walker. So, this is a voodoo store, huh? Voodoo? No, man, this is a curio shop. The things you see here are from local folklore. None of it's real, I tell you for sure. What about these magic oils and powders you're selling? Aren't they a part of voodoo? Read the label, man. We make no claim. Sold as curio only. It means what it says, no? These are novelties, not voodoo. So, do you get many tourists in here? We oui, all the time. They want to buy a bottle of money-drawn oil or a wanga bag to take home with them. So, does any of this stuff actually work? Are you crazy, man? These are just curios, novelties for the tourists. So, do you get many... We... Oui. Welcome, my friend. Hello. I am the proprietor, Dr. John. If you have any questions, I will be happy to assist. Great. My name is Knight, and I'll probably take you up on that. Could I ask you some questions? That is why I am here. What can you tell me about voodoo? Historical voodoo? Or the voodoo currently practiced in the city? Tell me about historical voodoo. Very well. I will start at the beginning, Mr. Knight and will go on from there at your prompting. Sounds good. As you may know, Voodoo is a grassroots religion formed by the mixing together of many different African tribal religions and Anglo religions, such as Catholicism or Protestantism. In other words, 
it is a religion born of the African slave trade. But African slaves were imported not only by the United States, but also into the West Indies where the French and Spanish ran plantation islands. Prior to 1803, the New Orleans area was owned by France. The French Creole in those days owned many African slaves. But the Creole did not permit their slaves to gather, giving no chance for Voodoo to breed here natively. The Creole also knew enough about the corrupted pagan practices of the West Indies slaves to ban the importing of slaves from that region. So, how did Voodoo come to New Orleans? After the Louisiana Purchase, American legislators relaxed regulations. Slaves were permitted to gather. The Americans also removed the ban on West Indies slaves. Around the same time, a slave revolt occurred in Santo Domingo, what is now Haiti. Between the lifting of the ban and the Haitian revolt, West Indies slaves began pouring into New Orleans. Some of them were free people of color, freed or escaped slaves. Some came with their white owners who were fleeing from the revolt. What happened when the West Indies slaves got here? They brought voodoo with them. The native slaves were more than enthusiastic about embracing it. It gave them power, Mr. Knight if only in the form of a communal bond. Among the first meeting places were the Bayou St. John and the shore of Lake Pontchartrain. The early voodoos were heavy snake worshippers, worshipping the one they called the Great Zombie. Tell me more about historical voodoo. By 1817, the voodoo activities were beginning to cause fear among the white slave owners. An ordinance was passed to forbid slave gatherings except in designated public areas at designated times. The time was Sunday afternoons and the place Congo Square. The slaves and free people of color gathered to dance simulations of their voodoo dances right in sight of Creole society. Of course, they also continued to meet in private for the real thing. Tell me more about historical voodoo. There were a variety of kings and queens at first, voodoo priests and priestesses. But from about 1830, a single power emerged. This was a voodoo queen named Marie Laveau. Marie Laveau ruled voodoo in New Orleans for many years. Tell me more about historical voodoo. I've given you as much detail as I can, Mr. Knight. Look around the museum if you desire more information. Tell me about current voodoo. Many people think of voodoo in terms of magic spells or grigri. That kind of practice is actually called hoodoo and is only a part of true voodoo. Voodoo, the religion, has a strong following in New Orleans. In fact, it is growing quite rapidly. There are several voodoo churches or temples in the city and others all across the United States. African Americans see it as a tradition all their own whites, and there are many in their religion, are attracted to it because they think it is exotic. I, personally, am more interested in the history of voodoo. Some of the new movements are copying Haitian or even African voodoo, but it is the voodoo of New Orleans that I find so intriguing. Tell me more about current voodoo. There are many voodooans in New Orleans. They often do business selling grigri, telling fortunes, providing luck, and occasionally misfortune. Perhaps you would like to meet a voodooan. We refer those who seek a deeper experience with voodoo to a local practitioner, Magentia Moonbeam. Sure, 
I'd love to meet her. She lives on the corner of Orleans and Dauphine. I will call her and tell her you might stop by. Great. Thanks. Tell me more about current voodoo. You have tapped my resources. My expertise is really historical. Perhaps Ms. Moonbeam can be of further help. Is there anything else I should know about hoodoo? Not if your interest is primarily in voodoo. Hoodoo is of interest to those who study rural folk traditions, but it will not aid you in understanding true voodoo. Is there anything else I should know about hoodoo? Not if you're interested. Hoodoo. What can you tell me about voodoo? Historical voodoo? What do you know about the voodoo murders? The killings in the newspaper? I know that they have nothing to do with true voodoo in New Orleans. What do you think of New Orleans? It is the only city in the United States as far as I am concerned. What is it about New Orleans that you so admire? It has a real culture of its own, Mr. Knight, amid the horrid blandness that is Americana. New Orleans alone has a voice. Spoken like a true New Orleanian. Do you have anything else to say about New Orleans? I have already given you my opinion, Mr. Knight. Do you know anything about snakes? Ah, you have perhaps noticed the museum's snake, Mr. Knight. They are beautiful creatures, do you not agree? And the tourists seem to associate them with voodoo. Is the snake yours? Do you use it in your practice of voodoo? I admire the spirit of this snake, Mr. Knight, but snakes like the museums can be quite dangerous to handle. You didn't really answer my question. I think I did, Mr. Knight. I'd really like to know more about your snake. There is really nothing more to say, Mr. Knight. What can you tell me about St. John's Eve? It is one of the important ceremonial nights in Voodoo. What else can you tell me about St. John's Eve? I am afraid I do not know the origins of St. John's Eve. I only know that it was a night of ritual long before Voodoo came to New Orleans. What else can you tell me about I am afraid I have little else to say about that subject. Do you have any idea what Cabri Saint-Gar means? I fear my French is not all it should be, Mr. Knight. Tell me more about Marie Laveau. There were actually two Marie Laveaux, mother and daughter. Most people thought they were the same woman. Her continued youth added to the mystique. The original, the mother, was also known as Widow Paris. It was she that began the empire. When the Widow Paris began to practice, there were many voodooans in the city. By 1830, she was voodoo queen of all New Orleans. Tell me more about Marie Laveau. The Widow Paris was a hairdresser for rich Creole ladies. She also paid household servants to spy for her. Between the two, she knew everything about everyone who mattered in New Orleans. She was not above using her information to appear psychic, to intimidate, or even to blackmail. You sound as though you admire her. For a black woman in the mid-1800s to gain power is an incredible thing, Mr. Knight, however she achieved it. Tell me more about Marie Laveau. She kept a pet snake, danced with it too. She held traditional voodoo ceremonies out by the lake. 
She took herself seriously. Very seriously. But she was not above selling tickets for her events to curiosity seekers. She was not above using voodoo any way she could to make money, that is for certain. But, if she had been in another line of work, in another age, that would been interpreted as entrepreneurial genius rather than a sign of fraudulence. Hey, you don't need to convince me. I admire anyone that can actually make a living. Tell me more about Marie Laveau. It was Marie Laveau who defined the voodoo that is truly and uniquely the voodoo of New Orleans. She invented hundreds, if not thousands of spells, potions, charms, and incantations. These form the basis of the modern practice, not to mention the folk tradition of hoodoo. Tell me more about Marie Laveau. Her daughter, Marie Glapion, took over when the widow Paris got old. Most people thought it was the same Marie Laveau. Both Maries encouraged that point of view. The widow Paris died in 1881. Marie Glapion had been reigning a long time by then. After the death of the widow Paris, other voodoo queens surfaced, and by 1890, the cult was fragmented again. Marie Glapion just sort of faded away. Tell me more about Marie Laveau. The Laveau tomb, where one or both of the Maries are believed to be buried, is in St. Louis Cemetery No. 1. It is a popular shrine for practitioners and tourists alike. I myself take tours through the cemetery on a regular basis. Really? Do you have any running this week? No. But the cemetery is open to the general public as well. Tell me more about Marie Laveau. You have heard everything about Marie Laveau that a layman might expect to understand. Have you ever heard of a Schottenjäger? No, I have not. Tell me about yourself. Me? Yes, if you don't mind. What is it you wish to learn? Why did you open a voodoo museum? The subject has fascinated me all my life, and I wanted to help preserve the cultural heritage it represents. What kind of background in voodoo do you have? Let us say that I cut my teeth on it, Mr. Knight. It is in my blood. Do you do anything besides run the museum? No. The museum does not make me a rich man, but my material needs are simple. I prefer to focus on my one true interest in life. What are your own religious beliefs? My beliefs are too personal and too complex to discuss with a layman, Mr. Knight. Just tell me anything. I am originally from the West Indies myself, you know. Really? What brought you to New Orleans? I was drawn here for personal reasons. Just tell me anything. I am a vegetarian. Really? I can't imagine living without meat. That must be the hunter in you, Mr. Knight. Just tell me anything. I do not care for small talk, Mr. Knight. Just tell me anything. I am not an easy person to get to know. I am a very private man. Isn't that unusual for someone in the museum business? Not at all. 
My displays speak for me. Just tell me anything. Not everyone can come see the museum, so I occasionally do public speaking on the subject of historical voodoo. Anything coming up that I might attend? No. But then, you have me all to yourself right now, do you not? Just tell me anything. I am originally from the West. Really? I... Actually, I can't think of a thing. Then, let us discuss some... That wouldn't be particularly illuminating. Damn. I've always wanted a skeleton with a bow. A very large, very formidable looking snake is secured in a plexiglass cage. Dr. John is a huge man. If his manner weren't so pleasant, he'd be intimidating. Something about the shape of that knife gives Gabriel the creeps. An official voodoo wish and stump. Rub it and make a wish, a card said. Funny, I say the same thing to women. I wish Maliagedi was permanently grafted to my thighs. That display doesn't have any mechanical function. I'm close enough to using a coffin as it is. The little coffin is empty. There is nothing. The doorway is already open. I'll be going. Come back again. Welcome, Seeker. You must be the one Dr. John called me about. I guess so. My name is... Wait. Gabriel Knight? <laughs> You're too quick for me. Actually, Dr. John told me. You have come to the right place, Mr. Knight. Tell me how I can help. A large sluggish snake rests on the floor of the fancy birdcage. Apparently, Magenta is not a fastidious housekeeper. A shed skin shares the cage with its original owner. Magenta snakes looks a little sickly, but Gabriel would still rather not stick his hand. Magentia sn There's nothing to use the tweezers. There's nothing to Could I ask you a few questions? Of course, Seeker. What can you tell me about voodoo? My practice is mainly selling charms and potions with magic power, such as grigri and voodoo oils. You know, everything from unrequited love to wandering spouses to winning a lawsuit. But my spells and charms are powerful, and they work. What can you tell me about voodoo? Much of a voodoo yen's work 
is protecting her clients from the spell of others. I make special protective Grigri to be worn in secret. They keep evil spells from working against my clients. What can you tell me about voodoo? The recipes for voodoo charms have been handed down from master to apprentice for centuries. What can you tell me about voodoo? I have told you all it is proper for you to know, Monsieur Knight. What do you know about the voodoo murders? Why, that has nothing to do with me and my clientele. But I can tell you that you should stay as far from it as possible. There is badness there. Very bad. What can you tell me about New Orleans? New Orleans is the center of voodoo practice in the United States. What can you tell me about New Orleans? It is a fascinating city with many dark secrets. What can you tell me about New Orleans? It is my favorite place in the world. What can you tell me about New Orleans? It is my favorite place in the world. Do you know anything about snakes? Snakes? You mean like my beloved Grimwald? She's a python, you know. Quite deadly in the wrong hands. I was trained by one of the great voodoo queens to learn how to hypnotize and handle snakes. Tell me more about snakes. Oh, I wouldn't want to give away my trade secrets. What's the significance of St. John's Eve? St. John's Eve? It is the greatest night of the voodoo year. There is always a traditional conclave on St. John's Eve. Most of our voodoo churches these days hold functions in the church hall. But in the old days, they had ceremonies out in the wild, and they wore animal masks and had a huge bonfire and dancing. I used to go when I was an apprentice. Sometimes in the swamp, you know, Bayou St. John, sometimes at the lake, Lake Pontchartrain. What's the significance? Special ceremonies are performed, and the lower come to ride the faithful. What's the significance of St. John's Eve? There is no night more powerful to voodoo magic. What's the significance of St. John's Eve? There is no... Do you have any idea what Cabri saint Car means? Uh, no. <laughs> no, I don't. Do you know anything about Marie Laveau? Oh, yes. She was the first of the great voodoo queens. Do you know anything about Marie Laveau? She ruled voodoo in New Orleans for a hundred years, they say. Do you know anything about Marie Laveau? I'm sure a historian could help you with that, if you want to know more. Tell me about the animal masks. I saw them used once or twice when I was younger, but you don't see them much anymore. They are too... close. Too close to what? Just bad karma. Tell me about the animal masks. I don't know what else to say about that. Have you ever heard the word Schottenjäger? I don't know anything about that. Tell me about yourself. Yes, <laughs> what would you like to hear? How'd you get into this business? I trained in the voodoo arts for many years with the great Queen Tabitha. Really? Who's she? You have never heard of her? For shame! I can see you know little of the world of magic. I'm beginning to get that impression, yes. 
What kind of people come to see you? Seekers after the truth, such as yourself. Do you do anything else? I am a voodoo yen, and that is plenty. It takes much spiritual effort. How many voodoo yens are there? No one knows exactly. Many practice in secret. There are probably hundreds. But of course the level and the power of the voodoo yens differ greatly, depending on their training and natural gifts. Tell me anything at all. I haven't always lived in New Orleans. I came here from Kansas as a young woman. Tell me anything at all. I began studying voodoo more than 20 years ago. I am well versed in the magical art. Tell me anything at all. Many non-believers come to me. They are usually believers when they leave. Tell me anything at all. Dr. John sends me many seekers such as yourself. Tell me anything at all. I am happy here with my clientele and my snake. Tell me anything at all. I haven't always lived in New Orleans. I came here from Kansas as a young woman. I can't think of anything. Very well. Give me an example of a Greek. All right. Here's an old one. Take a lodestone and some brimstone to a crossroads at midnight. Light the brimstone with a match, and a spirit will come and give you advice in gambling. Give me an example of a Greek. Gri Here's an old hoodoo, Dr. Grigri. Place a dime under your client's tongue. And if the client is under a spell of any kind, the dime will turn black. Give me an example of a gri gri. To send someone away, take a rotten egg and write that person's name on it nine times. You can also write on it where you want to send that person to. Take it and throw it against his door at midnight. Give me an example of a Greek gri Here's a nasty one. To kill someone, get a sock or a shoe that belongs to that person. Put graveyard dirt in it and bury it under their front steps. Does that work? I don't know. I never tried it. Give me an example of a Greek gri To ensure the safety of your child, cut a lock of its hair while it is still a baby and keep it with you. The child must have all its hair before it can die. These are interesting. They're very old. The Grigri that I prepare is much more powerful, I can assure you. But I don't give out those secrets. Give me an example of a... All right. Uh, about Grimwald. What about her? Where'd you get Grimwald? She belonged to a traveling reptile show. She was being terribly mistreated, so I offered to buy her. She's named after a spirit guide I had once. The spirit Grimwald was a very powerful female snake priestess in Egyptian times. Grimwald doesn't sound Egyptian. I only know what the spirits tell me. Monsieur, I am sure they know better than we. How'd you learn to handle Grimwald? I told you a great voodoo queen taught me. She learned from Marie Laveau herself. Ah, oh, fascinating. Would you consider giving me one of Grimwald's scales? No, I couldn't do that. You might do some Grigri of your own, no? One must be very careful with such things. Hair clippings, nail parings, and snake scales. Are you sure you wouldn't consider giving me one? I told you. How about showing me how you handle Grimwald? 
Really? You would like to see me dance, perhaps? That would be... swell. I won't make you wait, Monsieur Knight. No matter what you see, do not be frightened. I'll give it my best shot. Gable grabs the shed snake skin while Magenta is otherwise occupied. They are truly inspiring, isn't it? That's certainly one word for it. Dr. John tells me you're a voodoo practitioner of some kind. Yes, I am a voodoo yen, a voodoo priestess. Do you get many people in here on an average day? Some days the need for my power is greater than others. But I have many regular clients who would be lost without my vision, Mr. Knight. I can imagine. That's a great looking mask on the wall. It's from Africa, a gift to me from Queen Tabitha. Do you know Dr. John well? Oh, yes. We are old friends. Those with gifts are often drawn together. So, let's say I came to you wanting to attract a woman. Oh, what would you advise? Oh, I wouldn't think you'd have any trouble attracting women, Mr. Knight. Oh. Uh, no. I guess I don't. So what advice do you give your clients? I tell them to follow the light, beware of the darkness, and always get expert spiritual advice from someone with the sight. That's what I thought you'd say. Do you know Dr. John? Oh, yeah. It's not that easy to get a message from the crystal ball. It's not that easy. A large crystal ball is prominently displayed. The mask is made of carved wood and looks African. The moonbeam residence looks like a cross between a voodoo temple and a Victorian fortune teller's parlor by way of H Street. Magentia's parlor is as open as it's going to get. Well, I guess I'll be gone now. Do what you will, if it harm none. Count on it.
the electrician has left his tools behind. He must plan on returning. Gabriel is no handyman. He has an aversion to screwdrivers of the non-liquid variety. The gauge is fixed in place. The gauge is... Mostly, my man. Yeah, yeah, what is it, you wanker? Oh, it's getting cold in here. It's freezing in this office. You never know it was June. Woo! Damn, it's cold. Well, I'll be seeing you. Have a good one. Air conditioning must be on the blink. Are you hot? Man, I'm hot. I'm looking, I'm looking. Can I ask you about some stuff? You're the writer. Ask away. Do you know anything about snakes? The only thing I know about snakes is I don't like them. Do you know anything about Marie Laveau? Is she that red-headed chick that works at Freddy's? Uh, no. Then I don't know her. Do you know anything about animal masks? Animal masks? You mean like those Halloween masks they sometimes use in robberies? I don't think so. More like real animals. Never ran across anything like that. What's the status on the voodoo murders case? You're as filled in as me. How about getting me some coffee? What am I, your slave? Hey, I'm working my butt off here. Yeah, yeah, fine. Some people are never satisfied. I think I'll just borrow this badge. Hey, what are you doing with my coat? Nothing. I thought I saw something crawling on it. <laughs> Just drink this. Thanks. Tons. I mean it. The coffee cup is empty. 
No, really. No, thanks. Gabriel would prefer to touch as little of Mosley's stuff as possible. Excuse me, sir. What you need, boy? Mind if I pick your brain a minute? Go ahead. These folks ain't in no hurry. Do you know anything about snakes? Snakes? I see snakes around here all the time. Most of them ain't poisonous, of course. Do you know anything about snakes? I don't mind snakes myself. But lots of folks are afraid of them. Do you know anything about snakes? I don't mind snakes. Do you know anything about Marie Laveau? Sure, sure. She was the voodoo queen of New Orleans. A powerful voodooine and a powerful sorceress. Believers still come to her tomb, you know. They write secret marks on the walls, leaving offerings and things. Then there's the tourists. They come out of curiosity. As a matter of fact, that big Dr. John fella from the Voodoo Museum, he's here at least once today. But Marie Laveau's tomb ain't the only one the believers visit and make markings and leave offerings at. What else can you tell me about Marie Laveau? Her tomb's on all our tours. Even the Baptists come round here to go. Of course, you may not know this, but some of the real serious voodoo types argue that she ain't in this one at all, but down in an unmarked tomb in number three. It's all the same to me, I say. Save me a lot of cleanup work if she weren't here, if you ask me. What else can you tell me about Marie Laveau? Boy, go out and buy a book if you really want to know. I ain't too sure of my facts these days, no how. Do you know anything about animal masks? I don't know what you're talking about. You said there were other marked tombs? <laughs> yep. I seen bull hearts left on tombs and a nest of vulture feathers, plates of peas and corn green. Animal parts, human parts even, it looked like. Male parts, if you get my meaning. And this at one of the great family crypts, mind you. Odd how them types just pick a spot and stick to it. What other tombs get marked? Can you show me? No, 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 I ain't one for naming names. I don't like to encourage that kind of thing. It's distressing to the families, and rightly so. Don't know how that sort of thing gets started. Why folks come to start leaving stuff at that one spot. But it happens all the same. What other tombs get... No, no, don't know. Tell me something about St. Louis Cemetery. Just look around, just look around. I want a copy of these strange marks. The marks are reddish in color and reminds Gabriel of crosses. They look like they've been here a few days at least. Near the Laveau tomb is a piece of red brick. Undoubtedly a cast off from spiritual graffiti writers.
This is the tomb of Marie Laveau, voodoo queen of New Orleans. Odd-looking marks adorn the Laveau tomb wall. Food, trinkets, and more unsettling things have been left at Marie Laveau's tomb as offerings from believers. The Wright Family Tomb Several of Gabriel and Grand's family members are laid to rest here. The imposing tomb is elaborately labeled Gede. A stone angel leans down to gaze at something unseen. Most of the plaster has fallen away over the years. The tomb is closed tightly. The doors are heavy. The plate is locked in position. There's a keyhole on the plate. But Gabriel can't operate that without a key. The vases don't function that way. The vases don't... F Moving the vases wouldn't... The heavy marble... The plate is locked. The tomb is much too heavy. The tomb... To the east, there is only the back wall of the cemetery. Gabriel cannot go any further in that direction. No way! No way! Something might answer! This door is pretty solid. Gabriel can't get inside unless he's invited. This door is pretty... The knocker. The knocker. The knocker is firmly attached to the front. Gabriel can't take the doorknob. This door's... May I help you? I'd like to see Malia Getty, please. I'm sorry, but unless you have an appointment or official business, I cannot announce you. I do have official business. Really? Please tell me the nature of your business.
My name is Detective Mosley. I'm here on police business. Really? How interesting. Wait here. I'll inform Miss Giddy. Miss Giddy will see you. Right this way. Miss Giddy will be down shortly. Thank you. What can I do for you, Detective? Beautiful women. They must be relatives. They are. Beautiful women. They are. Modern art? More or less. It's a Picasso. Nice statue. I like it. Thank you. It's The Rebellious Slave by Michelangelo. Ming Dynasty, perhaps? Mind if I ask you a few questions, Miss Giddy? I assume that's what you're here for, Detective. What can you tell me about voodoo? Voodoo? Why would you want to know about that, Detective? It's rather silly, isn't it? There's nothing silly about the voodoo murders. But that voodoo is faked. That's what I've read in the papers. That's what the papers say, all right. But you're not convinced? No, frankly, I'm not. The police department isn't known for its imagination. Oh. Well, I can see that your imagination is considerable. What do you know about the voodoo murders? The murders? Only what I read in the papers. And what do you read in the papers? I'm sure you know much more about it than I, Detective. Tell me about your life in New Orleans. The Getty family came to New Orleans in 1800. We worked very hard to get where we are. On the other hand, we've done a lot for this community. I can believe that. You're doing a lot for me, right now. Tell me more about New Orleans. I'm afraid I don't get out into New Orleans society much. Because of the Getty money, we have slots in the best country clubs and on the best Mardi Gras courts. But I must admit, I hate it. I avoid actually making an appearance unless it becomes absolutely necessary. I know about those courts. They're very exclusive. Yes, especially when it comes to people of my race. That's why we don't turn down the appointments. It's a rare opportunity to rub their noses in it. But that's not where I spend my time. I have more important things to do with my life. That's admirable. Many women would love the chance to get caught up in that kind of life. I'm not any kind of woman you might be familiar with. Yes, I can see that. Tell me more about New Orleans. I don't know what else you want to hear, Detective. Anything you might care to know about my public life, you can easily look up in the papers. Do you know anything about snakes? I'm afraid I quite abhor them. What can you tell me about St. John's Eve? I believe it's some sort of local holiday, but I don't know much about it. Do you have any idea what Cabri saint gar means? No, I don't. What does it mean, Detective? That's confidential information, ma'am. Do you know anything about Marie Laveau? I have heard of her, of course, but that's about it. Do you know anything about animal masks? Animal masks? I don't know what you mean. Have you ever heard of a Schottenjäger? No, I'm afraid I can't help you with that, Detective. Tell me about yourself. I suppose I don't really have a choice. What do you want to know, Detective? 
What kind of things interest you? I don't have a lot of free time, but I do appreciate the arts. Opera, symphony, ballet, fine art. If you look around, you'll see that we collect African art, for example. Yes, it's very beautiful. It is, Detective. It means a great deal to me. Do you have a career? A career? Being the head of the Getty family is a 24-hour-a-day job. We have many holdings and many responsibilities, financial and otherwise. The management of our business affairs and properties leaves me with time for little else. Poor little rich girl? Believe it or not, Detective, wealth does have its price. Tell me about your family. The Gettys? We're a very private family. How many people are there in your family? Well, my mother just passed away. I am sorry. So am I. She was a magnificent woman. We were very close. I was an only child. And your father? I never knew him. It's hard to believe that any man would leave a woman like you. Or like your mother must have been. He did not leave, Detective. But that's really none of your concern. I'm sorry. Go on. There are, of course, other Gettys in the city. I have a large, extended family. I see. Do you have a husband? A boyfriend? I'm very independent, Detective. The women in my family have always preferred it that way. So, you've never been married? No, and I never will be. What about children? Yes, that is likely. Someday. I'd like to hear just about anything. I do a lot of charity work around the city. Primarily in the prison and reform system. I'm not a professional sociologist, but it does interest me. I'd like to hear just about anything. I have a business degree from Vanderbilt. I wanted to study psychology, but my family's interests came first. Oh? Why not something like law, then? Surely that would have been an asset to the family. Law? Please, I do have some morals, Detective. I'd like to hear just about anything. For the record, I'm 28, Detective. I'd like to hear just about anything. I have a few friends. A woman in my position can't really afford them. I'd like to hear just about anything. I try to stay away from the media as much as possible. Last year there was that story about John Kennedy Jr. and I. The phone didn't stop ringing for weeks. I prefer to keep my private life private. I would appreciate it if you would keep my name away from any public association with the police, Detective. Of course. I'd like to hear just about anything. I do a lot of charity work. I wouldn't know where to begin. As you wish, Detective. Can you tell me anything about what happened out at the lake? I wish I could, but I've never seen or heard anything unusual at the lake, and I do spend quite a bit of time out there. Can you tell me anything about what happened out at the lake? I wish I could. Excuse me, but your eyes are really distracting. I don't think I've ever seen a color quite like that brownish gold. It's so deep and rich. Man, if I could bottle that, I'd make a fortune. Thank you, Detective. That's an interesting observation, though probably not relevant to your case. A good detective never knows what might be relevant, Miss Getty. Then you must be truly exceptional at your job. I think this has gone on long enough. You're not really a detective, are you? Who, me? Well, I am on this case, Miss Getty. I saw you at the lake yesterday. I thought you must be with the police since you were there, but you don't act like a police officer. Besides, I'm rather certain that the other man said his name was Mosley. All right, you caught me. I'm not with the police. My name is Gabriel Knight. I'm a writer working with Detective Mosley on a book. Well, Mr. Knight, now that we've established who you are, perhaps you can tell me the real reason you're here. Well, I am researching the book, 
And I thought you might have seen or heard something at the lake. I don't like liars, Mr. Knight. Okay, okay, you're right. I, I really just wanted to see you again. You can be mad at me if you want, but I swear I've never done anything like this before. Mr. Knight, you've lied about your identity and wasted my time with meaningless questions. If it weren't vaguely flattering, I'd really be angry. You're lucky I don't call the real police. I think you should go, Mr. Knight. Malia, wait. If you just give me a chance. I've wasted enough time. I'll have Robert show you out. Robert? Show Mr. Knight out, please. I most certainly will. Thank you very much. I had a lovely time. Ah, shit. Gabriel didn't come here to mess with the plans. Gabriel didn't come. Gabriel didn't come here to mess. Gabriel, my love, how nice to see you. Nice to see you too, Gran. Make yourself at home, son. Can we talk, Gran? Of course, my boy. How can I help? Do you know anything about snakes? Snakes? What kind of snakes, dear? I don't know. Local kinds? Well, we used to get cottonmouths in the park when I was a girl, but I haven't heard of one being sighted for years. Milk snakes and garter snakes are also around these parts, but they can't hurt you. Thanks, Grant. Do you know anything about snakes? I don't know what else to tell you, dear. What can you tell me about St. John's Eve? St. John's Eve? Hmm. I remember when I was a girl, we always had a St. John's Eve Mass. The Mass was set at midnight, and we held candles. One time on the way home, we were waylaid by a large group of drunken revelers. They didn't hurt us, but I was frightened. My father was furious. We never went to St. John's Eve Mass after that. Do you have any idea what Cabri Saint Gaur means? Hmm. Something without something, I think. My French is so rusty. I swear my mind is going. It's okay, thanks. Do you know anything about Marie Laveau? Marie Laveau? Of course! She was that voodoo woman, wasn't she? She preyed on people's fears and superstitions is what I think. There are always those willing to take other people's money for nothing. You stay away from people like that, Gabriel. Yes, Gran. Do you know anything about- I don't know what else- to Do you know anything about animal masks? Why no, dear. Do you mean- Mardi Gras masks? Never mind, Gran. Do you know anything else about Heinz Ritter? I've told you all I know. You know, you get prettier every time I see you. <sighs> well, Gran, I'd better get going. All right, dear.
a small boy is tap dancing enthusiastically for a lucky dog vendor. The vendor ignores him. That jazz band is pretty good. <laughs> the lucky dog vendor has his nose buried in a paperback novel. Gabriel noticed that it is not. Big surprise. One of his. People seem to be enjoying the park, despite the lack of sunshine. Give a hoot. People seem to be enjoying the park, despite the lack of sunshine. Do you mind if I ask you a few questions? Yep, I mind all right. Why? Because A, I don't know anything, and B, I'm busy. Oh. Could I get a lucky dog, please? Not now, I'm busy. An unambitious person? In the 90s? Ah, amazing. There's no reason to do that to the lucky dog part. There's no reason to do that to the Why would the vendor be interested in that? A Cajun band, inventive as always with their instruments, is having a good old time on the lawn. Funny how catchy that toe tapping can be. Give a hoot. Gabriel doesn't want to take that out of the park. An artist is taking advantage of the fine weather. Could I ask you some questions? I'd rather not. I, I really get focused when I'm drawing. Okay, fine. The drummer is busy. The juggler is busy. The artist is an able draftsman but interrogating him wouldn't lend much to Gabriel's investigation. Interrogating the little boy wouldn't be very useful. You dance pretty well, for a kid. Give me some money, then. I don't have any. Don't block the view, mister. Do you do requests? Got any money? No. Something to eat? Uh, no. There you have it. No. Do you do requests? No. Someday. Uh. De Could I get a lucky dog, please? Not now, I'm best. And on. I have this gift certificate. I'm busy. It's good for 20 bucks at St. George's Books, finest bookstore in New Orleans. Really? I'll have to check it out sometime. You could take this gift certificate with you, if you'll give me a lucky dog. A lucky dog for a $20 gift certificate? Well, sure. 
There you go. Gabriel magnifies the shed skin from Magentia, Moonbeam's snake. The snake scales are hued brown. They don't match the scale from Lake Pontchartrain. It's the shed. Did you do requests? Got any more? No. Someday? Uh, no. There you You wouldn't like a lucky dog by any chance. Would I? <laughs> Thanks, mister. You got any special requests? Let me know. Hey, come back here. Hey! The artist is off chasing his errant drawing. The artist would not appreciate Gabriel messing with his stuff while he's gone. Oh, Unbelievable. Rotten luck! There's her drawing caught up against the hedges. Gabriel can't reach the drawing from where he is. Interrogating the little boy wouldn't... You mentioned something about special requests? Yeah. You got one? Can you fit through the bars around the statue? Can I? Just watch me. Good. There's something in there I can't quite reach. Come on. Can you reach that piece of paper? Sure thing. Here you go. Yep. See ya. This is the last page. This is the first page of inventory. The letter is addressed to Han. Gabriel has a photocopy of the affi- It's a technical drawing of Saint Louis Cathedral. There's nothing written on the drawing. The single sheet of- Does not Could I ask you some questions? I'd rather not. I, I really get focused when I'm drawing. Okay, fine. How's it going? Well, 
life sucks. I just lost two days worth of work. What you working on now? Just starting another drawing of the cathedral. This belongs to you, doesn't it? My drawing? How'd you get it? Oh, it was a bit of a squeeze, but I hate to see you lose your work. I lost my only copy of a manuscript once. Well, you saved my butt. Let me know if I can ever do the same for you, huh? Say, do you think there's anything you can do with these patterns? What do you need? Is there any way you can reconstruct the whole pattern from these partials? Hmm. Pattern is probably circular, and there's some repetition in the elements. What is this from, anyway? You'd never believe me. Okie dokie. Well, there's... Hmm. I think there's an area missing. If you could get me any more of these... I'll see what I can do. I have another one of those patterns. Really? Let's see. Yeah. Yeah, this is great. I think there's enough overlap now. I'll give it my best shot. I'll show you what I come up with tomorrow. Great. I appreciate it. What would the artist do with that? It's a piece of brick. I had a feeling you'd be back. Really? Boy, you are amazing. Please, be seated. Do these symbols mean anything to you? Oh, the voodoo code. It is very secret, yes. I studied it with my mentor, the great Queen Tabitha. Really? Great. Can you tell me what it says? Hmm. Let's see. Well, some of it is nonsense, I'm afraid. Whoever wrote this wasn't very good. That's all right. Just tell me what it says. It starts with a D and a J, and then... Okay, this part makes sense. It says, Conclave tonight, bring... Oh, then there's more nonsense. F-W-E-T-K-A-S-H. Well, that last bit might mean cash. Fresh cash? 
It doesn't make much sense. That's okay, thanks. DJ Conclave. K-A-S-H. It's a start. I'm happy I could help. Does this mean anything to you? I can be of no help to you, Seeker. The letter is addressed to Heinz Ritter, Gabriel's grandfather. Gabriel is carrying a lump of clay from the banks of Lake Pontchartrain. Does this mean anything to you? I can be of no help to you, Seeker. Does this mean anything to you? I can... Well, I guess I'll be gone now. Peace and harmony be yours. Right. a few questions. Sure. I'm not too busy at the moment. Do you know anything about snakes? What about them? Oh, just anything. Man, you ask the weirdest questions. I don't know anything about snakes. What's the significance of St. John's Eve? All I know is it's some kind of voodoo holiday. Does the phrase, Cabri sans car, mean anything to you? You know what goes in it? I don't think it's a drink. Oh, then I probably don't know anything about it. Have you ever heard of Marie Laveau? Sure. She's kind of the patron saint of voodoo in New Orleans. Don't know too much about her, but... Tourists sure get off on all that stuff. Have you ever heard of... There's a voodoo museum in town. They know more about it than I do. Do you know anything about animal masks? Come Mardi Gras, you see all kinds of masks in here. What can you tell me about your regulars in here? This crowd? The ones you see are mostly regulars. That guy and girl in the corner come here a lot. When they're not fighting, they're all over each other. In other words, they're in love. What can you tell me about your regulars in here? See those old guys at the chess table? That's Sam and Marcus. They played every day for 20 years. Sam, the one with the purple jacket, He's lost every one of those games. It's not that he's a bad player. I've seen him beat guys twice as good as Marcus. But Marcus has Sam so psyched out, he loses his nerve every time. What can you tell me about your regulars in here? I'd call you a regular, Gabe. And one of our local writer celebrities, too. Been coming in here, what, ten years now? Mm, don't remind me. We're still waiting for that best seller. Don't hold your breath. What can you tell me about... That's about all I can say. Tell me about the street musicians around here. I like music as much as the next guy, but 
They get pretty monotonous sometimes, you know? Like that drummer right outside. They say there's been a drummer outside Napoleon House since the day it opened. I like drums, but this character really gets on my nerves. It sounds like the same thing over and over. I just want to say, yeah, enough already. Sounds like my life. Tell me about the street musicians around here. Don't know what else I could say. Tell me about yourself. A good bartender listens to other people's life stories without telling his own. Can I ask you some questions? I'm trying to be with my lady here, pal. Far bit for me to stand in the way of romance. Can I ask you some questions? Sure. You want to know my son? Uh, on second thought, I don't think you could help. Forget it. Excuse me. I hate to interrupt your game, but could I ask you a few questions? What game? This isn't a game. It's a slaughter. He's right, you know, so let me die in peace with you. Sorry to bother you, but could I ask you a few questions? I'm not that chatty type, am I, Sam? No, you old bastard, you're not. Besides, I'm busy sucking poor old Sam dry. Go bug someone else! Ah, uh, you're a real sweetheart, Marcus, you bastard. Can I ask you some questions? I'm here to relax, friend. Buzz off. Right. Sorry. Gabriel cannot do anything with the drummer on the street. I knew you'd miss me, so I came back. The excitement of seeing you is killing me. Got a minute, Grace? What's up? Do you have messages for me? Nope. None right now. Do you know anything about Marie Laveau? Wasn't she a big voodoo queen before the Civil War? That's right. Well, you just heard everything I know about her. Do you know anything about animal masks? Uh, I I'd really rather not hear about your sex life, Knight. Could you do some research for me? Sure. What? I need you to look up a Madame Cazenou. Madame Cazenou? Is she related to the murders the same way your friend, Malia Getty, was? Grace, Gazanu is at least 70. As if that makes a difference to you. Okay, I'll see what I can find. Anything else? I can't think of anything. Okay. It's time to close shop. So it is. Have a nice night. You too. See you tomorrow.
I'm so glad you could join us today. I've got messages when you want them. Mmm. -hmm. I also checked out Kazanu. There are multiple listings in the white pages. I got the page, but you'll have to figure out the right one. Great, thanks. Now, are you going to tell me what happened yesterday with Malia Getty, or <laughs> is it just too embarrassing? Mm. Don't tell me you actually got to see her. Are uh, the star at tonight? Gabriel, you don't seriously think she's interested. She can have any man in the city. You know, men with bank accounts. You underestimate the Knight family's tragic poet samurai appeal. When Daddy married Mom, she was the hottest catch in town. Hmm. Huh. I always suspected there was something fishy in your family tree. But seriously, I think you should be careful. Oh, Grace. I'm serious. I don't know why, but I have a bad feeling in the pit of my stomach about this. It's called jealousy, my dear. And you're right. You should be jealous of Malia Getty, as should every woman on this planet. I just... Uh, oh, never mind. I'll just fix these books. Your life is in your own slippery little hands. The point is to get it into somebody else's hands. And soon. Times Pickle Hewn. Dated June 20, 1993. Gabriel scans over an uninteresting front page. Under the cultural events section, there's a notice about a lecture on African religions. The lecture is at Tulane University. Gabriel's horoscope for the day. An evil eye is upon you. Change course. Before it's too late. Lighten up. Got a minute, Grace? What's up? Do you have messages for me? Your pal mostly called. He left a message that they're interrogating a suspect this morning and you might want to be there. Sounds fun. Mm-hmm. I bet. Do you have more messages for me? That man from Germany called again, Wolfgang Ritter. Now he's claiming to be a relative of yours. I took down his number. If you change your mind and want to give him a call back, just ask me for it. Can I get that phone number for Wolfgang Ritter? Sure. I'll give it to you when we're done talking. Do you have more messages for me? I've given everything to you. Could you do some... Sure. What? I can't think of... Okay. Here's that phone number. Thanks. Wolfgang Ritter's phone number. Written in Grace's pretty scrawl. The number written on the note is four nine zero nine three two four three 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 three. Somewhere, there's a New Orleans phone book missing one of its C pages. Some
somewhere there's a New Orleans phone book missing one of its C pages. This is the last Hello. Hi. Is this the Kazunu residence? Yes. What can I do for you? Do you or does anyone in your family patronize the Dixieland drugstore? I'm a busy man. What are you selling? Nothing. Good. Goodbye. Hello, Casano residents. Hi. I was wondering if you could help me. Yeah? A woman in the Dixieland drugstore dropped her purse today, and the name Casano was inside it. Dixieland drugstore? Never heard of it. Sorry. Hello, I'm calling from the Dixieland Drugstore. We have an order for you. Castro, be quiet. Who is this? I'm a friend of the owner. I'm sure I don't know what you're talking about. Hello, St. Jean-Vierre's Wedding Chapel. How may I help you? Boy, do I have the wrong number. Sorry. That's perfectly all right. Goodbye. Somewhere there's a new idea. Casino residents, may I help you? Hi. You want a customer raffle at the Dixieland drugstore? No soliciting, please.
Yeah, what do you want? Uh, sorry. I think I have a wrong number. Good. Yeah, what do you want? Uh, good. Cajun Critters Animal Clinic, this is Melissa. Do you know anything about snakes? Our doctors see just about any type of animals, but we don't get many snakes. Okay, thanks. Gabriel never has figured out how to operate the memory function on this phone. Cajun Critter. Do you have a Madame Kazonu as a client? Madame Kazonu? Sure, I know her. She's not here right now, though. Really? Hmm. She told me she'd be there. Uh, would you happen to have an address by any chance? Um, uh, yes. But I'm not sure I should give it out. Who are you again? I'm worried about Castro. He's missed three dance lessons. Castro? Her little doggy? Oh, he's so sweet. Well, I guess if you know Castro, it's okay. Uh, her address is 345 Dauphine. Thanks. The number written on the note is four nine zero nine three two four three 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 three. The number written on the note is four nine zero nine three two four. Guten Tag, Sie haben Schloss Ritter erreicht? I'm looking for Wolfgang Ritter. Ja, einen Moment. Ja, ist es Gabriel on the phone? This is Gabriel Knight. Why are you calling me, Mr. Ritter? I have been having premonitions of great danger for you, Gabriel. You must leave New Orleans this very day. What the hell are you talking about? It is hard to explain on the phone. I have had senses, uh, feelings about you. It took me a long time to have you tracked down. I had a sense that Heinz had a grandson, but until these dreams started, I did not know if I should contact you. You say you're related to my grandfather? Yes. Heinz was my brother. There is much about the family that you should know, Gabriel. Come to Schloss Ritter in Rittersberg, West Germany. It is our family home. I will tell you everything when you come. You must come immediately. You are in great danger there. Look, I appreciate the family spirit and all, but frankly I don't know you from Adam, and I'm not going to fly off to Germany, even if I could afford it. Gabriel, please, if you won't listen, at least let me send you something. It is a journal from one of your ancestors. 
Promise me you will read it. Well, I'm pretty busy. Please, Gabriel, you are the last of our line. I am too old to carry on. You are our last hope. Please, for your family, read the journal. All right, I'll look at it. Good. Now be careful and come to me as soon as you can. Goodbye. Got a minute, Grace? What's up? Could you do some research? Sure. What? I can't think of it. Okay. I'm out of here. Try not to sell out the store while I'm gone. Don't hurry back on my account. It's my favorite grandson. How nice. Your only grandson, but nice try, Gran. Make yourself at home, son. Can we talk, Gran? Of course, my boy. How can I help? Do you know anyone named Wolfgang Redder? As I said, your granddad's surname was originally Redder. I never learned much about his family, but from things he said, I always thought he had a brother back in Germany. I don't know if Wolfgang Redder is related to your granddad or not. Do you know anyone named Wolfgang Redder? I don't know what else... Do you know and I've told you You know, you get prettier every time I see you. Oh, you. <laughs> well, Gran, I better get going. All right, dear. The artist is an able draftsman, but in terror. How's it going today? What? Oh, it's only you. Man, I have been jumpy all day. That, that pattern of yours really freaked me out for some reason. There's just something creepy. You finished it? Yeah, and you're welcome to it. Here. Wow, this is great. Uh-huh. Just don't, like, blow up the planet with it or something, okay? I didn't mean to upset you. Oh, forget it. I'm probably just being stupid. Do your thing with it and good luck. The juggler is busy. Thanks again for that pattern. No problem. The 
artist's reconstruction of the voodoo murders pattern looks accurate to Gabriel. Something about it seems vaguely familiar and creepy. The reconstructed Veve was done for Gabriel by a technical artist. Madame Lorelei, the fortune teller, is garbed in a belly dancer's outfit and wears a boa around her neck. A real boa. The booth is a colorful melange. It announces the owner as Madame Lorelei and gives prices for palm reading $20, crystal ball gazing $15, and birth charts $50. Madame Lorelei lounges at the booth, fondling her snake. Come on, boys! Hoopla! She's busy at the moment. Gabriel doesn't want to take that out of the park. Gabriel doesn't want to take that out of the park. Thanks, boys. Could I ask you a few questions, Madame Lorelai? The only answers I give are given in my reading. I'm sure your palm would be quite interesting. Come on, boys! Hoopla! Not a bad idea. Ooh, 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 baby, I love the way you move. Madame Lorelei winks knowingly at Gabriel and twitches her hip. Yep, she wants me. Thanks, boys. The veil belongs to the fortune teller. It's covered with shiny iridescent sequins. The magnifying glass is an expensive one. Gabriel examines the veil with a magnifying glass. That sequin looks a little strange. Why, it's a snake scale! Gabriel carefully uses the tweezers to remove the snake scale from the veil.
Gabriel magnifies the scale from the fortune teller. The iridescent scale is hued olive green. It doesn't seem to match the scale from Lake Pontchartrain. The iridescent Could I ask you a few questions, Madame Lorelai? The only answer... How about a reading? The prices are listed on the sign. They seem a little steep. Well, I sometimes do my um, intimate friends for nothing. But I am a businesswoman. I'm sure you are. Did you lose a veil? Huh, my veil. I'm always losing those things. You have no idea. Well, darling, you're such a sweetie to return a lady's delicates and so handsome as well. Well, I... And since you have such a clear interest in fortune telling, let me see your hands. They look so strong. Perhaps they will make both our fortunes clear, no? I wish something would. Hmm, strong. Yes, and no. yet so delicate and uh, flexible. <sighs> you don't know the half of it. Oh, good. I see a mysterious woman in your immediate future. Madame Lorelei winks at Gabriel, knowingly. She is a dangerous one. Dark and beautiful. Ah, I see the road of your life, folk. And very soon... <laughs> the blood drains from Madame Lorelei's face in an instant. Sweat beads on her upper lip. Are you okay? There are horses. Oh, God! Beware! Beware! What is it about me lately? Madam Lorelei's booth is deserted. Gabriel would not mind picking up a few extra bucks by using Madame Lorelei's boot while she's gone, but he doesn't know how to belly dance. Why do that to the boot? Do you mind if I ask you a few questions? Yep. I mind, all right. Why? Because A, I don't know. Oh. Flags of the world are displayed from the upper story. A promotion of the universal harmony, no doubt. The chancel of St. Louis Cathedral consists of a raised dais, an altar, two pedestals, and a choir area. Gabriel cannot go in there. That's the priest part of the confessionals. The kneeler doesn't open. May I help you, my child? 
Could you give me a blessing? Do you feel the need for a blessing, son? You wouldn't believe me if I told you. All right, if it will comfort you. The priest blesses Gabriel to the confessional window. Peace be with you, son. Thank you, father. The panel behind the mesh window moves from the other side. May I help you, my child? Can I ask you a few questions? The confessional is not the best place for interviews, son. You can contact the parish offices if you need private counseling. I understand. Thanks, Father. Is there anything else? I'd like to make a confession. All right. If it will make you feel better. I haven't paid my assistant for three months. Have you had the money? Nope. Sounds like a matter for the court, son. Not the church. Is there anything else? Nope, that's it. Goodbye, then. Peace go with you. It's a picture of Christ. The closet shelves are stacked with the odds and ends of a saintly life. In other words, nothing Gabriel is familiar with. I can't resist black. Gabriel cannot see him. Gabriel cannot. Nothing on that shelf interests Gabriel. Gabriel cannot do any this. It's a priest's shirt. That object does not open. That item cannot be read. There's nothing written on the magnifying glass. This is the Gabriel can see that just fine without magnification. Nothing on that shelf in Nothing on that shelf Nothing on that shelf Nothing on that shelf Well, you never know when a priest's collar will come in handy. People seem to be enjoying the park.
These binoculars aren't going any. Gabriel can There is nothing of in You're back. You know, you really freaked me out running off like that. Yoo hoo! Anybody home? Stay away from Maria Getty, or you shall pay with your life! <gasps> what the hell is going on? Gabriel Knight, come in. Hello, Magentia. Please, be seated. Does this mean anything to you? These are magic symbols. Deep magic. Really? Have you seen them before? No. Then how do you know they're magic symbols? Seeker, my eyes are unveiled to see truly that which is in front of me. Uh-huh. Thanks. Tons. Could I ask you a few questions? Of course, Seeker. Magentius. Well, I guess I'll be gone now. Peace and harmony be yours. Right. It looks like the lecture is just starting. Gabriel decides to record the session. Voodoo is the tribal religion of Africa. But the name Voodoo is actually a banner heading under which resides an entire body of distinct tribal belief systems. The word Voodoo may sound familiar to you. What is known in the States as Voodoo 
is actually an amalgamation of African religious systems, Vudun, and European religions, primarily Catholicism. All of the subcults of African Vudun have certain things in common. The most important is the worship of a pantheon of spirits instead of the single deity that the Christian and Muslim systems have. Some of these spirits are elementals. Some relate to specific tasks or places. Some represent important tribal leaders who have died. This spirit worship is what makes Voodoo so easily adaptable. With all those spirits, it's no problem to add a few more. Say, for example, the Virgin Mary. At the height of tribal Africa, warfare was common. The one tribe would conquer another, and the Loa, important in the conqueror's tribal system, would be adopted readily into the conquered tribe's Loa pantheon. In this way, many of the Voodoo cults spread and mingled throughout tribal Africa, enriching the belief system and causing innumerable offshoots. The basis for the Voodoo religion seems to be as old as man himself. It has much in common with many early pagan practices, animal totems, sympathetic magic, elemental spirits in the trees, the heavens, the bodies of the sick. Africa is believed by many to be the cradle of the human race. Some of the Voodoo Loa may be as old as the Garden of Eden itself. We still can't explain some of the real power of these primal religions. And note, I said primal, not primitive. There are African Bokors who baffle our scientists with their supernatural powers. Now, let's discuss the elements of Voodoo. Fascinating guy. In Voodoo, the spirits are called the Loa. During a Voodoo ceremony, celebrants are possessed by the Loa. And this is called being ridden. The human worshiper is seen as a horse, and the Loa as the divine horseman. A person being ridden by a Loa takes on the characteristics of that spirit and becomes, in effect, merely a vessel for the more powerful entity. Some of the older, original Africa Loa include Damala, the great serpent god, his ruler, the mistress of love, Papa Nebo, or Gede, the lord of death, Agwe, the spirit of water, Legba, spirit of the crossroads, and the cruelest and most dangerous, Ogun Badagri, the Lord of Destruction. Ugh. Oh, I gotta get more sleep at night. Uh, Tribe-specific Loa can have as much or more power as the more widely worshipped Loa. For instance, a particular tribe might revere highly the Loa of an ancestor who was a legendary hunter or politician. Voodoo temples are called Hounfors. Their priests, Hungan or Bokors. Their priestesses, Mama Loa. In a Voodoo Hounfor, there's a ritual circle marked by a center pole called a Potomitan. The ritual circle is prepared with a Bebe, a pattern of symbols. Each tribe's Bebe is slightly different, consisting of complex symbols that identify their special Loa. During ritual conclaves, uh, initiates dance under the supervision of a Bokor and a Mama Loa, or head priestess. The use of totems or animal masks and markings was not uncommon in the original African ceremonies. Now, though, all but the oldest sects have abandoned this practice. Ritual objects used during the conclaves include the ritual gourd or ason, the ritual knife or kubasa. That knife gives me the chills. The ritual whip or fwet kash. And the ritual coffin or seke madule. These items are often optional, called for by the mamaloa for specific magical rituals. The Mama Loa is the most powerful figure in any Voodoo sect. 
Voodoo is a truly matriarchal system. Even the Bokor knows his power is limited. The Mamaloi is the supreme woman. She, butterflies, fireflies. Firelight. No, that is Gabriel. Mm, what? I can't see. Gabriel, get in. Can't. It's too small for me. You must get in, Gabriel. It's not mine. Too small. Hide, Gabriel. Hide. No, no, let me out! Help! Young man, the lecture is over. Oh my god! It's... Gabriel scans the bulletin board. Greek night at the Alpha Psi Omega frat house. It looks like it took place sometime last spring. Gabriel scans the bulletin board. There's a notice for a lecture on investigative reporting techniques to be given by octogenarian Pulitzer Prize winner Laura Bo Dorian. Unfortunately, it's weeks away, but at time Gabriel will have to have learned on his own. Gabriel scans the bulletin board. Need a ride to L.A. the last weekend in August. I wouldn't go there if you paid me. Gabriel scans the bulletin board. Work out of your home and make up to 2000 a week in your spare time. Call 555-6789. I actually called them once. You sell cat food over the phone. Gabriel Sk Ha! We'll do algebra or biology homework for food. Gabriel scans the bulletin. Jazz jam session every Tuesday at 7 in the music building. Gabriel scans. Haircuts for $10 a head. Perms for $20 at the Tulane Beauty School West Campus. Like I'd let an amateur touch these locks. Gabriel scan Greek night at the Alpha Psi Omega frat house. It looks like it took place sometime last spring. Gabriel, there's a notice for a... Un Those doors lead to the projection... Gabriel does not. Are you a student? No. My name is Knight. Gabriel Knight. Well, you have walked into my private office, Mr. Knight. I hope you have something worthwhile to do here. If you figure it out, let me know. Can you tell me anything about this pattern? Wow. Well. Interesting. Very interesting. Mind if I copy this? Be my guest. Great. I'll be right back. Here you go. You know, this is a fascinating baby. You must tell me all about its origin. Actually, I was hoping you'd tell me. Can you figure out anything about it from the symbols? Well, some. That's why I wanted a copy. I want to research the design myself. Each of the symbols in the Vebe represent something. A loa, a place. Where did you get this? Have you heard of the voodoo murders? No, you're kidding. Really? Then the voodoo is authentic. The newspapers are wrong. Boy, are they wrong. You think this Veve is authentic, then? Authentic? Mr. Knight, that's like asking if the Mona Lisa is a painting. 
Tell you what. I'll uh, look into these symbols myself and see what I can learn about the sect that made this. I'll give you a call when I have more information. Uh, you are associated with the police, aren't you? Absolutely. But I'm, uh, undercover. You can contact me at the St. George's Bookshop in the quarter. All right. Now, I'd like to get started on this, if you don't mind. Is there anything you can tell me about the voodoo aspects of this photograph? Hmm, this is serious voodoo ritual. Nasty stuff. In what way? Let's see. I can't make out much detail from this photograph. Except for the corpse, of course. But the wound, the face, and what little I can see of the ritual paraphernalia. Mm -hmm. Reminds me of certain black voodoo and practices. Very rare. I've never witnessed them myself, you understand? Really? Interesting. Thanks. Can you tell me anything about this? No, I'm afraid I can't. Can you tell me anything about this? No, I've never seen those symbols. Therefore, they're probably meaningless. Really? Are you sure? I am never wrong, Mr. Knight. Therefore, sure is not in my vocabulary. This is the first page of Inventory. And if I pick your brain? Not if it will get you out of my office. What can you tell me about voodoo? You already sat through my lecture on the subject, Mr. Knight. Perhaps next time you could stay awake and learn something. What do you know about the voodoo murders? Hmm, just what I read in the papers until you showed me that baby. I wasn't interested before, but now, yes, I'd like to figure out where these people come from and what they're up to. They are obviously some very frightening and deadly serious voodoo. can you tell me about New Orleans? I find it interesting to see the occasional fragment of voodoo practices in the everyday culture of New Orleans. What do you know about the voodoo murders? I'm hoping you'll tell me more about it. Do you know anything about snakes? I'm not a zoologist, Mr. Knight, but I know all I care to about reptiles. What can you tell me about St. John's Eve? It's June 23rd, the feast day of St. John the Baptist. But June 23rd has been a sacred day since the earliest times. Ancient sun worshippers used to roll a flaming wheel down a hill to celebrate the sun's descent on that day. A burning wheel? Huh. What can you tell me? I'm not in the habit of... Do you have any idea what Cabri Sans Corps means? Cabri Sans Corps? Yes, I do. It's a Haitian term, I believe. It's French. And literally translates as goat without horns. As in a female goat? No. 
as in a human sacrifice. Sacrifices in Vudun are usually of the animal variety. Chickens, bulls, goats. If the gods demand a goat without horns, it means a human being. What was that translation of a cabri? I'm not in the habit. Do you know anything about Marie Laveau? While I find the colloquial bastardizations of Voodoo somewhat interesting from a surely intellectual point of view, there's not a lot of relation between people like Laveau and true Voodoo practices. Do you know anything about animal masks? As I said in my lecture, which I assume you actually listened to, is that animal masks, totems, are used extensively in most African Voodoo religions. Can you tell me anything about that veve I showed you? I told you I would research it, Mr. Knight. When I have anything concrete, I'll let you know. Tell me what you mean by black voodoo. Well, like any religion, the beliefs can tend toward positive or negative ends. Can be used for good or evil. Christianity, for example, has its doppelganger, Satanism. Any time you attempt to set up an icon to explain evil, you invite some warped mind to worship it. The same is true of Voodoo. There are those who are drawn by and desire personal power from the darker bloodier, Loa. Have you ever heard of a Shutton Jaeger? I'm afraid I can't help you there, Mr. Knight. Tell me about yourself. All right, Mr. Knight, I'm 35, a fully tenured professor at this university as well as a fellow at Cambridge. My doctorate was obtained at Syracuse. Yes, Syracuse, in religious studies. I'm an agnostic, but I find human belief systems fascinating. I specialize in African religions because I grew up there. My father was a Protestant missionary. And I am heterosexual when I practice sex at all, which isn't very often. Any other questions? Uh, no. Fine. Tell me more about human sacrifice. It's, uh, very rare. Most Voodoo practices do not include human sacrifice as a matter of record, but it is theoretically possible if that's the gods' demand. For example, one of the chants I had translated for me from a Haitian ritual went like this. Mistress Azuli, come and aid us. If a cock is demanded, we will give it. If a bull will suffice, behold it. But if a goat without horns is required for sacrifice, Oh, where will we find one? Azuli is the gentlest of Loa, so they call on her for mercy. But I have seen grown and powerful Hungan tremble before a possession by one of the more violent Loa, such as Papa Nebo. Clearly, they are afraid that something of the sort will be ordered, or that the Loa will simply take it for themselves. Tell me more. I wouldn't dwell on it most. Voodoo sex probably haven't seen a human sacrifice for several generations. Dr. Hartridge's desk is remarkably neat, especially considering the rest of the room. 
Dr. Ha Dr. Ha The door leads back to the lecture hall. Dr. Hart I'll see you later. Goodbye. It would be better to be invited inside. Yes? Who is it? Hi, I'm doing an article on voodoo, and I heard that you... I am a good Catholic, young man. Take your evil influence elsewhere. But I just have a few questions. I can feel the evil eye. Go away! This is the last. All right, but this is private. The things I do for my art. It's Father McLaughlin to see you. Father McLaughlin, you say? Hmm. You must be new in the parish. I'm so pleased to meet you, Father. Do come in. Thank you, my child. Please be... Thank you. Now, what can I do for you? Do you mind if I ask you a few questions, my child? Of course not, mon père. Tell me about yourself. Me? I am Creole. My family has been in New Orleans for over 200 years. Real New Orleanians are French, you see. These days the city is overrun with people with no heritage at all. No offense, father, but it's true. But the French, naturellement, will always be the true blood of New Orleans. Tell me about yourself. Well, father, I don't know what else to say. Do you have any idea what Cabri Saint Cor means? <laughs> Mais oui, I know. I bet you do not, father, n'est-ce pas? Of course I know what it means to you. I wasn't born yesterday, father. I won't tell you what it means if you don't already know. About Cabri Sancor. Oui. Are you going to tell me what it means, father? It means goat without horns. Ah, Father, you surprise me. You do know what it means. You know what they mean by goat without horns, don't you? A human being? That's right. Slit your throat, cut out your heart. Pure evil murder. 
Do you know anything about human sacrifice here in New Orleans? Well, my great-grandmother could tell stories. She saw it. People say that sort of thing wasn't done in New Orleans. But the real voodoo queens did it. Oh, yes. Can you tell me anything else about human sacrifice? What is there to tell? They cut your heart out. Who were the real voodoo queens? Uh, well, my great-grandmother told me that Lavo was just a front, a flamboyant decoy. She distracted authorities from the real voodoo queen of Norias. It's been the same one for almost 200 years. She's head of a secret voodoo on four. That's what they call their temples, you know. It's so secret, most of the voodoo people in this city don't even know about it. The real voodoo queen controlled Lavo, gave her a little bit of power, and used her like a puppet. Is there anything else you remember about the real voodoo queen? Mm, well... My great-grandmother said that the real voodoo queen was the most beautiful woman on earth. She had the most incredible copper-colored skin. Is there anything else you remember about the real voodoo queen? Uh, well, they are all brides of Satan. Other than that, I can't think of anything. Tell me more about this secret voodoo hound fool. Well, I've never seen it. I wouldn't go near it if you paid me. But it's here in Orleans, I guarantee it. I hear the drums at night, oh yes. That's why I am so ill. I tell you, those drums. But we shouldn't talk about it. They'll hear us. It's the devil's work that happens there, I can tell you. I'll show you something. Something secret. You mustn't tell anyone, father. I swear on my collar. Here it is, mon père. A true object of evil if there ever was one. It radiates something, all right. It belonged to my great-grandmother. She told my mother that it was a token to gain entrance to the real voodoo ceremonies. You don't say! To tell you the truth, I always felt nervous about having it in the house. You know, evil influence and all. Oh, I can see how you would, yes. And yet, I could never part with it. It's been in the family for generations. Would you bless it for me, father? I feel strange asking such a thing of you, but surely you understand. Bless this bracelet of a snake, even though its vibes aren't great. Let it do nobody harm when they wear it on their arm. Voodoo spirits go away, don't come back another day. And now, let us pray. It's a bracelet in the shape of a snake. It's a bracelet in the shape of There's an old-fashioned jewelry. Father McLaughlin would never steal from one. Do you mind if I ask you a few more questions, madame? If you wish, father. Can I see that snake bracelet again? I'm not sure the first blessing took, and I'd like to re-bless it. All right. I do admire your thoroughness, father. Here's the bracelet, father. 
Bless this bracelet of a snake, even though its vibes aren't great. Let it do nobody harm when they wear it on their arm. Voodoo spirits go away, don't come back another day. And now, let us pray. Gabriel has a thought about the clay. Bless, O oh bless, this circlet of silver. Take the curse, O oh take it, Wilbur. A lovely blessing, mon père. Yes, I think it made a lasting impression. Here you go. Ah, I feel so much better now. Madame seems to like candles. Gabriel wonders if these two are specialties of Mr. Walker's shop. Madame finds comfort in these iconic images, it seems. The painting behind the couch is a Madonna and child. Madame's parlor is full of carefully dusted and polished relics of her past. The tea service has been polished recently. Madame uses it with her Creole sisters, perhaps? Do you mind if I ask you a few more questions, Madame? If you wish, Father. What can you tell me about voodoo? Ah, people think I'm just a foolish old woman, but I know the things they do. My family's been in New Orleans since 1750, so I know more than most. Voodoo people are all over this city, in the shops, everywhere. They'll curse you like that, and most people don't even notice. Spit on your bread at the bakery, take strands of your hair at the store when you try on the clothes. You have to be so careful. But I know their ways, so I can protect myself. I know how to use the magic too, and I can counteract their evil spells. Tell me more about voodoo in New Orleans. It's just plain evil. It's dangerous to even discuss it. What do you know about the voodoo murders? Voodoo murders? Ha! They are nothing new to me, father. They happen all the time. I hardly go out anymore. It's too dangerous in the streets. They can get you anywhere, you know. Even here in this room. But I try not to let them know about me. That's the best way. What do you know about the voodoo murder? Shh. What can you tell me about New Orleans? The only true New Orleanians are of French origin, you know. My family were among the original settlers of New Orleans. They came here from France. The Creole society used to be so gay in New Orleans. Now it barely hangs on by its fingernails. What can you tell me about New Orleans? You know, I can stroll the streets of the French Quarter and see in my mind's eye the way it used to be. It was wonderful in the old days. What can you tell me about New Orleans? New Orleans isn't what it used to be, I can tell you. There's too few of the real people left. What can you tell me about New Orleans? New Orleans isn't what it used to be, I can tell you. The Do you know anything about snakes? Snakes? They're evil creatures. Did you know that evil people can send them into your dreams? They can. That's why I never sleep. Right. Thanks. 
What can you tell me about St. John's Eve? St. John's Eve? Mais oui! I used to love the St. John's Eve Mass at Sandwich Cathedral. Of course, it is also a night of great wickedness. Worse than All Hallows' Eve. They will corrupt anything, Father. They? They who? Oh, you know. What can you tell me about St. John's Eve? I don't think I should. Tell me more about Marie Laveau. She was only a front for the real evildoers, Father. And that's the truth about Marie Laveau. Tell me more ab She was only... Tell me more about this secret. I told you. Do you know anything about animal masks? No, Father. I don't... Do you know anything about Veves? No, Father. Do you know anything about black voodoo? Oh, yes, Father. It is the wickedest kind. The... Tell me more. I already told you. Have you ever heard of a Schattenjäger? No, Father. I don't know anything. Can you tell me anything else about human sacrifice? What is there to tell? Tell me about your... Well, Father, I don't... Is there anything else? Ah, uh, well, they... Gabriel cannot open the front hall. He only needs... Well, madame, I must be gone. Of course, father. I know how busy you... Gabriel can see that just fine without magnification. I'm not going back on the street looking like this. Hello, Dr. John. Glad you could return to us, Mr. Knight. Could I ask you some more questions? Of course. I also find our dialogue stimulating. Do you know Malia Getty? Should I? She referred me to your museum. Many have read about our museum in the newspapers, Mr. Knight. That's a good point. Do you know anything about Veves? I believe they have something to do with Thanks a lot. Bye now. Walk carefully out there, Mr. Knight. Hi. The sign says, Special Saint Jean Eve.
Lan Yape, free bottle of lover come back to me oil, or master gambling oil, with every purchase over fifty dollars. Lan Yap. My French is lousy, but everyone in New Orleans knows what that means. A little something extra. Gabriel, can I... Can I ask you just a few more questions? Whatever, man. Do you know anything about Veves? No, sir. Never heard of him. Can you tell me anything about a secret voodoo hound fool? Why, there's no such thing. Not around here. Do you know anything about animal masks? Like the ones in the voodoo rituals they do for the tourists? Right. I used to sell a few. As souvenirs. The only one left is Willie Jr. over there. The old crocodile. Well, he's sort of a mascot now, him. About Willie Jr., would you be willing to let him go? Hmm, maybe. For a hundred dollars. A hundred bucks? You've got to be kidding. Me and Willie Jr. are very close, no. I could part with him for less. Would you take 50 for Willie Jr.? Don't insult me, monsieur. The price is $100. The mask appears to be made from a real crocodile head. I knew you'd miss me, so I came back. Oh, joy! Got a minute, Grace? What's up? Do you have messages for me? Nope. None right now. Could you do some research for me? Sure. What? I have a pattern I need you to research. How interesting. What is it? It's a reconstruction of the tracings they found around the murder victims. The ones done in flour and blood. Ugh! You shouldn't carry this kind of thing around. Who knows what these symbols mean? Well, wear your evil banishing gloves if you want. But check it out for me, would you? I'll see what I can find out. Anything else? I can't think of anything. Okay. Do you know anything about a secret voodoo hound fool? In New Orleans? I think so. No, I don't. But it sounds dangerous. You're not going to try to find this voodoo group yourself, are you? Would I do that? Do you know anything about Veve? I told you, I can't help you with that. Times Pickle Hewn, dated June 20, 
under the cultural events. Gabriel's horrors. I know. Hey, kids. Bruno, how nice. Gee, a customer. Of yours, hardly. How's the flower business? Well, better than the used book business, I see. Rare books. That explains why I so rarely see anyone in here. Are you going to sell me that wonderful painting of yours today? How much would you give me for it, Bruno? Gabriel, don't you dare sell your father's painting. Stay out of this, Grace. Ooh, you're serious? You'll let me have it? Yeah, I'll let you have it, all right. How much for the painting? Hmm, well, I could give you a hundred. That's all I can let go at the moment, you know. My fares are so tied up. Gabriel, a hundred dollars for your father's painting? Grace, let me deal with this. Fine, it's yours. Gabriel! Here, here's the hundred. You better take good care of this, Bruno. This is not just another of your hip art pieces, you know. Really? Well, I fully intend to make the most of its display, though not for your sake, I'm sure. At least in my shop, there'll be a chance of someone actually seeing it. I can't believe I actually got it. Just wait until I show see it. I don't believe you! It... it's just a painting, Grace. There are things I have to do. That wall sure looks bare without Dad's painting. That wall sh Gabriel cannot take that. I'm going out. See ya. Gabriel doesn't I have a hundred dollars. You still want to sell that crocodile mask? That's a hundred dollars, sure enough. The mask, it's yours, sir. Yeah, you go. Carefully don't bite you now. Yeah, thanks. Don't you go forgetting your lagging up? A free bottle of master gambling oil. The sign said I could get Lady Luck oil instead. Well, I wasn't thinking a man as young as you would be needing that kind of remedy. But if you having problems with your... Oh, that's all right. Believe me, I don't need it. I'll just stick with this. Thanks, anyway. Of course, it ain't none of my business if you do need it. I don't need it. Of course you don't.
Gabriel, come in. Hi, Gran. Make yourself at home, son. Can we talk, Gran? Of course, my boy. How can I help? And do you know anything about a secret voodoo hound fool? Gabriel, my goodness! What are you up to these days? Nothing, Gran, really. You better not be. You know you're the only family I have left. I know, Gran. It's okay. Do you know anything about animal masks? Why, no, dear. Do you mean Mardi Gras masks? Never mind, Gran. Do you know anything about black voodoo? Black voodoo? Is that something new? I don't think so. I don't know much about any kind of voodoo, Gabriel. I'm going up the attic again. Enjoy yourself, dear. Well, Gran, I better get going. All right, dear. Could I have a minute of your time? You got something to say, son? Mind if I pick your brain a minute? Go ahead. These folks ain't in no hurry. Do you know anything about 
a secret voodoo hound fool? I don't know what you talking about. Do you know anything about Veves? I don't know what you talking about. Do you know anything about black voodoo? Black voodoo? I see lots of voodoo markings in this cemetery. I seen graves dug up and stuff you don't want to know about stolen from them. But voodoo, black voodoo, sounds like a devil of a distinction, you ask me. Malia. Mr. Knight, what are you doing here? Uh, my family's tomb is here. Mine too. I noticed. Subtle. Well, Mr. Knight, if there's nothing else. Don't go. I need to talk to you. Whatever for. I can't stop thinking about you. I've been in your thoughts too. I can see it in your eyes. Mr. Knight. You don't know anything about me. I'm not in a position to get involved. I've said that a million times myself, but this is different. I think we both know we can't fight it. Oh, I can't believe I'm saying this. I have so many obligations. My family is very traditional. You wouldn't understand. Hey, I love tradition. I've seen Fiddler on the Roof a hundred times. This isn't a musical, Mr. Knight. We live in different worlds. Look, I know you've got more money than God. Do you think I care? Do you think that's why I'm saying this? No, I don't. Why don't you come see my world? I have a little bookshop, St. George's, on Bourbon. I know. See? I knew it. You're crazy about me, too. Come by tonight. Please. My world isn't so bad. I'm sorry, but there's no place for someone like you in my life. Not now, not ever. Damn it! There's a small marble plate near the tomb doors. Got a second, officer? What can I do you for? Do you know anything about a secret voodoo hound fool? Hound what? Hound four. It's a temple. Huh. Sounds like someone's pulling your leg on that one. Do you know anything about animal masks? I see plenty of masks during Mardi Gras. Not many animals, though. Of course, uh, there's plenty of animals underneath.
Do you know anything about Veve? Veves? Never heard of it. Do you know anything about Black Voodoo? Black Voodoo? Isn't that kind of the same thing? Actually, no. Well, all I know about Voodoo is to keep away from it. You should too, Knight. I'm here to see Detective Moslin. He's in his office. Go on back. Excuse me, officer. Yes? So, what's it like being a policewoman? The glamour never ceases. You son of... Give me back my badge. Now, Knight! Sure. Thanks for letting me borrow it. Yeah? Well, you borrow it again in your history. Now, about today. Glad you made it. It'll give you a feel for how I am in action. You know, handling suspects, that sort of thing. I'm sure it'll be invigorating. Uh, who is this guy, anyway? Calls himself Crash. He's been an informant for us before, mostly helping us bust small-time pimps and dealers trying to break into the territory. Well, he's been staying invisible during these murders, but we picked him up this morning to Jackson Square. Pushing coke? He knows something. Call it Detective's Instinct. Detective's Instinct. <laughs> Got it. Alright, Crash. I want to hear about these murder. You been present at the so-called voodoo ritual? I don't know nothing. I told you. Oh, come on now, you can tell me. Do you know anyone who's been to these rituals? Look, I, I can't say nothing. You gotta let me go, man. Now you relax. No one knows you're here. The man who picked you up were plain clothesmen. Plain clothes, like you could fool them. <laughs> They know I'm here. They've got ears all over the city. They know everything. Now who are they, Crash? Are they the ones doing the murders? Let me go! If you're so worried about being detained, start talking. Now you tell me what I want to hear and maybe I can get you in the witness protection program. But you have to earn it. Witness protection? Are you crazy? Don't make me laugh. Jesus, just let me out of here. Now come on, who's behind these murders, Crash? Why are the victims all members of the underworld? By now they know I'm here. I mean, it's, it's different when I'm supposed to come here. Well, if I can send a message, tell them I didn't say nothing. Crash, he's freaking useless. Take him back to detain him, would you, Tony? I tell you, times like this, I'd kill for true serum and damn the civil rights. Can I quote you on that? Huh? Hell no. Damn! We only keep him for 24 hours. Tomorrow morning, I'm gonna have to let him go. Sorry it wasn't more exciting. Yeah, for the book, I mean. Maybe you can punch it up some. You know, what they call that. Fiction, that's it. It certainly is. I'll see what I can do. Can I ask you about some stuff? You're the writer. Ask away. And do you know anything about a secret voodoo hound fool? Oh, come on. Someone's pulling your leg, Knight. Are you sure? There's nothing secret about voodoo in New Orleans. There's a museum, for Christ's sake. 
Yeah, but that's the stuff they want you to see. You're getting mighty paranoid, Knight. Do you know anything about animal masks? Animal masks? You mean like those Halloween masks they sometimes use in robberies? I don't think so. More like real animals. Never ran across anything like that. Do you know anything about Veves? What? Veves. They're ritualistic patterns used in voodoo. You know, like those marks we found around the body. You know what the department says about that, Knight. That voodoo stuff is faked. Yeah, well, they're wrong. These Veves... Look, just stop worrying about them, Marks. I don't think they're relevant. Do you know anything about black voodoo? Black voodoo? Sounds like a put on to me. What's the status on the voodoo murders case? It sure as hell ain't going well. There's a lot of breaks being applied in different areas of the investigation. We're getting some real info on the victims now and they're not exactly upstanding citizens. I was hoping to get more out of Crash, but he's scared shitless. We'll have to let him go tomorrow morning. The suit doesn't open. I'll let you get back to it. Have a good one. Could I ask you a few questions? Sure. I'm not too busy at the moment. What can you tell me about voodoo? Voodoo? <laughs> I don't believe in it myself. I invented a drink once called La Vaux's Tomb. But it wasn't very popular. Some people do believe, though. Even some of our regulars here at Napoleon House. That guy Sam, the chess player? Oh, he's really into voodoo. He's always talking about spells and gree gree and stuff. Really? Great. Thanks. What can you tell me about voodoo? I'm no expert. You might want to talk to someone who believes in it. What do you know about the voodoo murders? It's all over the papers. Some kind of serial killings. Do you know anything about snakes? I told you I don't know. I don't care either. Have you ever heard of Marie Laveau? There's a voodoo museum in town. Can you tell me anything about a secret voodoo hound fool? Are you kidding? Around here? Hope they aren't serving drinks. Well, if they are, I don't think anyone in his right mind would want one. Do you know anything about Veves?
What can you tell me about your... That's about all I can say. So what has Sam told you about voodoo? Well, about 50 years ago, Sam was too shy to talk to this pretty girl he was in love with. He went to a voodooine and had her make him a love charm. It was a little pot that he had to bury under the girl's front porch. Well, he buried the pouch, and the next day, he went up and talked to the girl. And, sure enough, she didn't reject him. Now she's his wife. <laughs> Poor guy. So what is Sam? That's about all I can remember. Excuse me, I hate to interrupt your game, but could I ask you a few questions? What game? This isn't a game, it's a slaughter! He's right, you know, so let me die in peace, would you? Sorry to bother you, but could I ask you a few questions? I'm not the chatty type, am I, Sam? No, you old bastard, you're not. Besides, I'm busy sucking poor old Sam dry. Go bug someone else! Ah, uh, you're a real sweetheart, Marcus, you bastard. Got a second, Sam? It's about your game. I don't have a game. That's my problem. Don't you touch those chess pieces while I'm gone, you bastard. I never needed a cheat yet, you loser. Thought you might be interested in this gambling oil. Let me see that. Master gambling oil. What's it for? Don't you ever wonder why Marcus wins every time? Get out of here. Marcus would never use something like this. Well, if that's what you want to believe. This is a powerful voodoo oil. Ah, go on. Really? This voodoo oil could make a nun get lucky. Really? You think it really works, huh? I'd stake my reputation as a novelist on it. Hmm. And you say Marcus uses this. That explains a lot. Uh, let me see that bottle. Oh, this looks authentic. Oh, it is. If I could really beat that bastard. Stonewall, give me a Pim's cup, would you? Coming up, Sam. How much you think I'd have put in here? Careful, you don't want to overdo it. Too much luck can be dangerous. Ha! There's no such thing as too much. Now stand back. Come on already, I'm ready to chat me. We'll see about that Mr. Smarty Big Mouth. Checkmate! <laughs> Checkmate, you bastard! Son of a bitch! Twenty years I've been waiting to say that! Checkmate, checkmate, checkmate! <laughs> you are the biggest butthead Sam Singleton that I ever met! Checkmate! You! You! You can just put this chessboard where the sun don't shine! Hallelujah! I did it! Yippee! Nice game. Nice game. Hell, I was brilliant! Of course, I gotta give some of the credit to that oil of yours. I've been losing to that guy for 20 years. If you ever need a favor, you come to Sam, you hear? Will do. Can I ask you some questions now? Look, I'd be glad to help you out, but I've been stuck in this bot too long to know much about anything.
Does this mean anything to you? Not really. Does this mean anything to you? Not really. Could you do anything with this? What is this? A clay mold? Hmm... Well, I am a jeweler, you know. And I owe you one. Would you like me to cast this for you? Hmm... If you can. You got it, pal. Actually, it'll be a pleasure to get my tools out first time in years. I've been too busy playing that goddamn game. I'll have the bracelet tomorrow. Meet me here. Great, thanks. It's getting late. Gabriel decides to go home for the day. Excuse me, I'm going inside. Oh, uh, excuse me, I'm afraid St. George's is closed for the day. I'm not a customer, I'm here to see the owner. Why don't you just leave your name and number with me, and I'll tell him you stop by. Listen, if Gabriel is here, he'll want to see me. Is he here? Really couldn't say for certain, but in the morning... Gracie, say goodnight. Ugh! You came. I didn't think you would. I didn't think I would, either. Your eyes. Hmm. Oh, I could show you around a little. Uh, it's not much, but... Please, don't. I couldn't focus on much of anything right now. Yeah, I know. God, what is it about you? Just shut up and kiss me. You're not speaking to me this morning? Don't be silly. I just have nothing to say. Did you find out anything about that pattern I gave you? Yeah, I did find something. I checked the microfiche at the public library. I found an article about a murder in 1810. The newspaper published a part of a pattern found around the body. It looks damn close. You're incredible. All that work. Forget it. Have it your way. Have you noticed this guy outside the shop? Yeah. He gives me the creeps. I wish he'd go away.
Get the hell out of here. The figure outside does not respond. Get the hell out of here. The figure outside does not respond. Got a minute, Grace? What's up? Do you have messages for me? Nope. None right now. Could you do some research for me? Sure. What? I can't think of... Okay. Times Picahune. Dated June 21st, 1993. Gabriel's eye is immediately drawn to an article about the voodoo murders. He scans it quickly. I don't believe this. They've closed the case. What case? The voodoo murders case. The paper says that the police have learned that the murders were the result of an underworld cartel war and that the war is over. That's not good. It's ridiculous. What about the killers? And the voodoo angle they never got anything on that. I know you were into it, Gabriel. But if it's over, that's hardly a negative. Anyway, if you're that upset, why don't you talk it over with your pal Mosley? You don't get it, Grace. Just forget it, okay? Gabriel decides to check his horoscope, despite his disgust. Death walks close to you today. Resist temptation, lest his eye file on you too. Peachy. I've got some things I need to do. Good luck! Sam, my man! Hey there, it's you! I got that bracelet for you. This piece was a real toughie. For some reason, the metal just wasn't setting. I must be out of practice. Well, it looks good to me. Thanks, Sam. No problem. By the way, I'm heading out of town tonight. Yeah, where to? Marcus used to tell me that if I ever beat him at chess, he'd take me around the world. The old bastard has enough money stuffed in his mattress to cover the federal deficit. And he hates spending a penny of it! <laughs> I'm gonna enjoy watching him squirm through every mile. Sounds like fun. Good luck. Are you kidding? Luck is my middle name. <laughs> Sam's replica of Madame Kazunu's snake bracelet looks just like the original.
Can I ask you some questions now? Luke, I'd be glad to help you out, but I've been stuck in this bot too long to know much about anything. That's Crash. What the hell is he up to with that drama? The drama is busy. The drama is busy. The Benyet vendor is unlikely to have information that Gabriel needs. Hello. What can I do for you, sir? What happened to the guy who used to be here? The lucky dog guy? Um, I took over his spot. What the heck are beignets, anyway? Deep fried sweet dough with powdered sugar on top. New Orleans donuts, sir.
crashes huddled in a pew. He looks seriously ill. I need to talk to you. Ask you some questions. No way, man. I'm too sick. Let's go away. Come on. I have to know what you know about these voodoo people. You, you don't know nothing about nothing, man. You're so far out of it, you wouldn't understand anything. Just like that friend of yours, Mosley. Go away. I'm not like Mosley. I know more than you think I do. I'll believe you. Forget it, man. It's not worth my breath. Come on, talk to me. I'm too sick to waste my time. Oh, oh, go away. Hey, what are you doing here? I I'm praying. Leave me alone. Why are you praying? I'm praying for my life, man. You look pretty sick. Shouldn't you be in the hospital? Hospital wouldn't do nothing. Leave me alone. You look pretty sick. Do you recognize this? No! Don't waste my time! The newspaper clipping describes a ritualistic murder in Congo Square. It includes a rough sketch of a pattern found around the body. The sketch is very similar to the reconstructed Veve. Do you recognize this? No! Do you recognize this? Do you recognize this? No! Don't waste my time! Do you recognize this? Where'd you get that? Why? Do you know something about it? Know something about it? Look at this. Grash opens his shirt and reveals a tattoo. It's the same. The same snake. It's their sign. The mark of the snake. Without it, they'll never let you get close. The sign of the snake. Right. Your tattoo, my bracelet. Now, do you believe that I know something about these people? Yeah. You know about them, I... <coughs> I guess. Do you recognize this? No! Do you recognize the Crashes huddled in a pew. Gabriel cannot do... Crash is still capable of moving under his own volition.
Do you recognize... Those two objects would have no effect on you. This is the images haunt the pages of Philip Knight's sketchbook. The images. Crashes huddle in a crashes. Will you answer some questions for me now? <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll talk to you a little, but make it fast. I saw you talking to that drummer. What did you tell him? You saw me with the drummer? Nobody's supposed to see. Shit! I blow it again. I promise you won't say nothing to no one. It'll get back to him. Everything does. I promise me you won't tell anyone you saw me. Okay. But you have to tell me everything I want to know. Okay. Okay. I was sending a message, man. They have these... These, these rotter drummers posted around the quarter. <laughs> they see everything. <laughs> and they report. Report? How? The drums, man. It, it, it's some kind of code. Tell me about the rotter drums. I already told you about that. Now, tell me what you know about voodoo. All I know is these people are into some weird shit. They have power. Real power. They can write your name on a piece of paper and chew it. And you end up minced meat. Like you've been through a, a, a grinder. <coughs> They know things in their heads. Things that no one ever knew about you. They know when you lie. They can smell it. They're fucking scary, man. I don't know if it's the, the devil or what. But it ain't no fake shit, man. It's real. Now, tell me about the voodoo murders. They did the murders. And that's not the only way they kill. They can get you from miles away. Just by saying your name. Come on, you don't really believe that, do you? I seen it, man. You can't cross them. What can you tell me about New Orleans? Man... Do you know anything about snakes? The eyes. Snake's eyes. Dambala. Okay, calm down. Tell me what you know about a secret voodoo hanfu in New Orleans. Alright. There's this... Uh, this is an uh, underground cartel in... In New Orleans. A voodoo cartel. They control everything that happens on the street. I mean everything. Bought or sold. They have their fingers in the legit world too. Banks. Foreign stuff. You name it. 
this supposed to be this temple? What you said, a hound for. That's the headquarters. I heard people say it's, it's un underground. Somewhere in the French Quarter. I don't know where. Have you ever been there? Uh, no, no. I, I, I've never been in it. I'm a nobody. A runner. But I, I, I saw them once. Out at the lake. They became animals, man. Beasts. I remember the eyes. Uh, oh, the eyes. Hey, are you okay? The eyes. The eyes of the snake. I think I should go get a doctor. Hey, are you alright? Someone, I need help. The eyes of the snake. Dambala. Oh. What snake? Crash. Crash spasms twice more. Then die as give reward. Oh God, poor oh, bastard. I guess I better copy this tattoo. Crash's face shows signs of strangulation. His death was not a pleasant one. There's no point in doing that with the corpse. It's getting late. Gabriel decides to go home for the day. Hello? It's me. I can't sleep. Oh, me neither. Can I? Yes. Come. Are you okay, Gabriel? Sure. Great. Why? I'm worried about you. If I were any better, Grace, I'd be dead. Now, what's up? Thought you got another package this morning. FedEx from Germany.
I was expecting that. Where is it? Well, it kind of came open, but I salvaged the contents. There was a letter from your great uncle Wolfgang in a journal. The package just came open, huh? How'd you like the journal? Someone has to look after you. You're in trouble. In case you don't know it. Yeah, you've been reading my horoscope again, haven't you, Grace? Just read the journal carefully, Gabriel. Please. I got it. St. George's books. <clears throat> oh, Professor Hartridge, I'm glad you called. Did you... You did? Wait, slow down. The Aigri? Really? You think that's them? The wheel within a wheel. Ogun Badagri, huh? Well, that does sound like it. Dambala, the snake. That's the wavy pattern at the bottom, okay. The 1791 slave revolt in Santo Domingo. Well, why would the Veve show up there? Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Look, I'll come over as soon as I can. Okay. Relax, Professor. I'm excited too, but you're gonna give yourself a heart attack. Okay. Thanks. See ya. I wish you'd tell me what's going on. I swear you're gonna step into a hole you may never get out of. Don't look so worried. No one knows what I'm doing. I'm perfectly safe. And I'm getting some great stuff for the book. Besides, there's something about all this. My dreams. What about your dreams? Nothing. I'll be careful, I promise. Gabriel reads through the pages Wolfgang marked. He reads of Gunter Ritter's journey to Charleston as witch hunter, hired by the townsmen to solve a series of ritualistic murders. He reads about Gunter's meeting with a beautiful slave woman, Tetolo, and of Gunter's tormenting urges for her. Oh, bastard. He reads of their physical union and passion and of Gunter's investigations into the murders. The victims were all crew members on a certain slaving expedition to Africa, it seemed. The second to the last entry described Gunter's plan to set a trap for the coven committing the murders. He found the name of one of the surviving members of the crew, a man now living in the West Indies. Gunter has spread a false rumor that the man is returning to Charleston. He himself will impersonate the sailor and allow himself to fall into the hands of the Coven. Naturally, Gunter has arranged for able-bodied assistants to follow and attack the Coven before they can do him harm. Olsey, son of a bitch, wasn't he? Gabriel turns to the final entry of the journal. Gabriel reads through the pages Wolfgang. Oh, best. Naturally, God. Olsey, son of a. Gabriel. Got a minute, Grace? What's up? Have you ever heard of Dumbala? Ooh, no. 
Makes my skin crawl, though. Does Ogun Badai Kri mean anything to you? No. Sorry. Do you have messages for me? Nope. None right now. Do you know anything about Rada drums? Rada drums? No, afraid not. Could you do some research for me? Sure, what? Could you research Rada drums for me? Rada drums? Sure. I don't think we have any books on that topic in the shop, but I'll contact our suppliers. Assuming any of them will extend you any credit. Tell them it's an emergency. Uh-huh. I can see where a Rada drum book would be incredibly urgent. Anything else? I can't think of anything. Okay. Get the hell out of here. The figure outside does not respond. The letters are addressed to Gabriel from Wolfgang Ritter. Wolfgang's letter says, Dear Gabriel, Please read the enclosed journal carefully. It might help you understand your family's special obligations and our current predicament. God be with you, Uncle Wolfgang. The snake tattoo tracing says nothing. Hmm. Gabriel could ask Grace to use her paints and put the tattoo on his chest. But he should wait until he's ready to use it. It would probably wash off in the shower. Do you know anything about this? I did research for you on that already, Gabriel. Uh, right, exactly. See you later. Have fun. Hey, Hot Ridge, what's a good word? Hot Ridge? Ah! Oh, God, not again. Something about Hartridge's death mask reminds Gabriel of the way Crash checked out. Not a pretty ending. I'm not touching that body. That would be up to... Dr. Hartridge's desk is remarkably neat, especially considering the rest of the room. On the desk is a sheet of paper with some scribble notes. It looks recent. These notes look interesting. The letter... Hartridge's notes are scribbled... 
Cartridge's notes are scribbled on notepad paper. That doesn't seem to... That does The death. That would be up to... Before leaving the university, Gabriel notifies campus security about Hartridge's body. Gabriel, come in. Hi, Gran. Make yourself at home, son. Can we talk, Gran? Of course, my boy. How can I help? Do you know anything about Veves? What, dear? Never mind. Have you ever heard of Dumbala? No, dear. Does the name Ogun Badakri mean anything to you? No, dear. Do you know anyone? I don't know what else to tell you. Do you know anything about Radha drums? Radha drums? Hmm. Your father had a little drum set when he was small. I don't think that's quite the same thing, Gran. Well, your family's always been in the arts, but no musicians so far. Well, Gran, I'd better get going. All right, dear. Hello there, got a sec? Yeah, what can I do for you? Mind if I pick your brain a minute? Go ahead, these folks ain't in no hurry. Have you ever heard of Dumbala? I don't know what you talking about. Does the name Ogun Badakri mean anything to you? I don't know what you're talking about. Do you know anything about Radha drums? I don't know what you're talking about.
Gabriel should at least wait until the watchman is gone before defacing the tomb. Gabriel likes the idea of leaving marks on the tomb. But at the moment he is not sure what to say or how to say it. A sign on the front door of Magentia's home reads, attending a channeling seminar until August 1st. Hi. Uh-huh. Can I ask you just a few more questions? Whatever, man. Have you ever heard of Dumbala? Dambala is an African legend about a great serpent. Uh, folklore, that's all. Does the name Ogun Badagri mean anything to you? Don't talk like that around here, man. Do you know anything about rider drums? What I know, I wouldn't be talking about with you. Got a second, officer? What can I do you for? Do you know anything about Veve? I told you, I never heard of it. Have you ever heard of Dumbala? No, oh, sounds foreign or something. Does Ogun Badaikri mean anything to you? Hell no. Do you know anything about Rada drums? I like Lawrence Welk myself. I'm here to see Detective Mosley. He's in his office. Go on back. Has that beignet guy been by yet today? I'm starved. I haven't seen him in a while. I don't think he's coming by here anymore. Damn! You can't count on anything these days. Hey, hey, hey! Knight, come on in. Knight, I hate to tell you this, but you're out of a book. The voodoo murders case has been closed. I had a feeling you were going to say that, son of a bitch. Can I ask you about some stuff? 
You're the writer. Ask away. Have you ever heard of Dumbala? You mean gumbo? No, I mean Dumbala. Never heard of it. Does the name Ogun Badakri mean anything to you? Say what? Ogun Badakri. It's a Voodoo Loa. Speak English or shut up, Knight. Sorry, I didn't mean to confuse you. Guess I'll take that as a no. What's the status on the Voodoo Murders case? The case? What case? I told you, the Voodoo Murders case is closed! How can you just close it? It's not solved, is it? Oh, it's solved. Turns out the Chicago Mafia was trying to invade local territory, using Mississippi for drug running now that Florida's so hot. What we had here was a little resistance from local businessmen. Word came in this morning that the Chicago group is giving up and pulling out of New Orleans. But that doesn't bring the killers to justice. Well, the boys upstairs seem to figure it this way. Let the slime kill each other. Better the vermin we know than the Chicago vermin, I guess. The attitude in the department is that we've just been done a huge favor. Well, they're probably right. What about the local cartel? Are you just gonna let them go? At least they're part of us. We'll deal with them over time, I always have. New Orleans is pretty clean that way, you know. Well, that's the illusion, isn't it? Look, I'm not totally in agreement here either, but what can I do? These guys are not about to get caught. I'm disappointed about the book, too. Next big murder case I get, I'll call you in and we'll do that one upright, okay? In fact, I could probably dig up some old cases and you could spice them up. No thanks. Crash is dead. What? What are you talking about? I let him go yesterday. Yeah, and I watched him die yesterday at St. Louis Cathedral. At the cathedral? Guess he was trying to get a last minute A train ticket, eh? Poor bastard. I think you should go find the body at the mall. He was killed by the voodoo cult. Crash said. Crash said? Did he mention pink elephants too? Aren't you going to investigate? Civilians. Did you actually see someone kill him? No. Actually, I was with him when he died. Could have been poison, though. Yeah, well, when they get the body in, they'll do a quick autopsy. Standard procedure. If it's anything other than an overdose, I'll get a report. But it won't happen. I know these. Lock him up overnight and they tend to overdo it the next day. Your professionalism is astonishing. There's been another murder. A professor at Tulane. Oh, Christ, you're not gonna start this again. Just listen. This guy's name is Hartridge. He was a professor in African studies at Tulane. Yesterday, I went to see him about the voodoo murders case. He agreed to do some research for me. He calls me up this morning, tells me he's onto something big. And when I get over there, the guy's dead. You know, you're really getting your ass in a sling over this thing, Knight. It's not about me. Look, Hartwich's death looked just like crashes. I'm telling you, they were both murdered by the same people who did the voodoo murders. Did either Crash or this new guy have their hearts ripped out? No. Then there's nothing to link either to the voodoo murders, M.O. Besides that, the case is closed, Knight. If the coroner's report asks for a homicide investigation on either of these guys, fine. But it's not going to be related to the voodoo murders case unless we find damn good reason to do so. But I'm the link to the voodoo murders case, don't you see? Look, if I were you, I wouldn't repeat that to anyone. If I weren't an old friend of yours, I might take you seriously and lock you up. As it is, maybe you should start keeping your mouth shut. Not involve other people with this shit. You think it's so dangerous.
How can I convince you to reopen the case? Look, the department's not interested. So? Couldn't you make them interested? With what? I've got seven bodies and still no leads. The voodoo angle's worthless. And besides, these people aren't hurting anybody but out-of-town drug dealers and hitmen. The voodoo stuff is not worthless. It's the key to the whole thing. And these people are dangerous. They need to be stopped. Okay. You want me to reopen this case? Prove what you just said. What do you mean? You need to... Prove there's a legitimate voodoo cult in New Orleans. Prove that they're a threat. Get me a lead on the cult. Somewhere there's a New Orleans phone book. It's a newspaper clipping from the year 1810. The newspaper clipping describes a ritualistic murder in Congo Square. It includes a rough sketch of a pattern found around the body. The sketch is very similar to the reconstructed Veve. This is a newspaper clipping about a murder committed in 1810. That murder is an exact match of the voodoo murders, right down to the marks around the bodies. Hmm. This does sound like the same M.O. 1810? 1810. They killed then, they're killing now. Isn't that proof that they're likely to kill again? That they are a threat? Sure. If there is a voodoo cult, they're a threat. The letters are addressed to the letter the trace. I took this tracing from a tattoo on Crash's chest. It's related to the underworld voodoo cult. Yeah? What makes you think that? It's what Crash said just before he died. Well, he was probably hallucinating from the drugs he OD'd on. Probably got that in the Navy or something. No, I'm sure it's related. It's a snake scene. Even if it were a signal of some sort, that doesn't prove that the murders were done by a legit voodoo cult. These symbols are from Marie Laveau's tomb in St. Louis Cemetery. They're part of a secret voodoo code which I had translated by a voodoo yen. Do they say anything about the murders? Well, not exactly. I'm sure that's a legit code of some sort, Knight, but unless it gives me the names and addresses of the killers, I don't think it'll be much help at this point. You know those marks you found around the murder victims? This is a reconstruction of the whole pattern. What makes you think this is an accurate reconstruction? Well, I borrowed the partial patterns from your police file and did my own tracing of the pattern at Lake Pontchartrain. An architectural artist reconstructed it for me from the partials. Really? So this is the whole pattern, huh? Well, that's pretty good work, Knight. But that doesn't prove that this pattern is really connected to voodoo. I have this snake bracelet. 
It's a replica of one used in secret voodoo ceremonies a few decades ago. Really? What makes you think so? I got it from an old Creole lady whose grandmother was an acolyte of Marie Laveau. Gabriel, Gabriel, we get these little old ladies in here all the time. That bracelet is probably not genuine and it wouldn't prove anything if it were. Take a look at these notes. They're from Professor Hartridge at Tulane University. Yeah? And what about them? They confirm that the pattern from the murders is of African origin. Really? It's incredible, isn't it? Something like that chewing up here? It's been here for quite some time, so it seems. I'm impressed. Okay, you've convinced me. The murders were done by a legitimate voodoo cult. Can I ask you about some... You're the... How can I convince you to reopen the case? You still need to... Give me a lead on the cult. Well, I'll be seeing you. Ciao, baby. Why is it so dark in here? Dr. John? Hello? Uh-oh. There's no time for that now. I really don't want to be dead. Can we try that again? Well, I'll be seeing you. Ciao, baby. Why is it so dark in here? Dr. John? Hello? Uh-oh. That would not help to get a python off a of Gabriel. There's no time. There's no time. <laughs> Well, 
Well, uh, chat. Why is it so dark in here? Dr. John? Hello? Uh-oh. Good day, Mr. Knight. That thing just tried to kill me. He did? I am sorry. The museum is closed today, you see, and we were not expecting visitors. But, if you will excuse me, Mr. Knight, I must go look for him. He is incredibly valuable. You don't need to ask twice. I'm out of here. By the way, you might want to lock your door next time you're closed. Not a bad idea. Goodbye, Mr. Knight. What happened to you? Who? Me? Nothing. Why? Well, you're kind of a pale green color. Come here. Pale green, you say? Charming. What's that on your face? I'm sure you'll tell me. Looks like a sparkly or something. Got it. I love it when you pick stuff off my face, Grace. Hmm. Well, excuse me. There's something in the ashtray. There's nothing to use the tweezers. Looks like the python left me a souvenir. Very interesting. Gabriel is carrying a scale he found near the crime scene at Lake Pontchartrain. It's a snake scale from the Voodoo Museum's Python. The magnifying glass is... Gabriel magnifies the snake scale from the Voodoo Museum's Python. The iridescent scale is brilliantly hued with greens and purples. Gabriel magnifies the snake scale from the ir Gabriel magnifies the scale from the lake. It's hued with purples and greens. It matches the scale from the Voodoo Museum. He places the two scales together. Gabriel magnifies the two scales. The two iridescent scales are a perfect match. Got a minute, Grace? What's up? Do you have messages for me? Nope. 
Could you do some risk? Sure. I can't think of it. Okay. I'm going out. Uh-huh. The second message made from the voodoo crosses is on the wall. Let me get these new marks down. Gabriel checks the two messages for duplicate symbols and transfers the letters from the matches to the new message. He finds that he has the translation for all of the symbols except for three. This is the last. I think I'll leave a message of my own. I think I'll leave a message of my own.
sensing that his message isn't quite right, Gabriel rubs it off in frustration. I think I'll leave a message of my own. Sensing that his message isn't quite right, Gabriel rubs it off in frustration. I think I'll leave a message of my own. Pleased with his message, Gabriel tosses the break down. Now, if only DJ reads it in time.
Posted on the door of the museum is a sign saying, Closed today only. This time the door is actually locked. A sign on the front door of Magentia's home reads, attending a channeling seminar until August 1st. Hey, mostly. Night, come on in. Can I ask you about some stuff? You're the writer. Ask away. How can I convince you to reopen the case? You still need to... Give me a lead on the cult. I have these two snake scales. One's from the crime scene at Lake Pontchartrain. The other's from a snake in the Voodoo Museum on Ursulines and Charters. Is this common? Do they all look alike? Not at all. They're both constrictor scales, and the coloring is the same. A python's coloring is quite individualistic. A python? That's right. Hardly an indigenous snake to Louisiana. Somehow, some way, the Voodoo Museum's python was at the scene of the Lake Pontchartrain murder. Well, I'd call that a lead, all right. It certainly suggests certain lines of inquiry at the museum. Not bad work, Knight. If we can tie them into this voodoo cult, we just might have something. Okay, I'll reopen the case. I hate to admit it, but you've done some pretty good detective work here tonight. Well, you know what they say. Imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. Well, point taken. Glad I could inspire you. I'll check around the department, but I have a feeling I'm on my own. In fact, I better lock up this office just in case I step on a few toes. Come on. Now, lay low and let me handle this. Yeah, fine. Gabriel can't do anything with the officer from the front lobby. Gabriel can't... Got a second, officer? What can I do you for? I'm here to see Detective Mosley. He left for the day. Sorry. It's getting late. Gabriel decides to go home for the day.
Damn! What is it? What's wrong? Gabriel? I see it, Grace. Hold on. There's no one in the shop, and I know there's no one in back. It's okay. Okay? Gabriel, that thing is still barely alive. How could someone do this? With a knife, maybe? God, don't even start. We should call the police. No. I'll take care of it. But Gabriel... I said I'll take care of it. Why don't you go get some coffee? I'll have it all cleaned up before you get back. Oh, they know where you live now. Shh. It's gonna be fine. Now go on. Are you sure you don't want to go home? I could close the shop today. No. I'd rather keep busy. I'll be fine. At least that creepy guy is gone. Oh, Not that they aren't still watching. Anyway, speaking of keeping busy... We got that book you ordered in this morning. The one on Rada drums. Really? Great! The book contains several pages of Rada drum code.
Got a minute, Grace? What's up? Could you do some re- Sure. What? I can't think of any- Okay. Do you have messages for me? Nope. None right now. Times Picahune, dated the 23rd of June, 1993. Gabriel finds an article about Saint Jean's Eve. It discusses the day's Catholic roots and its adoption by voodoo devotees. In the early to mid-1800s, Saint Jean's Eve was celebrated with elaborate voodoo gatherings at Lake Pontchartrain, Bayou Saint Jean and other sites outside the city. These days, the day is commemorated commercially in some of the local shops, and a few churches still hold a St. John's Eve Mass. Despite his better judgment, Gabriel reads his horoscope. Today you will either die or your life will change forever. Sure, why not? It is St. John's Eve. They'll be out tonight, for sure. But where? Gabriel cannot see any way to pick that up. Gabriel! I see it. Stay back. There is no... It's just an envelope. I can see that. Gabriel opens the envelope and finds a note from Mosley and a small brass key. Mosley's note says, Gabe, I have to go underground with this thing. It runs wide and deep throughout the department and the city board. I'm already being watched. It was suggested I take vacation time, so I am. At least as far as they know. Try to keep out of this. It's too hot for a rookie. Just in case, I'm sending you my office key. You might find some useful things there. P.S. I think this note will look great in the book, don't you? Make sure you save it. The note is signed, Detective Mosley. Are you going to be okay here by yourself? I'll, I'll... I'll be just... just fine. Just... fix this, okay? I'm trying, Gracie. Hi. Can I ask you just a few more questions? Whatever, man. Do you know anything about rider drums? What I know... I Hello, Dr. John. Glad you could return to us, Mr. Knight.
Could I ask you some more questions? Of course. I also find our dialogue stimulating. Have you ever heard of Dambala? Of course. It is one of the lore. What can you tell me about the lower Dambala? Dambala is a snake lore. It originated in Africa and is also worshipped heavily in Haiti, I believe. Do you worship Dambala? Mr. Knight, in voodoo, all of the Loa are given their due respect. What else? I am afraid I have little else to say. Are you sure you don't know anything about Ogun Badagri? I am afraid I have little else. Do you know anything about Rada drums? There are some against the wall, but I do not play myself. You don't know anything about a drum code? I do not believe there is such a thing, Mr. Knight. A very large, very f Could I? Oh. I'd really like to know more about your snake. There is really nothing more to say, Mr. Knight. Thanks a lot. Bye now. Walk carefully out there, Mr. Knight. Hey, Grace. Here I am. Oh, joy. Will you do me a favor? What? Use your paints to copy this snake tattoo onto my chest. Now why on earth would you want me to do that? I'm going to a party tonight. Costume, you know. You don't say. I guess you're going with Maya. Uh, yeah. That's right. And why should I help you out when I don't even like Maya? Well, if you're jealous about my feelings for her... You know that's not it. I just think, as your friend, that she's trouble. It's perfectly understandable. I know you have certain feelings for me, quite naturally. Me? I would rather be hung by my hair over a bed of scorpions. I know it must be hard having it in your face like this. No chance to avoid hearing about it, seeing it day by day. Fine. I'll do it. Just shut up. Can we at least go in the back? Sure, but could you say that one more time and pout your lips more? Ugh. What did I say? All right, let's go. The shirt, please. You don't know how long I've been waiting for this moment. Now...
Hold still. Maybe you'd like to tie me up? One more remark, and I'm leaving. Okay, okay. Done. It's just stunning. Sorry I couldn't make it last longer. Well, it was about what I expected from you. See you later. See ya. For Ben Yet Vendor is Excuse me? Yeah? Say, haven't I seen you before? I get around the French Quarter. Used to be at Royal and Conti. You say you used to be at Royal and Conti? That's right. Why don't you go back there? Do you think? I, I, I've been kind of torn. Must be the weather. These thick clouds we've had all week. I'm just not seeing the crowds here that I expected. Why'd you leave Royal and Conti? Well, the guy who used to be here, the lucky dog guy, uh, he was my cousin Ralph. He went off to college, see? And this spot came open. I thought Jackson Square'd be a better gig, you know? Tourists and all. Is it? Well, uh, no, actually. I definitely think you should go back to Royal and Conti. Really? I'm glad you think so. I always liked that beat. But I thought I ought to give this a shot. Oh, absolutely. The grass is always greener. Exactly. You're right. I'm going back over there today. Can I ask you a few questions? The drummer does not respond. You know, I know who you are. The drummer ignores Gabriel and just continues drumming. Unnerving, isn't he? Hey, it's a beignet guy. He's back. Where? Grab me three or four, would ya? Forget it, I'm broke. Rats. You stay put. I'll be back in a minute.
Gabriel can't do anything with that door from the lock. You got no business back there now. Move along. Sorry. Are you gonna be okay here by yourself? I'll, I'll... I'll be just... just fine. Just... fix this, okay? I'm trying, Gracie. Excuse me? Yeah? Say, haven't I seen you before? I get around the French Quarter. Used to be at Royal and Conti. You say you used to be at Royal and Conti? That's right. Why'd you leave Royal and Conti? Well, the guy who used to be here, the lucky dog guy, uh, he was my cousin Ralph. He went off to college, see, and this spot came open. I thought Jackson Square'd be a better gig, you know? Tourists and all. Is it? Well, uh, no, actually. Why don't you go back there? Do you think? I, I've been kind of torn. Must be the weather. These thick clouds we've had all week. I'm just not seeing the crowds here that I expected. I definitely think you should go back to Royal and Conti. Really? I'm glad you think so. I always liked that beat. But I thought I ought to give this a shot. Oh, absolutely. The grass is always greener. Exactly. You're right. I'm going back over there today. Hey, it's a beignet guy. He's back. Where?
Grab me three or four, would you? Forget it, I'm broke. Rats. You stay put. I'll be back in a minute. Gabriel could Gabriel does Gabriel doesn't Gabriel doesn't Gabriel could take that That doesn't work that there is Gabriel cannot Gabriel Gabriel would That doesn't Gabriel would not That doesn't work that way that doesn't work that. Gabriel cannot see a way to you. That doesn't work that. Gabriel cannot see a way. Not me. I've seen. Not me. Not me. Not me. Not me. Not me. I Not me. There's a tracking device in the drawer. This tracker might come in handy. The desk is bad enough on the outside. The de Gabriel cannot open or close that. Gabriel doesn't want anything to do with that. Not me. I've seen. The drawer is empty. Gabriel would prefer to touch as little of... Nah. Gabriel would... The desk is bad enough on the outside. There is nothing to open or close there. This device is called a tracker. Gabriel remembers a time when he and Mosley used it <laughs> illegally with a couple of babes in a white convertible. It operates as follows. The signal device attaches to an object, such as a car. The signal device emits a signal that appears on the tracker, L-E-D, allowing the object to be tracked. It's a signal device for the tracker. It's a signal device for the track. Hey, get out of there, you. Sorry, just looking for a restroom. Hello, Dr. John. Glad you could return to us, Mr. Knight. The little coffin is empty.
Gabriel slips the signal device into the Seike Module. Can I assist you, Mr. Knight? Hmm? No, just looking. I hate to rush you, Mr. Knight, but I am afraid I must close the museum early this evening. This is St. John's Eve, and it's getting on towards dusk. I have things I must do. I see. No problem. I'll just... Leave. Goodbye, Mr. Knight. May the spirits guard you well tonight. Those two are... Gabriel doesn't need to start the tracker here. Phew, it's humid out there. Made it back though. The excitement of seeing you is killing me. Will you do me a favor? What? Use your paints to copy this snake tattoo onto my chest. Now why on earth would you want me to do that? I'm going to a party tonight. Costume, you know. You don't say. I guess you're going with Malia. Oh, uh, yeah. That's right. And why should I help you out when I don't even like Malia? Well, if you're jealous about my feelings for her... You know that's not it. I just think, as your friend, that she's trouble. It's perfectly understandable. I know you have certain feelings for me. Quite naturally. Me? I would rather be hung by my hair over a bed of scorpions. I know it must be hard having it in your face like this. No chance to... Avoid hearing about it, seeing it day by day. Fine, I'll do it. Just shut up. Can we at least go in the back? Sure, but... Could you say that one more time and... pout your lips more? Ugh. What did I say? Alright, let's go. The shirt, please. You don't know how long I've been waiting for this moment. Now... Hold still. Maybe you'd like to tie me up? One more remark, and I'm leaving. Okay, okay. Done. It's just stunning. Sorry I couldn't make it last longer. Well, it was about what I expected from you.
I'm out of here. Try not to sell out the store while I'm gone. See ya. Gabriel doesn't need to stop. Gabriel hates getting his hair wet. Gabriel doesn't... Gabriel would... Gabriel wouldn't get far on foot. Gabriel doesn't need to start it. Please select a destination icon. You know, I know who you are. The drummer ignores... It looks like someone found and moved Crash's body. The panel behind the mesh window moves from the other side. May I help you, my child? Could you give me a blessing? Are you in trouble? Is the Pope... Um, yeah. You could say that. Then I hope this helps. The priest blesses Gabriel to the confessional window. Peace be with you, son. Thank you, Father. Hey, get out of there, you. Sorry, just looking for a restroom. Hello, Dr. John. Glad you could return to us, Mr. Knight. That's not the way it works. Gabriel slips the signal device into the Seke Module. Can I assist you, Mr. Knight? Hmm? No, just looking.
I hate to rush you, Mr. Knight, but I am afraid I must close the museum early this eve. This is St. John's Eve, and it's getting on towards dusk. I have things I must do. I see. Leave. Phew, it's humid out there. Made it back, though. I wish you wouldn't wear that coat outside in June. I could smell you from here. Will you... I'm going to... What did I say? All right. Now. Hold. Done. So. I'll be back later. See ya! Posted on the door of the museum is a... Please... I haven't carried books around like this since college. Gabriel listens carefully to the drums and opens his Rada book to translate. If Gabriel's translation of the drum code is correct, there'll be a conclave tonight in the swamp. That must be the bayou.
Gabriel pulls out the tracking device, hoping that the Sheki Madule made it to the ritual and that this thing will work. All right. There's a blip. They must be here with the Sheki Madule. Damn Mosley and his infernal machine. This better be working. Gabriel can barely focus on the LED with those drums in his head. He hopes he's reading it correctly. Damn Mosley and his infernal machine. Gabriel can barely focus on the LED with those drums in his head. He hopes... When in Rome, here goes nothing. Welcome, Brother Crocodile. Please join the other celebrants. Yes, Dr. John. Uh, mm, Brother Eagle. But first, name the great serpent who crushes all in his coils. Dumbala. You are correct, Brother Crocodile. Who is the destroyer of men? Ogun Badagri. You are correct, Brother Crocodile. Enjoy yourself well tonight. <laughs> Gabriel! 
familiar. I know you now. I can smell his blood in your way. No. You cannot change your destiny. Or ours. No. I will find. I will destroy. No! <laughs> Where is your necklace now, witch hunter? Where are your pretty, pretty chairs? Gabriel! Gabriel, wake up! Ow, my head! It's about time. I've been trying to wake you for hours. There's no time to lose. I had another dream. It wasn't a dream, believe me. Now come on, get dressed. Wait a minute. I'm starting to remember. Something about Malia. She's the head priestess of the Voodoo Cartel. They're responsible for the murders. They've been doing it for years. Malia? Last night she was the leopard. Like in my dreams, Grace. I know. Those dreams were a warning. Now come on, get dressed. But last night, Malia changed. She became... someone... something else. And then I blacked out, I think. How did I get home? I followed you last night. I had my doubts about the Gettys. Did you know that they arrived in New Orleans in 1800? Just in time for the voodoo influx. I knew you were going to try to sneak into a ceremony last night, so... I followed you. Lucky for you that I did. If you'd been left at the circle last night, I don't know what she would have done to you. You're wrong. Malia wouldn't hurt me. What about Tetelo? Tetelo? They were chanting that last night. That's the name from Gunter's journal. The woman who took the talisman. Yes. Gabriel, it's your destiny you're facing. You can't just blunder your way through this or you'll end up dead. Tedela will be after you now. You have to call your great uncle in Germany. Uncle Wolfgang? Yes. He knows more about this than we do. Okay. I'll call him. But Malia isn't responsible for those things, Grace. It's that spirit, that Loa. It's Tetelo. Yeah. Possession is convenient that way. Call Wolfgang, Gabriel. I'll be in the shop. The number written on the note is Guten Tag, Sie haben Schloss Ritter erreicht? This is Gabriel Knight. Can I speak to Wolfgang, please? Ja, Herr Knight. Ein Moment, bitte. Gabriel, it's so good to hear your voice. I had such a dream last night. There's a good reason for that, Uncle Wolfgang. We need to talk. Gabriel fills in Wolfgang on the events of the previous evening. Ach, it is even worse than I thought. 
You bet it is. We have to talk about what I'm supposed to do. What can you tell me about voodoo? It sounds as though you have learned much during your investigation in New Orleans. Perhaps you will fill me in when we have a chance to sit down and talk. What do you know about the voodoo murders? I know only what you have told me. They seem to be very similar to the killings in Gunther's journal. What can you tell me about New Orleans? It was just another American city to me, until I started dreaming about you. Now I feel it is not safe for you there. I wish you would leave. Do you know anything about snakes? I have not studied the subject. I have an intense dislike for them. What can you tell me about St. John's Eve? I'm afraid I've never heard of it. Do you have any idea what Cabri Sans Coeur means? No, what does it mean? It means goat without horns. It's a term used for human sacrifice in Voodoo. Well, let's hope we can avoid any more of that in this family. Do you know anything about Marie Laveau? No, I'm afraid not. I've heard rumors of a secret hound fool here in New Orleans. Yeah, I am sure they have a temple there, and probably a very elaborate one. You should not go near it, though. Not alone. Do you know anything about animal masks? Yes. Tetlow's people wear animal masks for their rituals, don't they? It is not at all uncommon. Many occult groups are based heavily on animal totems. Animals have such pure, primal traits. Spirituality, good or bad, is about reaching these pure levels. Aggressive and cunning like the snake. Agile and nurturing like the monkey. Even our family is associated with the image of a lion. Do you know anything about Veves? It is a visual symbol of one or more lore. Each lore has its own sign, which is used to summon it. Have you ever heard of Dambala? Dambala is a snake. He is a loa, a voodoo god. Yes. He's one of the primary loa of the Gedi tribe. I see. Good work. That information might prove useful. Does the name Ogun Badakri mean anything to you? It is a Voodoo lore, is it not? Yes, a particularly nasty one, so I understand. Have you come across anything about it in your research? It seems to be feared by most Voodoo groups. I haven't come across very much specific information. Do you know anything about Black Voodoo? My library contains many books on the occult and religions, and I have read about some particularly evil voodoo cults. But you, at this point, have more direct experience than I. What can you tell me about Shatten Jaegers? Yes, of course. I sometimes forget how little you know of the family, Gabriel. I never understood how Heinz could allow his sons to remain ignorant. But now is not the time for that discussion. Schattenjäger is really two words in English, Gabriel. Schatten means shadow, and Jäger means hunter. Shadow hunter? Yes. Shadow hunter. Tell me more about Schattenjägers. Uh, we Ritters have been Schattenjägers for many centuries. No one is sure when it began or how, but... We have records of ancestors as early as the 13th century fulfilling this role. Some believe that the role was given us when... Ah, but such fantasies cannot be of use to you at the moment, Gabriel. Do you know anything about radar drums? Radar drums? You mean ceremonial drums? 
Yes, the Gedi tribe uses drummers around the French Quarter as relay messengers to keep track of their business. Hmm, those drums have a ceremonial use too. It would be useful to know their code, Gabriel. I had Grace find some information on them. That's my boy. Tell me about yourself. I hope there will be time for that later, Gabriel, after this is all over. For now, we must deal with the matter at hand. Tell me about Tetelo. Well, from your description of the ritual last night, I'd say that Gunther's mistress, Tetelo, is now the primary lore for the Gedi tribe. It seems she still controls them by possessing her female descendants and speaking through them. Do you remember in Gunther's journal he said that Tetelo was possessed by her father's lore during the killings in Charleston? This sounds similar, but Tetelo has obviously become a much more powerful lore than her father ever was. Probably because of the added power of the talisman. Tell me more about Tetelo. I believe she truly loved Gunther. After all, she was raised to be her father's daughter. Their religion was not a choice she made, but a duty she endured. How can she be blamed for that? The spirit she has become, that is a different matter. It is utterly evil. I am certain that the lower Tetler bears little resemblance to the woman Tetler was before the burning in Charleston. Tell me more about Tetelo. She once was a beautiful and intelligent woman, and she probably did not deserve Gunther's betrayal. But the Tetelo we fight now is more akin to her tribe's dark gods than to anything human in nature. Tell me more about Tetelo. She once was a beautiful and intelligent woman. Let's talk about the talisman. I myself have only seen it in old sketches and paintings, and in my dreams. It was in the family for centuries before Tetelo took it. It is believed to be as old as the role of Chatanyeda itself. The talisman has genuine power. I don't know how or why, but it is so. The Chatanyeda swore to use the power for good, never for evil. For defense, not offense. Since it fell into Tetler's hands, I'm afraid to think what the power has been used for, or what it will be used for in the future. With the talisman, Tetler has all the power and we none. The only possible way to fight her is to regain the talisman. Then we will at least be on more equal footing. How can we regain the talisman? We've been searching for the talisman for years, ever since we lost it. It's a terrible thing to know that something powerful that was entrusted to us is in the wrong hands. The talisman is probably buried with Tetelo's remains. That's what gives her lore so much power. Is there anything else you can tell me about the talisman? The most important thing about the talisman is that it be once again in the hands of the Schattenjägers. How would we find Tetelo's remains? Ha! We have pondered that question a long time, the Ritters. There are two probabilities. The first is that her remains are with the tribe at their current location. The other is that the remains were returned to a sacred place near the tribe's original homeland. We've tried to locate Tetelo's African homeland, but Gunther says so little in his journal about her tribe, and slaving records are practically non-existent. Also, Tetelo's tribe was utterly destroyed in its African form in the late 17th century. There was nothing like a census in Africa then. As for the other idea, we had no clue as to where Tetlow's people went after fleeing Charleston, until now. How would we find Tetelow's remains again? We must locate the tribe's original African homeland. Her remains might be there, or they might be in New Orleans, buried among her descendants.
How would we must look? Let's discuss the possible African homeland. All right. Have you learned anything that might help us locate it? I spoke with the Professor Hartridge. Unfortunately for him, he thinks the tribe's name was Agri, and that they lived near the Fon tribe in what is now called the People's Republic of Benin. That is incredible, Gabriel. I must go research this new information in my library right now. Wait, what should I do? Stay low. If you get a chance, you might look into the possibilities that Tetler's remains are somewhere in New Orleans. But don't try to broach their private areas without my assistance, Gabriel. You will make a fine Schattenjäger, but only if you are not dead. Sure, I'll wait. Bye then, Gabriel, and remember, if you need a place of safety, come to Schloss Ritter. Goodbye, Uncle Wolfgang. Got a minute, Grace? What's up? Do you have messages for me? Nope. None right now. Could you do some risk? Sure. I can't think of anything. Okay. Times Picayune, dated June 24th, 1993. There's nothing about the voodoo murders case in the papers today. Gabriel finds a humorous tidbit under the Life is Stranger Than Fiction column. Apparently, there were reports of ghosts in the Bayou Saint Jean last night. Various people called the newspaper with stories about hearing strange noises and seeing weird lights over the swamp. Some folks claim it's the ghost of Marie Laveau. The paper relates to similar delusions that crop up every Halloween. Gabriel's horoscope today reads, Wise is the warrior who knows when to fight, and when to get the hell out of dark. God help me, I'm actually starting to listen to this guy. I'm going out for a bit. Be careful. Posted on the door of the museum is a sign saying, closed until further notice. The Dixieland drugstore is locked and barred. A sign... It looks like someone found and moved Crash's body. The panel behind the mesh window moves from the other side. May I help you, my child? Could you give me a blessing? Are you in trouble, my child? Is the Pope... Then I... The pre Peace. Thank you.
Could I ask you a few questions? Sure. I'm not too busy at the moment. Gabriel would not be needing that disguise today. There's no answer. Perhaps Kazunu got even more paranoid than usual and decided to get out of town. Gabriel's coded messages on the wall. Gabriel hears the faint sound of breaking glass. Damn! You'd think there'd be a light! This is the last page. There's nothing Gabriel would care to touch in that part of the draw. The block on the draw has a name etched on it. Kisila Gede. There's no re There's no reason to mess with the Draws lined by Gabriel can make out the name on that draws plaque. Crip draw Gabriel. The block on the draw has a name etched on it. Rosamond Gede.
the black on the drum. Helena Gede. The black on the drawer has a name etched on it. Zelia Gede. Mosley. Shit, I dropped my flashlight. Huh? Ouch! My head! What the hell was that? There's nothing written on the wallet. Gabriel opens the wallet and finds some ID belonging to Mosley and an American's repressed card. Mosley's American's repressed card. Credit. <laughs> what a concept. The black on the draw Celeste Gede. The black on the drawer has an etching of the Veve on it, but no name. The black on the drawer has a name etched on it. Ariane Gede. The black on the drawer has a name etched on it. Jacqueline Gede. The black on the Cecilia Gede. Excuse me, Officer Frick? Whatever it is, no! Now get out of here before I have you arrested for disturbing the peace! Officer Frick seems to be in no mood. Officer F Gabriel can't do any...
Miss Geddy is unavailable, Mr. Knight. Ben, I was worried about you. For good reason, apparently. What happened? D do you need a doctor? Nothing you want to know about, and no, just some aspirin. Gabriel, this is nuts. You have to get out of New Orleans. No kidding. Well, listen. Wolfgang called while you were out. He said, and I quote, Tell Gabriel that I found what I was looking for. It's time for me to do my duty. Schloss Ritter is his now. Now, call me crazy, but I don't think that's good news. Not for Uncle Wolfie, no. What are you going to do? If I figure it out, I'll let you know. Got a minute, Grace? What's up? Could you do some research? Sure. I can't. Okay. Do you have messages? Nope. I'm doing the best I can. I'm doing the best. Hello. See the World Travel Agency. How may I help you? What are your specials? Two weeks in India for 2,000 rupees. Well, that's certainly special. Uh-huh. Is there something else I can help you with? How much for a trip to the Caribbean? Well, our least expensive trip is four days, three nights in St. Croix for $1,250. Of course, we have much nicer packages available. I'm sure your packages are astonishing, but that's out of my league. Is there something else I can help you with? I've always wanted to visit Anderson, Indiana. I'm so sorry, but you can't get there from here. How much for a trip to Rittersburg, Germany? Rittersburg, Germany? Hold on, let me look that up. I can fly you into Munich. That's the closest airport to Rittersburg. You can rent a car from there, or take the train. Let's see. The best price I can see for the flight is $1,400. What would you like to do? Charge it to my Americans repressed. Yes, sir. And your name was? Mosley. Feeling a little guilty.
Gabriel gives the travel agent Mosley's card number and is informed that he can pick up his ticket at the New Orleans International Airport. Guess what? I'm going to Germany. Really? That's great, but how on earth could you afford? A man's gotta do what a man's gotta do. Oh my god. I wouldn't like the sound of that even if you were a man. I miss you too, Grace. Goodbye, Gracie. Good luck. Let me know what's going on, will you? Of course. Gabriel picks up his tickets at the airport and boards a plane for Munich. Wolfgang? Hello. My name is Knight, Gabriel Knight. Herr Knight! Oh, kommen Sie bitte, Herren. I mean, come in, please, Herr Knight. I was not expecting you. Has Wolfgang sent you here? Uncle Wolfgang? No, I came to see him. Isn't he here? No, he is gone. I'm sorry. You came all this way. Oh, great. That's all I need. Herr Knight. Wolfgang told me all about you and gave me instructions for you to feel welcome here. Please, this is your home. You are a ritter, no? I am just doing some work. I will continue and you may make yourself comfortable. If there is anything you need, please ask me. You may use Wolfgang's bedroom. It is at the top of the stairs. Thank you, Miss... Uh... You may call me Gerda, Herr Knight. The great hall of Schloss Ritter towers around Gabriel. He can imagine the heating bills. Gerda is young and quite attractive. Can I ask you a few questions? Yeah, of course. What can you tell me about voodoo? Wolfgang is the only one who would know about that. What do you know about the voodoo murders? What murders? In New Orleans. Oh, I have not heard of them. I am sorry. What can you tell me about New Orleans? I have never left Germany here night. Perhaps someday you will tell me about it. Do you know anything about snakes? We do have snakes here in Germany, but I do not know much about them. What can you tell me about St. John's Eve? I have never heard of such a day. Do you have any idea what Cabri Saint Gaur means? That is not in a language I understand. So sorry. Do you know anything about Marie Laveau? That is something Wolfgang would know about, Herr Knight. And do you know anything about a secret voodoo hound fool? That is something Wolfgang would know about, Herr Knight. Tell me about Wolfgang. What would you like to know? Where do you think Wolfgang went? 
I don't know. But I have a feeling he has gone off to go be Schattenjäger again. He is too old for such chasing around. His heart is very weak. He has not left this castle for five years and now this. You know when he'll be back? I only pray he will be back. Before he left, he said Schloss Ritter now belongs to Gabriel. It worried me so to hear him say that. I'm afraid Wolfgang knew he would never return. What is Wolfgang like? Wolfgang is a truly wise and good man, the best I have ever known. But his life has been so full of disappointments. What kind of disappointments? His only son died in infancy, so there was no one to carry on the family line. And the family's financial troubles have been hard on him. Wolfgang wanted to do so much for the world, but it was all he could do just to hold on to Schloss Ritter. He has not left his mark as he wished to. What is your relationship with Wolfgang? Herr Knight, my relationship with your uncle is really none of your business. You're right, Gerda. I apologize. Forget I asked. Can you show me Wolfgang's library? How do you know about his library? When we talked on the phone, he said he was going to do some research in his library. I thought maybe if I saw what he was researching. Ah, yeah. A good idea, Herr Knight, but I'm afraid I cannot show you the library. You see, I have never been in it. Only a Schattenjäger can enter the library. I see. Just tell me anything. Wolfgang has dedicated his entire life to the role of Schattenjäger. Just tell me anything. He has not had a very happy life, but I have done my best to provide him with a little comfort. Just tell me anything. He thought he was the last of the Ritter line until he found out about you. Just tell me anything. He knows the history of the Ritter family from many centuries past. Just tell me anything. He's a good man, a str Just tell me. Wolfgang has dedicated his... Oh, no. As you like. Tell me what you know about Schattenjägers. As Wolfgang may have told you, Schattenjäger means shadow hunter. The Ritter family have always been Schattenjägers. It is a kind of priesthood, though not <laughs> as restrictive as most. Tell me what you know about Sch Each Schattenjäger passes on his knowledge to a younger man in the Ritter line, when the time is right. Tell me what you know about Schattenjägers. I am sure Wolfgang meant for you to take his place someday as Schattenjäger. Tell me what you know. I am sure... Tell me about Wolfgang. What would you like to know? Just tell me. He has not had a... Oh. As you... Tell me something about the Ritter family. I can tell you what they say in the village. What I heard when I was small. To the villagers, the Ritters are a little... How do you say... Tragic. To be pitied. They say that the Ritters were chosen by God to fight evil. But something happened. One of them was cursed, and so the Ritters lost the way. They struggle still, but like a lame dog, you see? Without the power or magic they once had. Tell me something about the Ritter. There are legends of how powerful the family once was. Of some of their mighty deeds, of the richness of the castle, and in turn, Rittersburg itself. But at the end of the 17th century, that all changed. Since then, the Ritters and Riddersburg have been in decline. Tell me something about the Ritter family. It is a troubled family. Tell me, it is a trouble. Tell me something about Schloss Ritter. Schloss Ritter has stood for many centuries, no one knows how long. 
It was once the pride of Bavaria, but now it is in disrepair. Wolfgang received offers to open the castle for tourists. He has resisted, though, even though the castle is in desperate need of repairs. But to him, this ground is sacred. Tell me something about Schloss Ritter. The castle has many, many rooms and passages here night. Most have been closed off and are decaying in the dark and damp. Only a few rooms have been kept up due to the cost. Didn't Wolfgang mention a library? There is a library, but I've never been in it. There are places in the castle where only the master is allowed to go. Tell me something about Schloss Ritter. Schloss Ritter is the center from which the Schattenjägers have always gone out to battle the forces of evil. Tell me something about Schloss Ritter. Schloss Ritter is the Tell me something about yourself. I was born in Rittersburg, the village below the castle. Tell me something about yourself. I'm not well traveled, but Wolfgang has been kind and has tutored me in many subjects. It was from him I learned to speak English. He must have sensed you were coming here at night and that you would have need of me. Tell me something about... I'm very devoted to my... Either Wolfgang left very recently, or Gerdy feels quite at home in this room herself. At the foot of the bed is a small table. There's a small pair of grooming scissors on the cabinet. It's a chamber pot. Gabriel takes the scissors. The hair clipping scissors are spotless. It looks like Wolfgang uses his scissors as infrequently as Gabriel uses his own. Near the bed is an elaborate wooden door. It's locked. A large handcraft dagger hangs on the wall. It looks quite old, but it's been polished to a high shine. This dagger... It is the knife of a Schattenjäger. You may take it, Herr Knight. Everything in this castle is yours now.
A magnificent stained glass window depicts the legendary battle between St. George and the dragon. Three panels hang from each side of the chapel. Gabriel cannot determine what their purpose might be. Three Three Doing that with the Doing A magnificent The stained glass window does not work that way. Doing that. And can I ask you a few questions? Yeah, of course. What can you tell me about those wall panels in the chapel? The hangings? They describe the Schattenjäger initiation ceremony. Tell me about the Schattenjäger initiation ceremony. Each young man of the Ritter line must go through the ceremony when he dedicates himself to be a Schattenjäger. But what does the ceremony do? I do not know, Herr Knight. The only people present are the old Schattenjäger and the new. But I think it must be similar to a priest's ordination or a wedding, a ceremony of intent and oath. Yes. Is there a problem, Herr Knight? You said wedding. I'm okay now. Is there anything else you can tell me about that initiation ceremony? I really do not know any more about it, Herr Knight. Tell me something about the Ritter family. It is a troubled family, Herr Knight. That... There is nothing... It's a shake of salt. Is that a shaker of salt? Yeah, salt. Mind if I take it? No. Thanks. Gabriel is sure he'll end up getting some of those for our meal, sooner or later. Outside the window, there's a nice thick ledge covered with snow. And it's only slightly off color, rather like Gabriel himself. Chamber pot is old, but clean. The Ritter dagger is solid, weighty, and highly polished. A large display case hangs on the wall. It contains a scroll. This scroll looks interesting.
this is the last page of St. George, patron of the light, who hunts the shadows of the night. Upon my blood I call thee now, purify me, for I avow to set my feet upon thy road, thy sword I take up for mine own. St. George, patron of the light, who hunts the shadows of the night. Upon my blood I call thee now, purify me, for I avow to set my feet upon thy road, thy sword I take up for mine own. Thinking of the second chapel panel, Gabriel cuts his hair. I hate this. There, that's plenty. If I took the snow, it would just melt in my pocket. Putting snow in the chamber pot would not do much good. The portal said, New the range the daft passieren, decent Herrets is Rhine be glad. Diesen Seele Rhein wie Führer schreitet Hörner durch Portal. Near the bed. Can I ask you a few questions? Yeah, of course. There are some words over the locked door in Wolfgang's bedroom. What do they mean? Ah, yes. Wolfgang had me translated as part of my English lessons. In English, it means... Only the purest here may pass. He whose heart is pure as glass. He whose soul is pure as fire, through this portal passes higher. Great, thanks. The view cannot be moved. Thinking of the first chapel panel, Gabriel washes his hands in the snow.
Thinking of the third panel, Gabriel puts the chamber pot on the altar. Thinking of the fourth panel, Gabriel holds his arm over the chamber pot and nicks it with the dagger. Oops, nearly hit an artery. Hmm. Gabriel has a sense that he's missed something about that third panel. Thinking of the third panel, Gabriel pours the contents of the salt shaker into the chamber pot. I'm not going to cut myself again. Gabriel is already trying to find a proper use for the chamber pot here. Thinking of the fifth panel, Gabriel kneels at the altar. Thinking of the sixth panel, Gabriel reads the scroll. St. George, patron of the light, who hunts the shadows of the night, upon my blood I call thee now. Purify me, for I avow to set my feet upon thy road, thy sword I take up for mine own. It worked! Something's happening! Excuse me, I was just vacuuming. I did not know you were in here. Oh, that's all right. I've done about all I can do in here anyway. I give up. You look tired here, Knight. Why don't you go to bed? Sure, why not? I will clean everything up. You need not worry. I can't believe I cut my hair for nothing. <laughs> I do. You must first burn away the past. How much sin do you have to burn? <laughs> you have used people all your life. Never committed to anything. Turn back now. But I will forget that you asked for this. No! There are only two things that redeem you. First, that you have bitter blood in your veins. Second, that three women have loved you purely. Ask to start on the path, so you shall. But you will not be a Shatanega until you have earned it. How? I cannot show you the path, but I can tell you that you will have to let go 
of the greater part of yourself, Gabriel Knight. <laughs> no problem. Yes. Now you asked for purification. You shall have it. What a night, and I'm so all over. I'm not picking up those scissors again. I cut my hair enough. Guten Morgen, Herr Knight. I'm cooking your Frühstück, a good German breakfast. Please, feel at home. Can I ask you a few questions? Yeah, of course. Tell me something about yourself. I was born in Rittersburg, the village... You wouldn't know anything about this key I found in Wolfgang's bedroom now, would you? Key? Why, no, Herr Knight, I cannot say that I do. You wouldn't know anything about... According to Gerda, the panels outlined the Schattenjäger's initiation Not that the ceremony did anything for Gabriel. Or did it? shelves display books on geography. This part of the library contains books on the occult, necromancy, witchcraft, demonology, lycanthropes. Research material any good Schattenjäger needs, Gabriel supposes. Although it probably isn't connected with the case at hand, Gabriel picks up an occult book. It's a book on lycanthropes, shape shifters. The book claims that lycanthropy is not uncommon. Supposedly, there's been evidence of apparently normal human beings turning into various beasts throughout history, including some famous trials from the Middle Ages. Fascinating. Gabriel's made a few women turn into beast himself. Gabriel wouldn't know where to begin with this. 
This part of the library contains books. Although it probably isn't, there are many forms of vampirism. One is associated with a blood disorder and is not supernatural. Another, also non-supernatural, is based on a form of insanity. Of supernatural vampirism, there are also several varieties including inherited, communicative, and a vampirism used in black sorcery power drawing ritual. Then, too, there's always law school. Just by glancing at the spines, Gabriel can tell that this is one of the most priceless private collections he's ever seen. Talk about a bibliophile Shangri-La! These shelves display Gabriel pulls out the book entitled People's Republic of Benin and scans through it. The People's Republic of Benin is an area of rich and diverse cultures and a proud heritage. Before slaving devastated many tribes, this area was populated by some of the oddest, fiercest, and most powerful tribes in tribal Africa. The Fans, the Dahomeys, and the terrible agris. The book, The Primal Ones, by John Roots, provides insight into these fascinating cultures. These shelves, a title catches Gabriel's eye. Gabriel pulls out the book entitled People's Republic of Be the People's the book Gabriel pulls out the book entitled People's Re Gabriel wouldn't know Gabriel would Gabriel would Gabriel would Gabriel would not know where to begin with the religion books Gabriel would not Gabriel would Gabriel isn't interested in the science Gabriel, Gabriel, Gabriel wouldn't know which history book to read. Gabriel wouldn't know, although it probably won't shed any light on Wolfgang's whereabouts. Gabriel picks up a book from the Ritter section. The book is entitled Maleus Maleficarum, The Witch Hammer, dated 1486. It's a witch hunter's manual from the Inquisition. I'm not sure I'm really interested in knowing about some of my ancestors. Although it probably... It looks like a very old diary of the wife of Ritter Schottenjäger. Interesting. It seemed that her husband, one Freiling Ritter, had rescued this woman from the clutches of the Marquis de Sade himself. This family tree really goes way back. The written documents are fascinating, but Gabriel, although it probably won't shed any light on, the book is entitled Maleus Maleficarum, The Witch Hammer. Dated 1408. I'm not sure I'm really interested. Although it it interested this family. The written. Although it pro. I'm not sure I'm. Although it look. This family. Gabriel wouldn't. Gabriel does not. Gabriel. Gabriel does not. Gabriel. 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 Gabriel does Just by glancing at the spines, Gabriel talk about a biblio. These sh 
shelves contain books and do journals, something to put. The Rita Do. Although it probably won't shed any light on Wolfgang's whereabouts, Gabriel picks up a book from the Ritter section. The book is entitled Maleus Maleficarum, The Witch Hammer. I'm not sure I'm... Gabriel does... Gabriel... Although it... it this family tree... Gabriel wouldn't know... Gabriel pulls out the book entitled People's Rep... Gabriel is... The written document... Although it... The book... I'm not sure... Although... This family... The written... Although... I'm not sure... Gabriel... 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 Although... This family... The archway is not closed. Gabriel need... Gabriel has no time to explore Rittersburg. He's got pressing business inside. Just by glancing, talk about a. Just by talk. Gabriel does. Gabriel. Gabriel. Does, Gabriel. Does, although it probably, the book is entitled Maleus Maleficarum, the Witch Hammer, dated 1486. It's a witch hunter's manual from the Inquisition. I'm not sure. Gabriel would Gabriel wouldn't know. Gabriel wouldn't know where. Gabriel wouldn't. Gabriel wouldn't. Gabriel. Would, Gabriel wouldn't know where to start. Gabriel does not want to take that from the library. Gabriel pulls out the book entitled People's Rep. Gabriel. Although it pro it's a book on life support person. Gab Gabriel 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 does not, Gabriel does not want the written document an ancient shield hangs on Gabriel does Gabriel can
These shelves display books or titled Gabriel pulls out the book entitled People's Republic of Benin and scans through it. The People's Republic of Benin is an area of rich and diverse cultures and a proud heritage. Before slaving devastated many tribes, this area was populated by some of the oddest, fiercest, and most powerful tribes in tribal Africa. The Fans, the Dahomeys, and the terrible agris. The book, The Primal One, by John Roots, provides insight into these fascinating cultures. There are books on Gabriel. There are books on sociology in this part. Gabriel recognizes a type. Gabriel takes down the primal ones and opens it. In contrast with the peaceful nomadic tribes of Northern Africa, certain tribes of the Southwest were vicious and xenophobic. This part of Africa is called the Red Basin area because of the vast amount of bloodshed that occurred there over the centuries. In this one area of Africa existed in a perpetual state of war and raiding. Some of the most powerful and efficient fighters the world has ever seen. Why did this region inspire such violent behavior? To understand, one must look even further back. See ancient roots of Africa by early days. These shelves contain Gabriel per These shelves Gabriel peruses the type. These shelves contain science books. Gabriel looks at the titles curiously. These shelves con Gabriel peru These shelves contain books Gabriel just by glance talk about it. Gabriel does not want Although it pro the book I'm not This is the Gabriel does not Can I ask you a few questions? Yeah, of course.
Gabriel wouldn't know. Gabriel. Gabriel does. Gabriel would. Gabriel takes down the primal ones and opens it. In contrast with the peaceful nomadic tribes of Northern Africa, certain tribes of the Southwest were vicious and xenophobic. This part of Africa is called the Red Basin area because of the vast amount of bloodshed that's occurred there over the centuries. In this one area of Africa existed in a perpetual state of war and raiding, some of the most powerful and efficient fighters the world has ever seen. Why did this region inspire such violent behavior? To understand, one must look even further back, see ancient roots of Africa by early days. Gabriel wouldn't know. Gabriel. These shelves contain Gabriel rec. Gabriel removes ancient roots of Africa and browses through it. The ferocity of the tribes in the Red Basin region is traceable to their predecessors. In Egyptian time, 4,000 to 2000 BC, this region was ruled by powerful sun worshippers. We know a little about this mysterious cult by the remnants of ruins far older and of a culture far more advanced than any that exist in Africa today. See Sun Worshippers by A. Curate. These Gabriel recognized these sh these sh journ some these journals diary something to these shelves contain books on re a title catch Gabriel takes down sun worshippers and scans it. One of the earliest religious practices was that of sun worship. The most powerful cults of sun worshippers lived on the continent of Africa. The African sun god was violent and terrible, and so became his worshippers. They practiced a particularly bloody form of ritual sacrifice. The homeland of this ancient cult is still considered a sacred site of power. See Ancient Digs of Africa by Professor Seymour Shards. There are books on Gabriel Recognition. There are books on Gabriel Recognition. There are books on Gabriel Recognition. Gabriel recognizes it. Gabriel takes ancient digs of Africa and opens it. The most fascinating archaeological site in Africa is the Great Snake Mound in the People's Republic of Benin, located 50 miles south of the capital in the Red Basin. Like the snake mounds of North America, the origin and meaning of these great mounds remains a mystery, though clearly they were the results of profound and urgent spiritual belief. Unlike other snake mounds, the African example is a double snake mound, a small snake ring within a larger snake ring. The mound is thought to have housed an ancient temple. Although archaeologists have explored the mound site, the interior remains largely unchanged from ancient... Oh my god! It's a wheel within a wheel! Gibber decides to hang on to the snake mound book.
Gabriel Open's Ancient Digs of Africa. The most fascinating archaeological site in Africa is the Great Snake Mound in the People's Republic of Benin, located 50 miles south of the capital in the Red Basin. Like the Snake Mounds of North America, the origin and meaning of these great mounds remains a mystery, though clearly they are the results of profound and urgent spiritual Unlike other snake mounds, the African example is a double snake mound, a small snake ring within a larger snake ring. The mound is thought to have housed an ancient temple. Although archaeologists have explored the mound site, the interior remains largely unchanged from ancient times. This is partially due to stringent government regulations and partially to local superstition. The local people regard the mound with fear and won't go near it. Gabriel looks at the picture again. The double ring snake mound in the People's Republic of Benin. Creepy, isn't it? Can I ask you a few questions? Yeah, of course. I found this book in the library. I think it might tell us where Wolfgang went. You think Wolfgang went to Africa? I know he did. Then I shall make you a plane trip right now, yeah? Well, I guess so. Good, good. My poor Wolfgang. You have money for the plane, yeah? I know. We can use this credit card. Terrific! I will go make the call. Then, while we wait, breakfast. Does that mean I get some coffee now? Wheel within a wheel. You want I stay here, right? It's a long walk back to the city. Yeah, sure. Wait here, please. I may be a while, though. No problem. I could use a nap. There's no reason to do that to the wall painting.
An etched stone is on the wall. An etched stone is on A shadow flickers in the corner of Gabriel's eye. Mummy-like figures in contorted poses appear to be the only residents here. Gabriel wonders, was this a burial mound? Or does their presence serve some ritualistic purpose? An etched stone is on the wall. Mummy like figures in give in the center of the wall painting is a square sunken area. Holes about the size of a quarter appear in the wall there. This stone looks interesting. Gabriel cannot. An etched stone. A shadow flickers in the corner of Gabriel's eye. An etched stone. A long rod lies in one corner of the room. It's shaped a little like a snake. An etched stone is on the wall. A shadow flickers. An etched stone.
Gabriel has the creeping sensation he's being watched. This stone looks... There's no... Hmm, it's stuck. from Hmm it's stuck an edge stuck An edge stone. An edge stone is on the wall. From off in the mound echoes a sound like the scuffle of a shoe. It fits.
from an edge stone From off in the mound echoes a sound like the scuffle of a shoe. And it's The rod fits into the hole in the stone. Nothing happens.
there does not appear to be a place to insert the rod on that part of the wall painting. There does not From somewhere off in the mound, Gabriel hears a soft click, then a rumble. Uh-oh. I have a feeling that did something. Try that again. An edge stone. An edge stone. Mummy-like figures, Gabriel wonder. From somewhere off in the mound, Gabriel hears us. Uh-oh. I have a feeling that did something. From somewhere off, Gabriel cannot see a from some
The vines are thick and the exit is blocked. The vine. I presume. Uncle Wolfgang? In person. Now go to it, boy. I can't hold these creatures for very long, and there are more on the way. Go to what? The secret panel, boy! Those creatures are only alive while it's open. Close it, Gabriel, and hurry! Hole does not work, Dad. I think I found something. Very good, Gabriel. Now stand back. Wow. The inner wheel. Yes. Wheel within a wheel. Are you okay? You don't look so hot. I'm fine, Gabriel. The wheel. You dreamt it? Yeah. And you? Yes. I must congratulate you on the Three Snakes connection. I had missed it. You will make a wonderful Schottenjäger. Who? Me? Yes. It is a long path, my boy. I myself have still the last of my three quests to meet. But let us see what is here. You have found the heart of the apple. But it might be poison still. Doing that with the Can we talk? Uh, we probably have a little time here. Yes, all right. What can you tell me about voodoo? It sounds as though you have learned much during your investigation in New Orleans. Perhaps you will fill me in when we have a chance to sit down and talk. What do you know about the voodoo murders? I know only what you have told me. They seem to be very similar to the killings in Gunther's journal. What can you tell me about New Orleans? I don't know enough about it to offer you any advice, but be careful when you return there, Gabriel. Do you know anything about snakes? I have not studied the subject. I have an intense dislike for them. What can you tell me about St. John's Eve? I'm afraid I've never heard of it. 
Do you know anything more about Cabri sans corps? I know only what you've told me, that it refers to human sacrifice. Do you know anything about Marie Laveau? No, I'm afraid not. Any ideas on where the Getty Hound Fuhr in New Orleans might be? Leider nicht. You will have to try to find it when you return to New Orleans. You must not go in alone, though. Even if we find the talisman, it will be quite a battle. Tell me more about animal masks. I've already given you what limited knowledge I have on the subject. Do you know anything else about Bebes? I've already given you what... Do you know anything more? No, my knowledge of the law is fairly limited. Do you know... I'm afraid... Do you know anything... I don't know anything that... What can you tell me about Shatten Jaegers? We have not the time to discuss that here. You have started the path. I can see it in your eyes. You must trust yourself and be true to your inner voice. The good voice, Gabriel. You know it when you hear it. Do you know anything about Radha drums? I don't know. Tell me about yourself. This is not the time nor the place, Gabriel. I I'm sorry, but I assure you, my life has not been all that instructive. Is there anything else you can tell me about Tetelo? I can feel her presence here. I wouldn't be surprised if she knew we were violating her sanctum. Is it? I can feel her... Is there anything else you can tell me about the talisman? The most important thing about the talisman is that it be once again in... Do you think Tetelo's remains are here? I have a feeling that they are, Gabriel. I have... This is the inner wheel of the snake mound. Though similar in appearance to the outer wheel, there's a sense of evil sanctity and secrecy about this room that is very different indeed. The table's lid fits heavily on the base. At the seams there are two large holes on either side. On top of the lid is a trough. What's that trough for? I saw that. This is undoubtedly a sacrificial table. That trough is for... a human heart. Oh, that's sick. Look at that table. Yes, it is very old. There is a story being told through the carvings on the side. Can you make it out? Tribesman discovers a snake mound hidden in the jungle. He manages, after much time, to find the secret entrance to the inner wheel. In this room, he bows down to a small idol of some sort. The thing is radiating, like a sun. That explains the source of the Getty's tribal power. They found this mound and the idol in it. Where the idol came from originally is hard to say, but it is definitely older than the Geddes. The idol was probably once kept in this table, but they would have it with them now. It must be destroyed. The table's lid fits heavily on the base. At the seams, there are two large holes on either side. On top of the lid is a trough. This is the inner wheel of the snake. This...
A mummy lies on the floor, apparently having fallen inanimate where it stood when the secret passage door closed. Gero has no reason to do that at the moment. That doesn't seem... What about these iron bars? Good idea. Let me help you. Perhaps these holes... There! Let's get the other one. There! The bar fits in the tabletop. Gabriel does not want to put it back in. Let's try to lift this top. I know it's in there. Yes, it is in there. I have not felt this powerful since, well, ever. Why won't the damn lid come off? It is a sacrificial table. It can probably only be triggered by the proper use of that trough there. With a heart. Oh, great. Where are we gonna get a heart? Gabriel, you must take the talisman and be shot in Hager. You performed the ritual and dreamt of the dragon, no? Yes, I did. But you're the current Schattenjäger. I only did that because... Because you were driven to it. I have done nothing with this title for many years. Even in my prime, I had few cases. No. Oh, if my life had a purpose, it was to bring you to this point. But I have no idea what I'm doing. This is not a science, Gabriel. It is instinct. And you have it in your blood. Trust it. The castle is yours now. It has many documents and records which will help you in the future. Well, thanks for the confidence. But what about this table? I want you to go into the next room and get a heart from that dead creature on the floor. Will that work? Doesn't it need to be... fresh? Let us try. Perhaps there's some of the old Ritter magic left. Go on. Great. My first job is Schattenjäger. Cutting up dead monsters. Wolfgang! No! No! Tetelo, you gon' pay for this, you bitch! Why did he go to Africa, Gertie? <sighs> no, it's okay. I'm just a little anxious. No, they haven't. I just need to talk to Gabriel. After arranging for the shipment of Wolfgang's body back to Rittersburg, Gabriel returns to New Orleans. 
He carries with him the ritter talisman. He has not heard from Grace for over 24 hours, and he could not reach Malia by phone. And although he has some idea of what he is coming home to attempt, he still has no clue where to attempt it. Or does he? Grace, I'm home. Grace? Oh no! Grace! The note is from Malia. It say, Gabriel, I hope you survive long enough to get this. Tetelo knows you have the talisman. Your life is worth nothing, my love. I fight to save you, but she controls things far more than I. She has taken grace. Return the talisman and leave New Orleans forever. If you don't, I can't help you. Please. I can't bear to see you die. Please believe me. I love you. Malia. Who? Who's there? I have the talisman. Yeah? Good for you. I got a headache. You? Don't come near me. You're dead. Oh, <laughs> was that you at the tube? You should have said something. You mean you weren't dead, you son of a bitch? Do I look dead? No, no, don't answer that. I was searching the tomb. When I heard someone coming, I broke the light and got in the drawer. Sorry I brained you, but I thought you were one of them. Christ, you about killed me. I said I was sorry. Besides, I owed you one for stealing my badge. If it makes you feel any better, I lost my wallet that day. Your wallet? Ooh, I guess you're right. We are even. Like I said. Anyway, we shouldn't stand out here and gab. Someone on the street might see us. Let's go in back and talk. Okay, now let's talk. All right, let's talk. Have you ever heard... You mean... No, never... What should we do about Grace? Them voodoo people have taken her, the goddamn bastards. We have to find her and save her, and we can't count on the police department for any help. What should we do about... I told you, we gotta find her. We so, fill me in on what you've been doing for the past five days. I've been getting smart, that's what. They got me running, I'll admit. But the day a bunch of drum-banging, mumbo-jumbo chanting magicians can catch old Lightfoot Mosley is the day I die. Can't argue with that logic. Now these guys have it wired, I tell you. From the mayor to a couple of major judges, right down to the beat cops. The Gettys are untouchable from that angle. But once I really start digging, it was like I could see clearly. These guys are into everything that happens in this city, and most people are scared shitless of them, or they don't know about them at all. Let me fill you in on what I've learned in the past five days. Okay, have at it. Well, Malia Getty is the head of the cartel. Dr. John is her right-hand man. I learned that much. You sure know how to pick them, Knight. Uh-huh. She's not really responsible, though, because during these ceremonies, she's ridden by the spirit of her ancestor, Tetelo. You don't say. It's true. Anyway, I have something, a talisman, that I can use against them. It'll help. 
but they probably still have a power source somewhere in their hound fool. Also, this whole thing kind of ties in with my nightmare scene and my family history. My family does this shadow hunting thing, and about 300 years ago... Look, don't confuse me, okay? You worry about all that metaphysical stuff, and I'll just try and catch the bad guys. Yeah, you'd never believe me anyway. Let's make a plan. What do you think we should do? We need to find the headquarters of the Getty Cartel, rescue Grace, and dig up some concrete evidence so that I can take this straight to the FBI. Sounds easy. Uh-huh. Do you have any idea where their headquarters might be? Perhaps. Well, you do seem to have a knack for sniffing out this voodoo stuff. Why don't you see if you can locate it for sure? Meanwhile, I've got some things I've got to do. I'll meet you there later. How will you find it? Damn, that's right. If only I had the tracker from my office. I have it. Really? Good going. You give it to me and leave a signal device at the entrance to the headquarters. All right. Here's the tracker. Great. Uh, don't forget to leave the signal device near the entrance to the home floor. And be careful. You too. That is painting. I bet Grace bought it back from Bruno herself. Times Picayune, dated June 28. 1993. The weather service is baffled by the series of bizarre storms that rocked the south yesterday. Twenty died and close to a hundred were injured. The storms only accentuate the bad luck that seems to have gripped the south. The crime rate for the past three days has peaked to unprecedented levels. And there have been 50 reports of food poisoning in New Orleans alone. In other words, keep your head down, folks, and pray that August will return us to sanity. Warily Gabriel reads his horoscope for the day. Gird thyself with mercy. Arm thyself with righteousness. The final hour awaits. There's a school teacher somewhere who's damn confused. Jackson Square is a good place to rest while exploring the French Quarter and a great place to be entertained by local performers. Jackson's Jackson
The panel behind the mesh window moves from the other side. The confessional is empty, and there does not seem to be a priest behind the window right now. There's no one to... Gabriel cannot go in there. That's the priest part of the confessionals. The panel... There's a knot hole about the size of a quarter in the wood paneling on that wall. Something about this knot hole looks familiar. It's moving. I knew it. Ride's over. I think I've got everything I need. Might as well see it through. All right, Mosley. There's your signal. Gabriel wonders if Mosley will have everything he needs to follow the trail. The elevator stops at a room underneath the cathedral. Express elevator to hell. Gabriel puts the snake rod under the bench for Mosley. The elevator returns to the cathedral. Gabriel's stuck now. That piece of art on the wall looks like something the Gettys had transplanted from Africa. Gabriel will not solve a thing by messing around with the hound for art. The hound fool is decorated with priceless African art. Gabriel is in the outer ring of the Getty hound fool. Gabriel is in the outer ring of the Getty hound fool. A hound fool is dead. This sign has seven snakes on it.
Those two masks remind Gabriel of the ones used at the bayou. I think I'll take this wolf mask for me. This boar mask seems appropriate for Mosley, if he ever makes it. Gabriel would prefer to leave the contents of those cans a mystery. I'm no mechanic. I don't want to mess with the controls down here. This sign has eight snakes. That doesn't work that way. It's locked. A pair of pots laden with ritual markings hang on either side of that door. They almost seem to be guarding it in some way. A beautiful rendering of the Gede Veve hangs in the hall. There's no... A hound food. A rather sterile looking bed is the... Hmm, looks... The bed A bathroom. How human of them. The hound fool is It's locked. Another bat. It's locked. Matt. The room smells of Malia's perfume. Someone's coming. Tetalo, come to me. Your daughter requests an audience. What is it you seek, child? Tetalo, 
I beg you again, for my sake, spare Gabriel's life. Do not protect or mourn that one. He will only betray you. Gabriel would never betray me. He will, as God have betrayed me. Blinded by the light, he will despise your darkness. No, I don't believe that. You were betrayed, but Gabriel is different. I... I cannot serve you any longer. Choose another. I cannot go on. Ha! Ah. So you say, because you are drawn to the light. What you do not know is that the light will never have you. You only corrupt it when you draw near. I don't believe you. This way, this life is too painful. I must be free of it. You can never be free. You will see, my daughter. What I've told you is true. You will see. Wait! I won't go through with it! I won't! I won't! Although Gabriel is no computer expert, those look like high-priced mar- A portrait of a beautiful, intelligent-looking woman is- She reminds Gabriel of Malia. The white bard contains what- Who knows what these guys- There is not a- There is no- this record book might be the kind of thing Mosley wanted for the FBI. Gabriel can... There is n... There is not... Thank you.
There is nothing. A few wall panels up here to open. They probably conceal air supply systems or other control mechanisms that support the underground structure. I'm no mechanic. I'm no mechanic. Moving down. These panels seem to tell a story. Tetelo holding up the talisman. A ship sailing. Slaves rising up and killing their own as Haiti, probably. Looks like Tetelo's people arriving in New Orleans. They accumulate great power through voodoo. The Hound Fool is built under Jackson Square. Heck of a family album. The Giddy Hound for Porto Meter. Okay, I'll give it a shot, but I'm no musician. A door opens in the distance.
Dr. John looks like the sort to wield a machete. Gabriel Knight. So it was you on the drums. Uh, no. Malia invited me down. You lie. You will die for that. I really don't want to be dead. Can we try that again? This sign has been This sign There's nothing of interest in the bathroom. It's locked. Gabriel doesn't want to put the mask on until he... Candles burn atop the table, and some offerings have been left there. This is the last page of in The key card has a magnetic strip on the back.
It's locked. It fits! I know it's dirty money, but it's for a good cause. Me. I hate to say it, but I can't carry any more. I will. A million or so ought to hold me. Those bars weigh a ton. Those bags look heavy, like about 40 pounds apiece. It's locked. Underneath the surgical lamps is a gurney with a body on it. No one I know. Human hearts. So that's what they do with them. But why? Maybe I shouldn't even ask. They're used for some powerful gri-gri, no doubt. Or maybe that's what Tetelo has for lunch. Ugh, I hope those are rubber masks. A stainless steel bucket is on the floor. Its contents are better. More corpses are stored in wall compartments. It looks like a deep freeze in there. Gabriel cannot see. It's locked. Grace! I found her! The sound of Radha drums echo through the Hounvoor. The ritual must be about to begin. Mostly, you made it. Thank God. I thought I saw you ducking in here. Those goddamn drums started as soon as I got off that elevator thing and I heard voices from above. I have a feeling the mass voodooese are about to invade. I found Grace. I see that. Check her out. Then you and I need to find a way to blend into the woodwork, bud.
This talisman is supposed to have some sort of power. Grace! Wake up! Grace! What? What's going on? Gabriel! Mosley! Where are we? What's going on? We're in the Getty Cartel Hound Four, Grace. The ritual is about to begin. And I'm afraid you are the main course. Is that what those drums are? I heard them in my sleep. I couldn't wake up. Yeah. Makes you want to dance, don't they? Be serious. What are we going to do now? All right. Let's make a plan. What do you want us to do, Gabriel? You're asking me? Oh, God. We're in trouble. Well, I realize I'm the professional, but you do know more about what we're up against here. Okay, okay. Grace, they expect you to be unconscious, so you better fake it. That should put you in a good position when it's time. Mosley, you and I will be with the other ritualists. As for the ritual itself, I'd say Tetelo is our worst problem. I remember from the bayou that she didn't show up until Dr. John blew that drug on Malia's face. If I can prevent him from doing that, we can keep Tetelo out of it, I think. Well, how are you going to do that? I don't know. I'll think of something. Uh-huh. What if Tetelo does show up? Let's just worry about making sure that doesn't happen. Okay, so you're going to prevent this spirit thing from showing up? Fine. I'll take care of the big guy, Dr. John, when the time comes. And I can handle Malia herself. As long as she is Malia. Well... Keep an eye on her, for her own good. But don't hurt her. Who? Me? We'll wait for your signal, then. Fine. But you guys aren't going to get far looking like that. The mask by itself would not disguise Mosley. Not with that day glow coat he wears. Gabriel can hear people in the hall. It might not be wise to open the door without taking the proper precautions. Someone's coming! Grace, get down! Gabriel Knight, what are you doing here, and who is this with you? Who, him? He's a friend. You will be... That doesn't work that way. The bar, Gabriel, the bars do, the con, the content, that doesn't see, Gabriel cannot, Gabriel cannot, the boxes do not into, that doesn't, Gabriel cannot. A robe for me, a robe for prosperity. Gabriel has enough.
grace. I found her. The sound of Radha drums echo through the Hounvoor. The ritual must be about to begin. Mostly, you made it. Thank God. I thought I saw you ducking in here. Those goddamn drums started as soon as I got off that elevator thing and I heard voices from above. I have a feeling the mass voodooese are about to invade. I found Grace. I see that. Check her out. Then you and I need to find a way to blend into the woodwork, bud. This talisman is supposed to have some sort of power. Grace! Wake up! Grace! What? What's going on? Gabriel! Mostly! Where are we? What's going on? We're in the Getty Cartel Hound Four, Grace. The ritual is about to begin. And I'm afraid you're the main course. Is that what those drums are? I heard them in my sleep. I couldn't wake up. Yeah. Makes you want to dance, don't they? Be serious. What are we going to do now? All right. Let's make a plan. What do you want us to do, Gabriel? You're asking me? Oh, God. We're in trouble. Well, I realize I'm the professional, but you do know more about what we're up against here. Okay, okay. Grace, they expect you to be unconscious, so you better fake it. That should put you in a good position when it's time. Mosley, you and I will be with the other ritualists. As for the ritual itself, I'd say Tetelo is our worst problem. I remember from the bayou that she didn't show up until Dr. John blew that drug on Malia's face. If I can prevent him from doing that, we can keep Tetelo out of it, I think. Well, how are you going to do that? I don't know. I'll think of something. Uh-huh. What if Tetelo does show up? Let's just worry about making sure that doesn't happen. Okay, so you're going to prevent this spirit thing from showing up? Fine. I'll take care of the big guy, Dr. John, when the time comes. And I can handle Malia herself, as long as she is Malia. Well, keep an eye on her, for her own good. But don't hurt her. Who? Me? We'll wait for your signal, then. Fine. But you guys aren't going to get far looking like that. Here, it's a disguise. Gee, a boar. How thoughtful. And what are you, pray tell? Uh, a wolf? <laughs> you goddamn wiener. A wolf. How appropriate. <sighs> Someone's coming. Grace, get down! What are you doing here? Thought this room was empty. Go to the circle! Now!
ridden by Tetelo. What? What? what you said... said... Yeah, yeah, no. Great, now what? I don't know. Agree. Take this sacrifice! Do something quick! Denilo, stop! Won't let you kill her! What? You bastard of a bastard! You can't stop me. Watch your friend die. die. Uh-oh. The talisman seemed to have little effect on protecting Grace from this distance. Grace out of here. The talisman will protect you. Well, what about... Just go! You are unarmed now, witch hunter. Approach me and leave. Malia, are you... there? She's too... powerful. Your father's son, witch hunter! Oh, Gabriel, please! I've got you, Malia! No! You will betray her, witch hunter! I won't let you kill her! Gabriel, you didn't betray me! I've got you! Uh, it's no good. It has to end with me. 
No! Don't let go! Damn it! Don't you let go! Goodbye, my love. No! I think it's over now. Yes. I'm sorry about Malia. I know you cared for her. You've changed, you know. Have I? Yeah. So, um, are you gonna do it? Be shot in Jaeger? I'm gonna try. Don't worry, though. You'll be back at school, safe and sound. I don't have to go back. Grace! Give up your PhD? There are things in this world, Gabriel. A spiritual path can be more important than a path of the mind. Spiritual path, huh? Well, you're welcome to stay, Gracie. Just as long as you don't expect me to know what I'm doing. This is a historical moment, isn't it? 300 years ago, the Ritter Talisman was stolen by Tetelo. She used to draw her family to power while your family withered. She helped provoke the slave revolt in Haiti. She's probably the reason for a lot of the flavor and history of New Orleans. Good and bad. Now she's gone and your family is restarting. Yeah, it almost makes you wonder, doesn't it? If it wasn't supposed to happen that way. You know, good coming from evil. You think too much. But really, I think the most tragic thing was all those generations of young women, like Maya, trapped by this large overriding personality forced into a life of horror. Yeah, kind of reminds me of living with you, Grace. You know when I said you've changed? Yeah. I was wrong. Are you sorry? Nah. 